Good morning. Welcome to Sewing Street TV. I'm Wendy Gardiner. Some of you might have seen me last week. It was my debut day. Uh, so this is my second day with this fabulous company. And I can't uh, say how much I am delighted to be here. It's, it's just up my street all about sewing. So just a very little bit of a background about me in case you don't know me from before. Um, I've been in the sewing craft industry all my working life, which unfortunately is quite a long time. Um, I have written 21 books on sewing. I have done presenting on TV. I've edited quite a few magazines. In fact, if you cut off my arm, and I'm not suggesting it, but if you did, I'm sure it would have I Love Sewing running through the middle like a stick of rock. Um, but I don't want to spend too much time on me. I want to talk about our first early bird offers. And notice I say offers, we have two. It is going to be the exact same price for both of them, but we have two colourways. What is it? Let's start with the red one. I'm just going to move that one out of the way. So what it is, is a sewing machine bag or a craft bag. Uh, designed to hold a sewing machine, it's got the weight that you need and the binding. They're on a very, very special price. It unzips down both sides. I don't know if you can, yeah, can you see that. So you can lift your machine in and out easily. I have one of these at home, this is why I know. I just love these bags. It's, this one is made of, um, it's like a PVC, so it's good against the weather. So if you're taking your machine to sewing classes, you can pop it into the car, take it out. Doesn't matter if it's got a downpour, your machine will be protected. So these will fit a sort of bulk standard sewing machine, a small sewing, not the big embroidery machines, but a standard sewing machine, whether it's a computerised or a manual or an electronic, it will fit. And it zips up, so you can bring the zip up, and you can see, it's uh, I'm being awkward here trying to do it on the camera, so it zips up from both sides. You can... Oop, and you can see once it zips together, it's a nice wide bag. It's got a nice wide base, so the machine sits in there. On the outside, you've got this pocket, which you can put your um, presser foot and your uh, foot pedal and your lead in, or your sewing kit, so it's got a nice thing. Now, we have looked at these online, elsewhere, and just one of the examples you can see on the screen now their one is reduced at 34.99. I think I can't see that clearly. It was 49.99. If you look at ours, this is the early bird price on this. No, sorry, I've got to read that again. 15.99 a bargain. A bargain. So use this for your sewing machine or use it for your fabric stash or your craft stash or your knitting stash. It doesn't matter what. This price is the early bird price, so it's not forever, it's whilst the stocks last for this particular segment of the show. So a fabulous bag, really robust, and it's got the handles, which, I mean, I love the fact the handles here, they're sort of sewn together at this bit, which makes it easier to hold. Um, the little Velcro piece that you put around to hold them together makes it very easy to carry your sewing machine around. And also remember, this isn't just for taking outdoors. If you have to store your machine away at home, you can pop it in, in the bag. And actually, if you've got a hard cover on your sewing machine, tuck that away because this bag will protect the machine and it makes it lighter to carry around. So a really, really good price. This is the sort of burgundy red colour. Let's look at the other one, which is it's the same bag. Um, it's got a depth of twen a 20 centimetre base, by the way, just so you know that. And the width is 43 centimetres. And the height is 37. So it, it will fit most general sewing machines. So definitely all of the machines that we sell here. Now this is a mauve or lilac mauve or lilac colour. So again, it's exactly the same bag. It's got the zip that goes all the way down the sides and up to the front. Um, inside, it's nicely lined and padded. It's got that extra secure base there. And we've got another price comparison. Let's have a look. 
So exactly the same bag. This is the same Hobbycraft bag from a very well-known shop, which is usually budget priced. The price on this one, I can't see, £29.90. So that's from a shop that is good with budget pricing that we know. But, but you know, do your own research, but we've, we've done that for you. But if you look at our price, this is our special early bird price, it's fifteen ninety nine. This really is a bargain to be had. As I say, not just for sewing machines. I use mine for sewing machines, but I've also used it when I want to carry loads of other project uh, materials around. So you could get two. You can put one with your sewing machine in, one with your fabrics, your haberdashery, your scissors, etc. It's a really good storage bag. You could. I like the fact that, I mean, you can choose. I like both both colours. Um, generally I tend to go for the bolder colour. It's a lovely robust build of a bag, nice um, PVC so that you know that when you take it out uh, in the weather it doesn't matter, your machine's not going to get wet and as I say take off that hard cover which can add to the weight so when you're walking around or taking it from the car to the sewing class it can be heavy. Um, you don't need the hard cover when you're travelling it with this bag. You can also, if you're working, I mean as so many people, when you're working on a dining table and you have to lift the machine off and on, you can't leave it out, you have to put it away, this acts as a protective dust cover. So it's really great storage as well and as I say not just for sewing machines, this is not, not just for Christmas, this is, this is also for using for craft. Now I have to tell you, this is our early bird deal, there are a lot of people online, there are people putting it in their basket. It is only for a limited time at this amazing price. So do check out. And do remember that whatever price, uh, whatever item you put in your basket, there's a standard £3.95 postage charge, but that's for all day. So if you buy this now and check out, and then you buy something later, and I've got some amazing fabric to show you in a minute, don't worry. The same £3.95 postage price stays. So it's the same price whatever you buy throughout the whole day, which is really handy to know. So yes, people are putting these in their basket and some people are multi-buying, which is amazing. Some people are buying both. I would too. And if there's only left by the end of the show today, I will be buying one. And I think I'm going to go for the lilac, even though normally my, my idea is colourful. But my sewing one has got um, sort of pinks, blues and white. So this would go really nicely in there. Not that it really matters because it would be tucked away, but that's not the point, is it? I just love it. I love the fact it's a really robust bag, good for your sewing machine, but not just your sewing machine. I can, you could put your craft materials in there, your knitting, doesn't matter what project you're working with, it's really handy. Oh, let's look at another price comparison. This, this, is, this is a better price than the other two, but not I can't see what the price is, 20, 24 99 So it's, getting, it's coming down. The price is coming down at alternative places. But from us today, with this early bird offer, it's £15.99. So that's a really good deal. I love it. I'm going to look at this one again. We're looking at this. So again, it's the same bag. Um, just in case you've just joined me, let me open it up for you. It's got a 20 centimetre base. It will fit most ordinary sewing machines, whether they're computerised, electronic or manual, it will fit in. It's not for the big embroidery sewing machines, it's for the huge standard machine. Fits in there, dimensions are there, so it's 20 centimetre base. I think it was about 37 centimetres high and 40 something across. The dim dimensions will be there. So a nice, nice big opening, so it's easy to put your machine in and out. When you're trying to lift it in, you're not having to try and hold the bag open as you're putting it in. You can open it out completely. It's got a nice sturdy base. It has got the uh, bag feet on the bottom, which keeps it sort of off the actual ground. If you have to put it down outside, on the, you know, when you're going to put it into the car, and you've got to put it down before you open the boot. It's not going to get all damp underneath because you've got the feet there. And then you can just zip it up. 
You don't have to do this with the machine in. You can zip it up standing up. It's just when it's empty, it's easier to sort of lift it. OK, I've got a message coming from Rebecca, which I'm going to have to put my glasses on to read. Oh, <laughs> I don't need to because Hannah's just told me what it says. It's wonderful to see you again. Thank you, Rebecca. I do appreciate that. She's, and she's just, bought, she's just bought three. Well done. I don't blame you, honestly. If I could put one aside for me, I would. So, ooh, I'm, I'm, honestly, it's a lot easier to zip up than I'm making it look when I'm trying to do it on air. There it is. A quarter of the stock of this one has already gone. So if you're interested in this, it's sort of a burgundy red, a deep red. If you're interested in this one, but be aware a quarter of the stock has gone and it won't stay at this price of 15.99 again at the moment it's just now so let me um let me just push this one to one side because i want to look at the lilac one again so there it is it's this lovely pvc so nice it's nice and robust it's sturdy it will protect your machine in transport or in storage so even if you're not planning to take it, your machine to a class it doesn't matter but if you want to just tuck it away if you can't you know, haven't got a sewing room not everybody has i have now but i mean for years i mean i've been sewing uh for oh, well all my life really but i've been working in sewing for at least 35 years and until recently I've had to sew on the dining table or the kitchen table because I had a choice to make, sewing room or children. I think I made the right choice because I had boys and they're lovely, but now they've left home, so now I have a sewing room. So I'm back to having my sewing room. It was worth the wait though. And I used to always have to put my machine away. Now I can leave it out, but this is really handy when I take it to classes. So I have um, my machine, I can pop it in there in the outside pocket you can put, let me just unzip this, and it's got a nice roomy pocket on the front. Now you could either put your haberdashery, your scissors or whatever in there, because I do. sometimes I'll put the foot pedal and the lead in with the machine, sometimes I'll put it in the front pocket. Um, but you've got that nice commodious pocket at the front there to put it into. It's because of the material it's made out of, this lovely PVC with the padding, it's nice and robust. It looks after your machine when in transport or, in of course, when you just put it away because you're not using it at the time. Over half the stock of both, both colourways have now gone. So we're going to... It's, it's still available, but we're going to move on because we need to go and look at the fabrics. That I want. I've got to show you these fabrics because, again, this is another one I want. You know... If I come here, if I bought everything that I wanted to, I'd never earn a penny because <laughs> I've been spending it all the time. I have to sort of stop myself. So let's have a look at the menu for today. Don't forget, these are still available at the moment, although half the stock has already gone. So we're going to look at the menu for today. So to start with, we've got bright, bold fabrics, which you will see in one second. Then I'm joined by Fiona Hesford, who I've met for the first time this morning, and my God, is she fascinating, knows so much. So Girl Revisited. We are going to have such a blast with that show. It's all about dressmaking. Then I am joined again by Kerry, who I was, uh, had my debut shows with last week. She's fabulous. Living in Loveliness. We've got some great projects um, from her. Back with So Girl Revisit with Fiona again. More ideas. Honestly, I'm really looking forward to these shows, so do stay tuned if you've got any interest in fabrics or dressmaking. And then we finish with Living in Loveliness again with Kerry with some more of her fabulous kits and projects. Don't forget, you can already go onto the website and you can already buy any of these um, kits or bundles or patterns that we've got. Just Look at those or you can, of course, watch live by click on watch live. The website has lots and lots of offers on it. There's the shop. So all the fabrics that we're going to be showing are available. Um, so you can have a look at all of those. But do stay with me as I go through these bundles um, because look at this. Look at this. I'm going to start with this one. All right. Hold on. No, I'm not starting with this one. Oh. <laughs> okay, where am I starting? Oh, 
this one. Okay, she's just picking, this is Hannah, the producer. She's just picking the one that's furthest away. Right, let's get this. I'm going to move that out of the way. Um, the reason we're going for this one, and this one in particular, the one on the top here, is because it's just back in stock. It's a cotton canvas. So this is a half a metre, but you can see it's lovely and wide. Is that, is that 60 inches, 150 wide? It is, yeah, it looks like it. So that's, isn't, isn't that beautiful? I just love that print. That's really gorgeous. So it's half a metre of a six. Now, on this one, if you, Hannah, you might have to um, remind me, if you buy two or three or four, will you get it in a bigger piece or do you get them? Right, so if, yeah, so if you want to multi-buy this, so if you decide, I mean, this would be lovely for a bag. But if you wanted to say make a dress and you can't this is a cotton canvas so it's quite a heavy weight but actually it would make a dress like this quite well because it would hold its shape so it's beautiful holding its shape um, so you could make it but you might you'd need three three and a half meters so you can buy multiple bu um, bundles so rather than buy a half meter uh, you'd buy six six units and then you'd get three meters and you would get a three meter piece. So on this one, you would get the three meter piece. Some of these other ones, you will only get them multiple times. So bundles are already pre-cut. Single pieces, you can buy multi, multi to get a one bigger piece. Hope that makes sense to you. So this is beautiful. So not only um, I look at this and I think, yeah, I can see a dress, I can see a bag, I can see a cushion cover. The other thing, uh, of course, furnishings, you know, if you wanted to make blinds, curtains, um, but also looking at these, look at these designs on here. You could also fussy cut that out and use that as an applique. So it's really beautiful. It, uh, yeah, Joe, Joe our, um, our director in there is saying that it looks like it's water painted and it does. It's got a really lovely feel to it. Lo looks really, really beautiful, like water painted. Oh, is it water co watercolour painting, isn't it? So that is really beautiful. But let's look at the other two. So this is the one that was out of stock that we've got the stock of, just back in. But I've got two more similar. So these are the same kind of weight of fabric. So it's a canvas cotton fabric. Again, it's half a metre. So if I open it that right out, look. So that bundle that I put my hand on initially we are coming to it in just a minute. So please watch out. We're just going to get, we're just checking at the stock levels, making sure we've got plenty of stock. And, um, and I want to be able to talk about it and what we've got in there. So this is the other piece of cotton canvas. So again, don't forget with these and the, the other colourway here, what you can do is you can buy in multi um, bundles. So you can buy three metres, four metres, whatever you want, or you can just buy the half metre. Um, the price is $5.99 for your half metre. So that works out at sort of just under £11 for a metre for a really good quality cotton canvas, which is 150 wide. So that's a really, really good price. This is the, the, this is the pink one I've got here. Um, it's exactly the same as the sort of mustard coloured one. So really lovely. Again, it, you know, it, it would be lovely for furnishings, cushion covers. You could make kitchen appliance covers out of this. But you could also do dressmaking with it if you want, you know, a jacket, something like that would go. It's got that nice, robust feel about it. Now, we, OK, we've just got some back in stock news. Ah, OK, so Hannah's on the case here. She's been talking to the warehouse to get as many of these big bundles as we can. OK, so what we're offering today is what we've got. We can't, we can't offer any more. So these are always incredibly popular, and I can understand why. I think there's 36 pieces of fabric. 36. So altogether, there's 21 and a half metres. Some are metres, some are half metres. Generally, the half metres are the sort of the, the bolder colours and the more primary colours, the more basic ones, like these creams at the bottom here, the creams and the grey, they're a metre. You get the bundle like this. 
you will always have the fabric you need to match, to tone, to add to a project that you've got. Because you can buy these beautiful coloured, um, as we did earlier, we could, you could buy this lovely cotton canvas, but you might want some contrast. So for instance, if you bought this one here, you might want to add a bit of yellow to pick out the yellow. You might want to add a bit of green. So you've always got something, there's half a metre or a metre. The full price is £149, That's, which is amazing. So what does that work out at if there's 21 and a half metres? Can somebody do a quick calculation? So there's, there's your piece, that's a half a metre. So that looks to me like it's 45 inches or is it 90? What's the width of that? Uh, let me, let me, I'm just going to, just hold on one second. I'm just going to quickly try and measure this if I can. Uh, yeah, I think it's 45 and I've just taken the little label off. So these are the pieces that you've got and you have 36 pieces in all these beautifully colour coordinated colours. So there's something for every project. So they make projects on their own, but also, of course, you can add them to something else you've got. And the colour range is quite amazing here. Right, OK, the things that there are, I don't want to pull my lovely colour coordinated thing apart, but I can do. We've got cream, dark grey. These are the ones that are a metre. Ivory, so I think these ones, oh, these ones on the bottom, I can feel that they're a metre. You can feel the chunkiness. Ivory, that's the one I said earlier. That one's a quarter. Navy. That's that's the meter. So you'll find it's sort of the, the, the colours that you would predominantly use are the ones that you've got the meter of. So the ones that, like the ivories, the greens, the grey, that sort of thing, you've got a meter. So if I lift that off. So instead of that half meter piece, you've got a nice big meter piece. So there's, that's plenty, isn't it, to do all sorts of things. Now, just to be warned, what we've got here with these bundles is everything that we can do today. So once they're gone, they're gone. We will, of course, get them back in the future, but because obviously they have to be cut individually and sorted and then put into a bundle, and of course all colours have to be in stock, it can take time for the them to come back into the system so if you're interested in this please do grab it while you can so it works out at three pound 46 for a half meter which so again if you put that as a meter 346 is uh, for just under eight pounds a meter which is really really good just under seven pound yes just on sorry that's my maths going very badly wrong straight away. So yes, yeah, just under seven pounds for a metre. So the other thing about this, although it's 149 pounds, which does sound like a lot of money, but not when you work out how much fabric you've got, we have got it on split pay, which means that you can pay it over three instalments. There's no interest charged. You get your bundle on your first payment, so you don't get a third of it, you get the whole lot and then you pay the, the other two instalments um, as the months go. But so it's a really, really good deal. Can you see? Oh, sorry, I've just been told we've got nine left. Nine left. So if you're interested, don't just put it in your basket and wait for the next thing. Put it in your basket, check out, eight, eight already, check out and then come back again because the postage is only going to be charged once today. So you can come back and put something out in your basket later. I mean, I would definitely have this in my stash. Th this is something that you will always find when you just need a little bit of something, a little bit of colour to add to your project. I mean, looking at this, you know, I think if you watched me last week, you'll know I like brights. You could use some of this to add to that one you've got there. You could use these colours. So I, if I was making a bag, I might have an additional pocket 
put onto the front of the bag or the handles in a different colour. If I was making a dress or a jacket, I might use that to put some binding around the edge just to lift it and have a little pop of colour. So what you can see is you can do a lot with these. If you're doing patchwork and quilting, remember a half metre is two fat quarters effectively. So you can use this and we've got some fabulous bundles with uh, Kerry's patterns later. But once you've used that bundle and that pattern, you've got the pattern, you can make it again. You can use some of these colours. So there's always things you can do. Um, we really are down to um, only six now. They are flying out and they are worth it. They really are. Oh, sorry, it's down to four. You can just see it's going down, going down, going down. So please, if you're interested, this is your last chance today. And we, they will be back. They will be back but not for a few weeks at least because of the, the complexity of putting the bundle together. And don't forget, you can split the payment. So if that seems like a lot, and it's not a lot for what you're getting, it seriously isn't, but if you feel you can't right now pay 149, you don't have to, you pay it in three instalments, you pay the first instalment of 49.66, and then you pay the other two instalments and of course you get your fabric when you've paid that first instalment. We are down to two bundles remaining, two bundles remaining. Well, one actually, because this one's going... <laughs> this one's disappearing, this one's disappearing. No, look at this, it's fabulous. I just, I can't believe how much fabric is here. Um, so 36 pieces of either a metre or a half a metre. Most of them are half a metre with the key uh, basic colours being a metre. So you've got the ecru, uh, cream, white and navy, for instance, they are a metre. So they're the ones that you tend to, um, to, to use more often, probably. So I'm going to have to put this aside. I'm going to have to move on to something else. I also want to keep stroking it. I just love this. This is amazing. OK, OK. So I'm going to do the uh, Riley Blake bundle, which is this one. Now these, because it's a bundle and you get the whole lot in the bundle, these are pre-cut into half metres. And if you want more, you have to buy another bundle and it will also be pre-cut into half metres. These are available individually by half metre lengths on the website, but this is the bundle. So this bundle, again, let's have a look. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So twelve, I oh, just realised you had the top of my head there. Sorry about that. Uh, so we've got twelve half metres. So we've got six metres of fabric and that is 95.49. Let me open one out. I'm going to pick this one. Now, this is Riley Blake. Now, Riley Blake is a fabric brand that you will have heard of before because I know Kerry has Riley Blake fabrics in her patterns. It is a beautiful quality cotton. It really is lovely. Um, this is one of the pieces. So this is a half metre again. So you can see how lovely this is. So if you had a, if you had a fat quarter, this is what you'd be getting. So it's like basically two fat quarters makes your half metre. And the colours, again, they're beautiful. And what I like about when you get a bundle like this is you have this whole lot from this range and you can put them together. So again, I could put this stripe, if I move that here, look, I can put that stripe with that. I could put this cotton one here with that. So they go well together. So you can mix and match some of these patterns and really make things pop. Look at these two together. So you've got the grey. This is all the same bundle that you can put these together. I could pick out this little bits of yellow in this one. I could pick that out with that one there. So again, just imagine all the projects you can make. Anything that you can make out of fat quarters, you can make easily out of these. Keep getting stickers on me. So look at that together. And I do, I just like matching and mixing colours. So again, you could just, you can make things, you could make bags, you can make things for the kitchen, you could do a tea cosy, a cafeteria cosy, placemats, lots of different things, even oven gloves. There's so many different things you can do with this fabric. And having a half metre, 
of each piece, so there were 12, gives you so much that you can do and so many different projects you can make. And again, even if you haven't got a project in mind at the moment, this is a bundle that's worth having because there'd be a time when the weather's awful or when we're locked down again and uh, you've got time on your hands to sew. You can't go to the shops to buy anything. Ah, but I've got that bundle in my cupboard so you can then sew with your bundle. OK, so I've got I've got another couple of um, so I'm just listening to what Hannah was saying then about the the fabrics we've got on the desk. We are going to look at. So the ones on that metal bundle bundle here, three, these are the most popular three and these are available. I'm just going to put that to one side so I don't mix them up. These so these are, so you get them in the bundle. And that's a bundle of 12 as half meters or you can buy them like this oh, I just we've uh, we have only got a limited amount of this so these are half meters and so we've only got 12 of these they are 7.99 so okay so basically we've got six meters available and again, this has got this really lovely fabric. It's, just, it's so soft. I wish I could sort of, you know, like scratch and sniff. It's that sort of feel. I should be able to show this to you. It's really lovely and soft. It doesn't, it doesn't crease really easily, which is nice look. So I, I've just creased it up and you, it's not really badly creased. I mean, it will crease, of course, it's cotton. But it is a really lovely feel. It's a heavier weight than, than sort of your standard patchworking weight. Um, but you can make all sorts of things with it. And again, you know, I look at this and I can see clothes as well as fun projects for the home or gifts. So this is a really lovely fabric. So that's the red. And we have the same in grey and the same in this sort of soft lemon. So let me show you the grey. So it's exactly the same, but I'm going to open it out to have a look at. There we are, look, so that's the grey. So this one, do I, I need to turn it up the other way, don't I? Because the camera's, right, so you've got wording on here. So vintage love, antique friend. I'm not sure about antique friend. Is that implying that your friends are old? But <laughs> I, think it's, I, think it's, I think it's vintage antique and I think it's love and friend. So put those two combinations together. But it's just kind of like quite fun. So it's got a mixture here. I've got um, scissors into, into a cotton reel. I've got rose lemonade. Uh, I don't, there's some kind of herbs hanging down here. I should imagine it's sage or something. I'm not really good at that sort of thing. But it's just like a fun thing. So you could use this for all sorts of projects. It could be making sewing gifts for friends because you've got the sewing thing. It could be making something for the kitchen because you've got the lemonade and you've got the herbs hanging. So it's kind of like multi-purpose print on there. Isn't that pretty? It's really lovely. And that's a soft grey. And of course, if you've nabbed the big mega bundle, again, you can actually put some of these things together to really make them pop. Look at that. So yellow or look at that one, orange with it. I mean, grey goes with so many different colours. You can really mix it with anything. It's a very fashionable colour for homeware as well. So that's a good one. And then let's have a look. You can feel every time I'm doing this, can you see I'm stroking this fabric every time? It's because it is so soft and lovely. Let's look at this one. This is the yellow. So this is a really soft sort of lemony yellow. It's very, very pretty. I think actually it's slightly brighter in reality than it is showing on the screen uh, because obviously we've got the overhead lights looking at it. So it really is a lovely, lovely yellow colour. So it's got the same, I've done it upside down again. It's got the same, same wording, the same print on it. So these three fabrics, the red, the grey and the yellow have all got the same uh, print, the same wording. So vintage antique and love friend. So that's really lovely. There's the same sort of lovely little motifs all over it. Um, so again, I think this is a really beautiful colour. So again, it's 7 99 It's a half metre. And you could, if you wanted to, you can buy them together because again, grey and yellow go beautifully together. If you want a bit of pop of colour, 
you can have the yellow and the red together. So they do work really nicely together. Or, of course, you can mix them with the mega bundles. So, oh, this is so lovely. All these fabrics, I'll have them in my, uh, my cupboard. You can put them into the early bird bags. So you've got something to store them in. So these are really, really beautiful. I'm just folding it back up again. I'm a little bit anal about that. I like things folded neatly. So those are those. Look at those. So don't forget, those you can buy individually as half metre pieces. And then if I look back at this bundle, this is so this is all the Riley Blake fabrics. So this is this bundle of 12 pieces. This is called the idyllic range. So looking at that, look at these, all these, and they all kind of mix and match beautifully. So I looked at this one before. Let's, let's pick out another one to look at. Look at this one, if you prefer darker colours. I'm just going to open this one out. Again, it's that lovely, lovely sort of soft cotton, and it's quite, it's quite a nice weight cotton. It's not sort of flimsy or thin. It's got some weight to it, so beautiful for dressmaking. And it does mean if you're thinking of doing it on dressmaking, look on the website because you can buy sort of multiple bundles of, or of it. But this, these are all coming as half metre pieces and you get 12 half metre pieces in this particular bundle. And this is one of them. So again, it's got these beautiful floral designs on it and you can mix them. So you could actually bring in some of these other colours. So again, I could mix that with it. So I can mix all of these different things from this one bundle. Let's put this away and look at some of the other ones. So, all they're, oh, I've lost a label, sorry. I don't know where that label comes from. Let's look at some of these. So on the website, don't forget, I mean, we're just sort of going through some of these lovely colourful fabrics that you've got. But on the website, you can actually go and look for all of these and they're all individual. So you can choose your own colour scheme and there's a lot more. So don't don't feel restricted. You, you might not be into bold, bright colours. You might prefer more muted. You might prefer more neutrals. Have a look on the website. There's lots and lots of there. Uh, they're cut to order, which means that you can have the length that you require. Um, but I, I, can I, Anna, can I, can I, Hannah, can I go to this one? So these are jersey. So this is a jersey fabric. So those were cottons. These are jersey. Now look at this. You know I'm going, well, both of these. I just love them. So this is, this is the purple. So again, you can look at how wide that is. That's super wide. That's, that's even, I think that's even wider than 60. That's really wide. And it's got a lovely feel to it. This is, this is a jersey. So a jersey is a stretch fabric. So this is definitely something to make clothes out of. Or um, you can use it for all sorts of fun projects. I mean, can you imagine a little teddy bear made out of this? Can you imagine like a vintage teddy? made out of a lovely fabric like this. It is 62 inches wide and it's 95% cotton and obviously 5% elas elastane, so that gives you that stretch. I, I would, so if I was sewing with this, I would use a ballpoint needle. Um, that, so a ballpoint needle has a slightly rounded point or tip which means it parts the fibres rather than piercing them. And it's better for the fabric. You can use a universal needle, but a ballpoint needle would be better. If you find you're getting skipped stitches, use a ballpoint because that can be the reason. Um, look at the print. It just looks so deep and lovely, doesn't it? So again, this is a half metre piece, which is $7.99. So definitely, I would use this more, more for dressmaking. Um, things like you could make t-shirts out of it. But as I say, you can use it for some crafty projects. Um, you don't have to be restricted. I wouldn't use it for quilting um, because with the precision that you need for joining pieces, the stretch might make it more difficult. But it is such a lovely, lovely piece. And this is the red. I've got to show you the red as well. I can't tell you which is my favorite on this. I love red one of my favourite colours, but I just love those deep 
purpley pink colours as well. So this is the red piece. It's exactly the same composition, so it's 95% cotton, but with a 5% elastane to give it the stretch. So this is stretch jersey with a beautiful, pu the print sort of has this depth to it, which is really lovely. I think it's a really gorgeous print. But I just, uh, so this is a half metre piece, but you can buy more. So if you're looking to make, so can you imagine a wrap dress in this? This would look absolutely stunning. So you can buy a bigger piece to make something like a wrap dress. Well, you'll see um, in a little while, we've got some fabulous patterns from Fiona. There are certain patterns that you could look at making. So have a look at those. Although again, we've got fabric bundles to look at with those. Consider you've got all of these options as well and they will be on the website. So that's a jersey, so that's two jerseys, particularly good for dressmaking. But let me bring in some other ones. We've got, oh, I, I've got, to, can I bring in these ones, Hannah? <laughs> so so I, I have to make sure she's ready for me to put it on the screen. So look at these. these so these are cotton. We're back to cotton. Um, and these are, so it says quilting weight, but I don't ever be restricted because yes it's quilting weight so it's brilliant for quilting it's again it's that lovely soft fabric it's beautiful it feels really nice but I would also look at this as dressmaking I, I tend to look at everything for dressmaking I like dressmaking but also cushion covers or bags you can use anything like this this would be really lovely for that I you can make oven gloves out of it you could make table mats out of it it's a really lovely good weight cotton fabric it's half a metre, about 45 inches wide, so 115 centimetres wide, I'm guessing. Um, can, can we just double check that? Yeah. Thank you. We're gonna, just going to double check what that width is. I don't want to mislead. But it's a really lovely piece of fabric here. Um, and I'm just seeing whether it's... Is this a Riley Blake again? It, no, I don't think so. I don't know what it's so... So it's just, it's got that same feel though. It's a really good quality fabric, which is why I thought it might be. But it's so lovely. And the print is beautiful and the colours are really bold. So that's one, that's one version. So that's uh, 7.49 for this half metre piece. So this one, which is the same range. And again, it's, a lovely, it's such a lovely print. Let's look at this. It's sort of flowers, but it, yes, it is. It's like those um, those spiral. Do you remember that machine that you could just sort of make these spiral things out of? It's, it sort of has that feel to it, but it's got so many colours on there that you could actually mix all sorts with it. And I'd even be tempted to mix these two. I just, you know, you, they, they're from the same collection. They work together. Again, it's a half metre piece. 749 for this half metre piece. Um, this one is very, very limited. There's, there's only four metres left of this. Uh, remember that we are selling it in a half metre piece. So if you wanted to buy four metres, you'd take the whole stock. So if you're looking at this for a bigger project, it could be the back of a quilt. It could be a, a garment. It could be a bag. So if you're looking for more, uh, be aware that we have got limited stock. So here we are looking at this. Is, I'm, I just love this. I'm just feeling all these beautiful fabrics. Um, I've got my eye on another set. Shall I keep you guessing? There's another, these again, these are cottons. Look at these, look at these. But these have got like a real retro feel to them, I feel. So let me look at this blue. I mean, my eye goes to this one, but I'm going to go for the blue first. I'm going to go for this one because it's, it's a sort of... Um, I don't know, sky blue, per like lilac-y blue? What would you call that? I'm not sure. It's really lovely. Again, oh, periwinkle blue. There we are. But isn't it beautiful? So it's, again, it's that lovely soft cotton. I'm sorry that we've got a sort of creased piece. It's because people like me get them out and handle them a lot. Uh, but, uh, so this is a really lovely piece of fabric. Again, it's a, uh, it's a half metre. Um, it's a print. So that's why it's got a white background look. 
and it's really really beautiful and as well as the little flowers on here you've got sort of like little sort of stitched lines as well with the detail which is really lovely so again all sorts of things that you can do all sorts of projects you can make or if you haven't got a project in mind at the moment pop it into your basket pop it into your fabric stash and you've got something that you can make into a beautiful design later on um, knowing that you've got the fabric to hand to do so and don't forget a lot of these will go beautifully with the mega stash from earlier so that's that one let me look at these other two so i'm going to go for this second colorway so this is the one that grabs my attention look at this it's a it's a, I'm, again i'm not sure that the lighting here does the justice to the color because it is a really bold orange it's a sort of tangerine orange so if you imagine the satsumas at the moment it's that kind of real deep orange it's lovely still has the little flowers and of course the little sort of stitch detail in between it's really really fabulous you could yeah, think think about spring makes things you might be making for the spring what about some outside cushion covers for your chairs outside this would be really really lovely and on the show last week we had that little pot of um, the sealant that you can put on to waterproof the fabric the od coat so that will be on the website so if you're thinking about something for outdoors you remember you can get that as well and add that to it isn't that absolutely gorgeous and again I, it's just a love of this fab i love this fab i love the feel of it this is why it's creased because it's people like me keep doing this you know that when you when you go to a shop and you buy fabric you have to do it don't you have to feel i'm feeling it for you okay so <laughs> you can feel rest confident that this fabric has got a lovely soft handle because i'm squishing it and showing it to you it really is absolutely beautiful there's one more colorway in this one um okay i'm not going to fold that up nicely i will in a minute I know, it, I don't, don't say, don't say anything, Joe, because it, it does go against the grain. I like things perfect. <laughs> so here, this, now this is so, you know, if you're not into hugely bold colours, but you like a little splash of bold, this is quite nice. So it's a sort of soft white, um, and then it's got these blue and turquoisey flowers on it. So this is a really, really pretty one too. But, you know, there's no reason why you can't combine them another reason to put them together you can easily put them together of course you can put a plane with these so you're buying the half meter and then you've got things you can do with it as a half meter because remember it's basically two fat quarters or you could decide to put it in your stash and have it ready to bring out when you've got a new project idea later okay we've got 10 minutes so I'm going I'm going to be very flippant look at me look at that oh goes against the grain but I want to bring these in because again so these are completely different so these are again they're dressmaking you don't use these for quilting and I wouldn't use them for bag making because they're very soft very soft oh sorry I have to put that one to the side it's sold out I can't show you that one um, but let me show you I'm going to show you this one because actually this is a similar sort of feel to it it's incredibly soft can you see how that just sort of folds and flows so that would look really lovely in a, some, a full skirted dress something that you want to flow and swish you know as you're walking along it's really lovely and soft it's a hundred percent spun viscose and it's a lawn weight. So lawn weight is, is quite light. 140 centimetres wide, this one. So it's nice and wide. And again, you're getting a half metre piece here. But if you are thinking about making it for dressmaking, do think about maybe three metres. Um, so a full, full, full skirted dress, you need three, three and a half metres. And this would be for dressmaking. Of course, you could make a tunic top. You could make a light, lightweight top out of this. This would be lovely holiday wear. So that is beautiful. And you just use a universal needle. Now this. So this is kind of like scuba. I don't know if it's actually scuba, but it's scuba-ish, scuba-esque. So it has that stretch to it, but not huge amount of needle. It is for like bodycon things, things that you want to be close fitting. But it's, it, <laughs> Hannah's saying bodycon, bodycom scares her does me i wouldn't make a bodycom dress because that's the one that you know fits really snugly all the way down shows every lump and bump you don't have to make bodycom but it has that sort of th that body to it 
Now this I'd probably use a stretch needle for because it's quite dense. Um, so a stretch needle is slightly sort of more suitable for highly dense stretchy fabrics. And again, it will prevent the um, skip, skip stitches. It's a beautiful print. So this one is 96% polyester and 4% spandex. So this is why you, um, you know it's a sort of a scuba style and this is why you use a stretch needle. So basically, use a stretch needle for anything which has lycra or spandex in it. So you can see, look at the print on that. Again, it's beautiful colours. This is my sister's colours. They're all autumnal colours. They are absolutely beautiful, um, really bold. It's got this, look at this splash of yellow with the orange. And again, the colours are very punchy, uh, possibly more punchy than you can see on the screen because of our overhead lights. Really, really beautiful. This is a deep tangerine. It's absolutely lovely. Not, not that I'm hungry or anything, but I just keep talking about tangerines. <laughs> so this is a lovely, I love this. So again, you, you know, you could make a top, you could make quite a nice fitted top with this, a sort of t-shirty style top. And because the print is big and bold and really lovely, you want to choose a pattern that has minimal lines. So you're not cutting into the fabric too much and let the fabric do the talking. So it's a perfect pattern for a simple, uh, perfect print for a simple pattern. That's really, really lovely. OK, I'm down to minutes. Oh, let me do this bundle here. Oh, these, sorry, not, not a bundle. They're just shown together, um, but they are all separate. So they're all the same design. They've got these little tiny hearts. I think it's most clearly obvious on this one, on the black and white. I love this. I love black and white. So this is normal width, half a meter again. And looking at this, you've got the little tiny hearts here. Can you see? Oh, yes, you can. You can see these really, really um, nice. Yeah, it can be, that's a, if, yeah, that looks better, I think. So when you go out, look at that, really beautiful little hearts on there. So this is definitely a piece. Um, 4 99 for the half meter. You can use this for patchwork. You can use this for all sorts of craft projects. You could use it. You can, can you imagine if you make something for somebody and then you use this to bind the edges? Um, sort of, you know, it would look lovely. You, this is with love. This is a project with love. Um, you could use it to make things. So if you could make, what about making a cafeteria cosy? Can you imagine? And uh, you know, you love coffee. You've got this. You've got these little hearts. So it kind of, it, it's beautiful. A lovely fabric design. It is 100% cotton. And again, it's a good weight. It's not a really fine. It's not like a fine patchwork fabric. It's got a nice weight to it. So we're just going to um, quick look at these last, I'm going to, oh, three. So it's exactly the same print and I've got three different colours. Let me do them one at a time because they come individually. So this is the uh, 4 dollars for a half a metre. Same lovely little print and this is in sort of a raspberry and uh, sort of grey colours on this but like little pink background. It's really, really pretty. Or go into this one so they're all individual so the, this one is so there's sort of two very similar here now this one has got little blue and uh, light beige so this is called sand and blue so this is sand and blue so it's four pound ninety for the half meter piece and again it's, it's that same fabric that same really sort of medium weight 100 percent cotton and then our last one here this is, this is ice cream. What do we call this one? I would call this ice cream colours. This is pastel. So you've got pale pink, pale green, and pale, very pale yellow in there. Isn't that beautiful? So re that's really lovely pastel-y colours if you are more into your pastels. OK, let me take you back to our early bird offer. So I'm going to go over to the other desk. We're really nearly at the end of the show, so I'm walking over. And here I am. That's clever, isn't it? One desk and into another. So just quickly, because we're nearly at the end of the show. OK, so sorry, what percentage have gone? So we've got over two thirds, over two thirds have gone. 
And this is a bag, so we could potentially sell out at this special price very, very quickly. So if you are interested, please do pop it into your basket now. We've got two colours. This is the lilac purple, mauve, <laughs> whatever colour, so it's that colour. Um, lovely, big, big, um, nice, commodious bag for your sewing machine. It zips down the sides, both sides, so you can open it out properly to put the, um, your sewing machine in easily. It's got a robust base to it. It's got the feet on the bottom so that you know it's not going to be sitting onto a wet ground when you're putting it into the car. Um, the zips come up from both sides. So it's really easy to put your machine in and take your machine out. It also has a front pocket. Um, we're going to look at a price comparison again. So this has been, um, I won't say the name of the shop, but you can see it on the screen. So this is exactly the same bag at £29.90 and this is now, this is this morning that Hannah has found these prices but we're selling the same bag and I can't believe this price because I've bought two of these in previous times, it's £15.99. That price will only be while the early bird offer is on so it won't last forever and I don't know what the price will go up to but it will go up that we know. So don't forget we have this one in the mauve I think we're calling this and same price, um, same, same kind of bag, same offer, it's just a different colour. So this one is, I would call this kind of burgundy red, uh, what are we calling it? Are we calling it just red? Okay so it's sort of, a, it's a deep red, it's a tomato sauce red. <laughs> So, you know, I'm going to have quite a few food allergies as we go on because I'm hungry. So <laughs> I'm thinking food. So, yes, this is, this is again, it's lovely. It's a I mean, it's lightweight on its own, which is brilliant because you don't need a bag that's heavy before you put anything in it. So it's nice and lightweight on its own. It's commodious. The base is 20 centimetres wide, so it will fit most ordinary sewing machines, whether they're computerised, electronic or manual, it will fit it in. So the price at fifteen ninety nine is until stock lasts. Um, it's today, but I'm saying until stocks last because it it will probably be gone later on. So if you're thinking about it, do I mean I use these? I, as I say, I have I have more than one. Um, I use these not only for my sewing machine, brilliant when you're transporting your machine for sewing classes, etc., but also for storage at home if you just want to tuck your machine away. I use them for that, but I also use one to carry my project materials. So I will have my fabric, haberdashery, um, scissors and everything in, in a bag as well. And as I say, it starts off very light, so when you start adding weight to it, you're not having something that you find difficult to lift up. Nice handles, I love the way that they go in at the top here. And Velcro holds them together so it's comfortable to carry as well because that, that's another thing if you're going to have to carry it if you have to carry this upstairs when you go to a sewing class or park in one car park and then walk to the venue you want something that's handy and easy to carry and comfortable on the hand so that's the first hour we are going into a break briefly um, and next we have got Fiona who is coming so Fogo Fiona from Sew Girl, she is the Sew Girl. We've got some pattern packs with fabric bundles that you can put together if you want to. And she is going to show us some hacks to show that not only do you buy the pattern and you make what's on the pattern, she's going to show you some clever ideas to extend the use of that pattern into creating some other types of garments. Just some sort of simple, easy things you can do, but she's going to show us how it's done. Join me, Vicky Carroll, live from 8am on Friday the 18th of December for a very special show. Hello everyone, I'm Delphine Brooks. It's so great to be here and part of the Sewing Street family. I'm local, I'm only down the road in uh, Warwickshire. Uh, I started sewing many years ago uh, when I was very young doing uh, lots of art and painting and eventually I went into textiles and I really enjoyed doing the two together. I had then had a bit of a break, uh, something you don't know about me maybe is that I spent many years in the Royal Air Force and eventually in uh, the police as well. 
and then I went full circle and I've come back to uh, my happy place of sewing and uh, which I really enjoy. Uh, my be best sewing tip is measure twice and cut once. I have chipped up a couple of times by uh, not measuring properly and I do always regret it so now I always measure twice, cut once. Anyway I really hope to be with you again soon and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Christmas is going to be a little bit different this year, but Sewing Street will be here to keep you company from 8am to 12pm on Christmas Day. Help me, John Scott, spread some festive cheer by sending in your Christmas messages for us to play on air on Christmas Day. Whether it's a message to your fellow Sewing Street fans or to a loved one, a video message or text, we want to hear from you. Send your videos, photos and messages to studio at sewingstreet.com by Tuesday the 22nd of December to be included and be a part of Sewing Street's Christmas Day celebrations. Hi there, my name's Alison Marion and I'm thrilled to be joining the Sewing Street family. I live in Staffordshire where I run a couple of sewing groups and I have a passion for vintage sewing machines and also a plique. I've stitched in some form for as long as I can remember but I absolutely love teaching and helping people stretch their skills and hopefully demystifying some of the techniques that can be quite daunting for beginners. So I'm looking forward to meeting the team and getting into the studio. See you soon. Join me, Vicky Carroll, live from 8am on Friday the 18th of December for a very special show. Hello everyone, I'm Delphine Brooks. It's so great to be here and part of the Sewing Street family. I'm local, I'm only down the road in uh, Warwickshire. Uh, I started sewing many years ago uh, when I was very young doing uh, lots of art and painting and eventually I went into textiles and I really enjoyed doing the two together. I had then had a bit of a break. Uh, something you don't know about me maybe is that I spent many years in the Royal Air Force and eventually in uh, the police as well. And then I went full circle and I've come back to uh, my happy place of sewing, and uh, which I really enjoy. Uh, my be best sewing tip is measure twice and cut once. I have chipped up a couple of times by uh, not measuring properly and I do always regret it. So now I always measure twice, cut once. Anyway, I really hope to be with you again soon and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Hi, welcome back. Um, now I'm going to be joined in this hour by Fiona from So Girl, who is, uh, I, just, I just met her today and we couldn't stop jibber jabbering before the first session because we both have a passion for dressmaking. So I'm really pleased to be uh, with, with Fiona. Now, at the moment she's busy setting up the sewing machine, so she's going to show us a hack. So before we go to Fiona, let's look at the first of the bundles. Now the, what we're looking at first is the kimono pattern. So this is the kimono pattern. So if I turn it around, um, you can see it here. These have all been on before um, and they've been so popular we've bought them back again. Just have to work out where to put this for the camera. So this is the kimono pattern. Uh, I'm going to open it because I want to see what's inside the pattern envelope. But before I open it, look, this has got so much information already on the envelope. You've got the pattern that's been made up in a fabric. Um, this is obviously fab fabric that Fiona's used. We've got some fabric bundles to show you in a minute. The sizes on this go from small to extra, extra large, and it's suitable for beginners. Okay, so what's small to extra, extra large? Flip over 
on the back of the pattern, and it's always worth knowing this, back of pattern envelopes have so much useful information. So not only have I got the line drawings that show me the front and the back, that show me the pocket placement, which you might not be able to see from the photography, you can see it from here. There's a description. It's a loose fitting, boxy kimono cardigan with a front band, etc. Details of what you're getting there. Then you look down at the sizing. So I said it was small to extra, extra large, which means it's eight to 26. Now, when I say eight to 26, these are basically based on M&S sizing, aren't they, Fiona? So it's kind of sizing, sorry, I've just <laughs> caught, she's busy guessing something, I'm just throwing a question out to her. So it, it's great sizing. It's sizing, as you know, in the high street. Uh, which does mean, and it's also loose fitting. So if you're a, a 12 or a 14 in the high street, with these patterns, you can look at making those. But don't just go and do that, because also what you've got here is you've got the bust, waist and hip measurements. So you can compare those. So if you think I'm a 14, you can look at the 14, and if I put my glasses on, I can read the measurements. So for a 14, for instance, it was a 38-inch bust, 31-inch waist. I'm so pleased to hear that. Because some of our other pattern brands, the waist size is still tiny compared to the bust. Mine isn't anymore. So it's really nice to know it's a really realistic waist size. And uh, hip 41. So check. So if you're 14, check your own measurements. Check that you're in line with those. And don't forget, it's multi-size. So if you go from one size to another, it doesn't matter. You use the cutting line and you just grade from one to the other. Um, we're going to show the website because the second image on the details is the back of the pattern. So you can actually see what I'm looking at here probably more closely than you can by sort of looking through the camera. I, I just think this is really important and it is something that you need to look at. You don't sort of necessarily need it to buy the pattern today, but when you're going to make the pattern, this information helps you make the right size. It tells you the finished garment measurements. Now the finished garment measurements are the difference between your body measurement and what it will look like when it's finished. And there will be ease in there. And you can see what the finished garment measurements is. So you can see a medium, which is a 12 to 14. Um, you can see the length and you can see the bust. So your bust in inches was 38. The finished garment measurement is 49. So you can see there's 11 inches of ease, which means it's roomy, it's a comfy fit. And actually, if you can see behind me, can you see this one here in this beautiful fabric here? That is the kimono. If I'm just going to look, I've got, okay, you can see I'm fiddling again, fiddling with fabric. That's, that's got to be my second name. Uh, lovely little patch pockets on here. I think we're going to learn how to do those later, aren't we? Oh, yeah. So we're going to look at doing po patch pockets later. And this has got a really lovely front band. It's beautifully sewn. Um, but what's fabulous about it, I think, is that it's very simple lines, which means you can choose a beautiful fabric and then the fabric can do the talking. But before we get to the fabric, I just want to... I've got to go inside this pattern. I'm going to ruin it by going inside. I'm sorry. But I, I, you need to see what the instructions look like as well because, you know, when you're choosing a pattern, if you're new... If you're new to sewing, I think a lot of you that are watching this will have seen Fiona before and you've seen her pattern before. I really am ruining this envelope. Um, you need to know that the pattern you're getting is something you can work with. So one of the first things I am showing you is a little tiny little leaflet in here, So Girl blog. I know talking to Fiona earlier on her blog, there's all sorts of tutorials, sewing tips and hints to help you on your journey. You don't need them for the pattern you're making. The pattern you're making has full instructions, very detailed instructions. It's got the pattern pieces to follow. They're numbered. They're easy to work out what you need. You've got your layouts for your patterns. Uh, so you, you know how to lay out the pattern on the fabric. And then you've got step-by-step -step instructions, all neatly illustrated. So it really is a very easy to follow pattern. And the pattern is printed on good quality paper, which means you can use it again and again and again and again. So it's not going to sort of tear and disintegrate on you when you're sewing with it. Um, you've got the different sizes and you can, as I said, if you find when you check your measurements that you're a small top and a medium um, hips or large hips, if you're pear shaped, don't worry, you just carefully cut from the small to the larger line where you need to. That's all you need to do. It's very, very simple to do that. 
all of the pans. I'm not. I'm not allowed to open anymore. I'm being, uh, you know, because they don't want me to ruin any more pans. No, seriously, all patterns, all of these patterns, all these cell gold patterns are the same quality. This is what you get inside them. Everything you need to make that garment. But what we're going to do today, what Fiona's going to do today, is show how you've got everything you can to make this lovely kimono, easy to wear kimono. You can make it as a dressing gown, you can make it as an evening sort of wrap type of thing, you can make it with whatever you like. What we're going to do is we are going to have a hack from Fiona to show how you can lengthen it and you can change it. That'll be in a minute, but before I do, I want to show you the three fabric bundles we've got so you this is separate so you buy the pattern and then if you want to you can buy the fabric now two and a half meters so that's enough for the larger size so if you're making the smaller you'll have some leftover fabric which you can do some other projects with so I don't want to open out two and a half meters because it's huge but look this is lovely and if I can just get to a raw edge, it's a sort of soft, it's, it's kind of flowy. In fact, you've made this, haven't you? So Fiona has this one right next to her. We'll see that in a second. 98% viscose. So it's a lovely, soft, fluid fabric and 2% elastine. Is that what you said? I think. Spandex. Yeah. Okay, so it's really, really lovely piece of fabric. So two and a half metres, that's enough, as I say, to make the large. Um, the next bundle, again, this is a lovely print. This always feels so soft. Let me so again, we've got two and a half metres. I just want to, I want you to sort of feel, feel with me, even though you can't. This has got a really lovely fluid motion to it. It's a really lovely soft fabric. This is a... Lady McIlroy fabric, 100% viscose, so you've got that lovely, so easy care, easy wear, um, it won't crease too badly, it's soft and flows and it really is a beautiful fabric to work with, absolutely gorgeous, that would look lovely, so I'm going to pop that to one side, I can fold that up later and then finally, so this is the one that I was looking at earlier in the smaller piece, if you remember. So here it is in a two and a half metre piece. And again, it's that lovely, fluid, soft fabric. So it really is a beautiful fabric to work with. And this will look lovely. So it's very similar to, to the one we have on the model behind us. So that's your other bundle. So it's three different choices of fabric, two and a half metres in each. And these are, this is a viscose again and these are the ones that we're recommending for use with this particular pattern but let's move on to one of the other patterns we're going to look at Hilda so I'm going to pop those to one side so with Hilda by popular demand Fiona has split it into two sizes so this, this I think this is the dress that you're wearing this is the dress that um, Fiona is wearing at the moment. So this is a really easy, comfortable dress to wear. So it's a tunic. It's first size, I'm going to swap those over, is 8 to 18. Remember, this is kind of M&S sizing, if you think of M&S sizing. But do check the measurements on the back. Suitable for beginners again. And the second size range is 20 to 28. So this is by popular demand that Fiona has responded to requests for bigger sizes. And here it is. This is what I like to see. Don't forget on the back, you've got the diagrams to show what, you're, what you might not be able to see in a photograph. So you can see it's got a pleat at the top here, um, bands on the arms. It's really lovely. And you've got the sizing and the finished garment measurements, which are really important. And of course, fabric requirements. So shall we have a quick look at the fabric requirements? So when I say that, so if you've got enough here to make the largest size. Okay, so you've got enough. So how many meters is that? So two and a half meters. Now this is a sort of linen type. So this is quite, quite a sort of heavy. It's a stone washed linen. 
It's got a lovely feel to it, make a lovely summery outfit, although it's quite heavy because linen, of course, is good for the summer. So it's quite a heavy one. It will, it will take the pleat quite nicely. It will actually hang beautifully. So this has got some weight behind it. So this is a nice one. We've got this in a sort of teal, it's just teal colour. So that's really pretty. So that's one. And then the other one, now this, if, if you want something much more lightweight, fluid, uh, to flow with you, do you like, do you like that? So just, the, just using a completely different kind of fabric and you'll get a completely different look to your tunic. So you can make it twice and you'll have two completely different looking tunics. So again, this is a very soft one, muted colours. It's a black um, with sort of the really little pretty flowers, sort of ditzy flowers on it. So if that's more your thing, that's the one to go for. So don't forget, pattern, got the two different pattern sizes. And then we've got the two two different fabric bundles for you to choose from. So we are going to focus on the two patterns I've looked at already, but we do have two other patterns that I very quickly want to show you. We're just going to look at the patterns. The bundles are there, so do go on the website and you can see the bundles. We're going to do the Edith first. So again, 8 to 20, so a good size range here. Again, it's suitable. So I think, um, well, I'm going to, poor Fiona's waiting. I'm going to chat with her in a minute. But basically, these patterns are designed with beginners in mind, newbies. But don't be put off if you're more experienced. Sometimes a beginner pattern is perfect because what you do is you choose a fabric that's a bit more demanding or a fabric that's got a really bold print and you want a nice, simple garment to make so the fabric does the talking. This is what you would, you would go into the shops and pay quite a lot of money for. I just love the pockets on this. This is really cool. Long sleeves. Again, let's flip to the back and you can see some of the detail. You can see how this is constructed. You will find that the image on the web will show you the back of the pattern, which has got all this useful information. So that is the Edith, Edith tunic, 8 to 20. Really lovely. That'll last for a ma many, many years. It's a classic. It's a classic design. And finally, I love this, Peggy Sue. Peggy Sue. Pe oh, it's not. Sorry. <laughs> it's only just Peggy. So I'll start <laughs> dancing to the Peggy Sue. OK, you don't want me singing. Really don't want me singing. So this is the Peggy. Now, this is a long or short sleeve top. And actually, I love these. So they're almost three quarter length sleeves. So some of these sort of fancier sleeves are really in at the moment. So this is really good. So this one is suitable for adventurous beginners. But again, remember inside you have very clear instructions on how to construct it. And if there are any bits that maybe you're feeling a little bit unsure of, you've got the Sew Girl blog that you can go and find lots of tutorials and lovely information. So this is a fabulous design. I, love, I, like, I like the three quarter length sleeves, I think. Uh, but you have a choice. You have, in fact, you have, looking at this, you have four sleeve choices. So it's re that's really good. So you've got long sleeves, short sleeves, and um, you've got these other ones. And I just think it's beautiful. Description, simple, loose fitting, round neck, boxy top, hip length with a back neck loop and button fastening. Tells you exactly what you've got. So it says what it's got in the tin. And of course, it's got the size information again. And the size range goes from 8 to 20. So it's a really good size range. I'm going to just pick up the kimono pattern, which I've hidden. This is what we're now, now going to go to Fiona and talk to about this particular design. This is such a lovely classic design. So Fiona, welcome. <laughs> Caught me at it. <laughs> so, but I've got her playing with her lovely garments. Yeah, now you're wearing, Hello, everybody. you're Hello, wearing the morning. Hilda. I'm wearing the Hilda and this is one of my hacks as well. So I thought I'd pop it on and show you because it's one that I wear quite a lot at home. So it's got the lovely frill on the end of the sleeve. So it's just a really I simple really love addition to make the sleeve longer and it gives a bit more cover. Uh, normally the this stand here shows, I don't know if you can see it here, shows the uh, Hilda with the short sleeves. So it's just really adding on a frill. Um, I'm just going to pop this down, actually, so I've got some hands Got free. some hands, because you're going to show us a hack for the kimono. So I'm going to show the hack, the kimono first. That's right. Um, now, this is the one that I've sampled. I've 
practically made. I haven't attached the band yet, but I just wanted to talk to you about the things that I've done to make it slightly different. So what I did was um, I extended the length because the Suki pattern um, is, it's nice and you can go up to any length on the pattern within the, um, you know, within the size range that you have. You can, you can extend the length to um, whatever you like, you know, you could, you could, you know, make it in a, a medium size, but use the, uh, use the extra large length, if you see what I mean. Yes. So as long as you've got the, enough fabric, you're fine. So you can crib any of the lengths in that. Uh, but I thought I'd go even longer and take it, I've, I've added 25 centimetres on the length. And I've added 10 centimetres on the length of the sleeve as well. So and it's the really sleeves are now they cuff length, the sleeves. So now they're, full, they're almost, so they're sort of wrist hugging yeah. length. Um, now, uh, the other thing I've done is I added a tie belt and I've put some little loops on the side as well so that you can sort of, you know, so it can, you know, it's almost like a little mini dressing gown. It really, is, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. But actually, it's something you can just sort of lounge around at home looking like glorious once in, can't you? Like we all like to do. <laughs> but you can, if you made that in a sort of evening-y fabric, yes. it's a really lovely cuff it's up. It's a lovely going out in the evening as well, isn't it? Thing, yes. it's, I mean, it's such a versatile garment. A kimono is yes, this. And of course, you can make them for him indoors too, if you want. Yes, you can. If you feel yes. inclined. <laughs> yes. I have to say, this fabric was absolutely gorgeous to work with. Because it's got that little bit of lycra in it, it's just a little bit weightier. You know, sometimes mm. with viscoses can be very light and they're all moving very around Very light and place. floaty, yes. This one, because it's got the little bit of stretch in it, it's going to be really comfortable to wear. I didn't realise it was 100% vis Well, it's practically 100% viscose. This, this one has it's got, got the little, little bit, bit of the spando in yes. it, wasn't it? Yes. But that just gives it, it just makes it much easier to work with. Mm. And also it doesn't crease as much as well, which is great. But I have to say, you know, whenever you're working with lightweight fabrics, the viscose, it's always a good idea to put down a, some sort of under blanket or duvet cover underneath and lay your fabric on top and that will stop it moving around when you're cutting because, you know, sometimes with these sort of slippery fabrics, you mm. know, that can be a little bit tricky, but nothing, nothing too difficult at all. So um, the other thing, so I lengthened the length in the body, I lengthened the sleeves um, and I'm going to pop all, I'm going to, when I finish this garment sort of in the next few days, I'm going to pop the pictures on the website and all the details of what I did. Um, so that, you know, if you want to come back to it and have a look at that. But the other thing I did is I popped a little, I don't know if you can see it there, but I've popped a little split in the side. So I've left the seam open at the bottom. Um, that's nice. I think, again, if you're lengthening it, that's really nice, If you're nice, lengthening it? it, you might, can it, you see what I mean? So, it's, yeah, it's so le it's the seam is left open at the side and I've sort of got a contrast uh, stitch length there and um, did some uh, contrast top stitching which I thought was, was would be really nice with this one because it's got a little bit of white in it or off-white. So and and top stitching just for those that are new to this is basically stitching you can see on the top of the fabric that's it's as right. simple as that. Yeah you um, can just you lengthen can your stitch length a little bit. Yeah, uh, yeah I do I always put it like to three if I'm top stitching yeah, that and goes I think back to eight, but if you're nervous with yes. it use a fabric a uh, thread color to match the fabric so it's not that visible or indeed leave it out that's but right. it does add such a lovely finishing detail i think um, particularly now, as you say with a contrast thread that's right i think this this fabric really lends itself to a bit of top stitching just to kind of lift yeah. it a little bit um but um i've so i've lengthened the the body length so if you're going to lengthen it 25 centimeters in the body then you also need to do lengthen it in the uh the front band as well to so that it matches so you just lengthen it exactly the same way so you know it's not really um anything to it really now um i've practically made this one because i i just fell in love with this fabric and i just thought, i want to see this made up so I, I went a bit mad really and i thought well i'll i'll just stop just before the end so that i can show <laughs> <laughs> show you something. Yeah, the demonstration um, is, well, this was the one I was going to demonstrate, but I got <laughs> but carried I away. It, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, now you can see at the back of the neck, I've sort of done a little bit of stay stitching there because, as you know, this has got a little bit of stretch in it. So just to sort of stabilize that back neck. And um, the band is, uh, is straight. It's not shaped in any way. And you can see that before I put it on, and this is all written in the instructions, that I've actually... Um, folded the whole band in half like so and then pressed it and then open it out and then just fold under one centimeter on one side only 
Now with the raw edge on the other side, you're are going to join, you're just going to attach the raw edge to the raw edge of the body. And you're going to, you've got a join in the center back of the neck. And so we're just going to find the center mark center point of the back of our neck so to do that you 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 sometimes got a little pleat vis, um you know the crease visible where you you've got the center back fold because this back is cut on the fold um, but if you haven't you can just fold it in half and then just pop a pin in and then you can see where you are and then you match up the centre back seam with the, you, where you've joined the two strips together because you know it's a, quite a long band so you can't really cut it in one length you have to have a join and then you're just joining with it with you're just pinning it together with the right sides together now um, you have some notches on the pattern that, that are indicate the side seam. So if you match, if you not, if you match up the notch this of the um, shoulder seam with a notch on the band, and then that just sort of keeps you in the right place. And then as you go down, you've got a notch as well on the front. Um, now I've cut this band the width of the fabric, so I've got an awful lot more than I need, but that's fine because I can always trim it down. So you don't have to be precise with the band. You can just, you know, you I just cut two widths of the fabric. I thought, well, that's going to be more than enough. And then, so I'm going to have a little bit of excess when at the other end, but no worries. So I'm going to pin it all the way down. Now, I think in, in, normal, uh, in normal life, um, I would probably, um, I would probably hand tack it, hand tack it on. Would you? Really? <laughs> <laughs> I always say that to sort of, you know, cover myself. Some, I probably, I, I, I I teach probably a, wouldn't myself. I teach but. a weekly class and some of my lovely ladies, I'm not sure if you're watching today, some of my lovely ladies love to hand tack. I let them. If they want to hand tack, please do. I personally pin based, which is basically just using pins, but lots of them. Um, I can't be doing with hand stitching unless it's absolutely essential. Really? Yes. Well, there's certain things that it just makes it easier to sew, yeah, doesn't it? it has I mean, to with be a band what suits like you, this, doesn't it? Yeah. Really? I mean, uh, but I know what you mean. I mean, there's times where I think it's easier. You know, I could probably sew this without in, without even any pins on. But yeah. You just want to sort of regulate the fabric. Yes. So that you don't get more on one side and less Especially on the other. Especially actually when you're working with a fabric that's slightly stretchy. That's because right. Because what you don't want to happen is it to sort of be stretching out of shape as you're sewing it. So that's um, right. As yes. I said, I pin base. So I put more pins in. Uh, I notice you're putting your pins at right angles too, which is always good advice, isn't it? I'm doing um, this so that I can run over them quickly and I, it just saves a lot of time, really. Yeah. I mean, in, in normal times, I might probably put them in the other way around, but um, I'm just... I find, yeah, I, I mean, them. it's sort of good, good practice to uh, put them at right angles because they're easier to whip out as you they sew. They are easier, And I yeah. must admit, I do never sew over them. I always whip Don't them you? out as I get to them. <laughs> I'm very naughty. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to take a deep breath as I go over my pin. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, this is the thing. Everybody does things slightly differently and neither is right or wrong. It's what suits you. Um, yeah, but so if you have your pins running down the seam, it, it kind of holds the seam together really well. But do be careful because as you're sort of running it through, you could end up getting pricked by the pin as you get to it, which is why right angles is better, really. Now, I haven't tested this machine, so I'm hoping it's working all okay. right. I don't even know where the, the <laughs> yeah, pedal is. So, um, is so, of course, yeah. Fiona's using one of our Elna machines that we do sell and they are on the website. Um, Elna's a fabulous brand of machines. It's the distributed by the same company that distributes Genomi, which is probably the biggest selling brand. I'm not sure. I might be saying that uh, in inaccurately. So really good quality machines. Uh, this is a little computerized machine. I would probably call it an entry level one. I'm not exactly sure which one she's using. Uh, it's the 550. It's, it's a really fabulous machine. You can hear you can hear the quality when you listen to it stitching. It's, it's a, very, a very quiet machine. Um, so you just select the stitch. It sets any length or width that's needed. So it's really good. Good little machine to use. Fiona, are you, are you just using the regular stitch length on this for the Just the, the regular stitch length, yes. I'm hoping it's stitching all right, is it? 
yeah, I haven't had a chance to to, to um, because, it, because because there's such a short time between shows, there's no chance. There's no chance to do what you would do at home, which would be to set your machine up and test on a scrap. So you should always do that. Um, you can use for this fabric because it's only got a small amount of the uh, the stretch in it. You can just use a universal needle. Um, I would use a new needle with every project if you can get into the habit of doing that. Um, so, or every eight hours of sewing. So if you make this in four hours, you can use it for the next project because uh, it will be a quick make um, so, because it's sort of simple pieces to put together. And you can, make, you can make one for yourself. You can make one, as you've done, for your daughter, I think you said, Fiona. This one's for your daughter. Um, well, I thought, yes, you might like this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, should, she not, should she have not known? Sorry. <laughs> I, <don't, laughs> I just told her what her Christmas present this program, is. Yes. It's probably a bit late for Christmas now, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry, I've, put, I've put the speed up now, so I thought I'd get this done. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now, and Father um, the Christmas is real. <laughs> we, I had a Zoom meeting uh, yesterday, and somebody on that Zoom meeting said that they didn't believe in Santa. Well, I can tell you, he is real. I went to Lapland with my children when they were a little bit younger, and it was absolutely fantastic, well worth doing, and he definitely is real. I've seen him. I've seen him in person. I didn't have to wait up at night. I went to see him in person. Absolutely fabulous, fabulous trip. I thought I thought Father Christmas lived in Worthing, where I live, because there's one round our <laughs> oh, way. Oh, no, you see, there, Father come? Christmas has a lot of helpers. He gets around, doesn't cause he? Because he's busy this time of year, oh, right. so he can't he can't be everywhere. So often no. what you see in the shopping malls and things are his helpers. But the real one is real, I promise. He was in Lapland. Um, so Fiona's just stitching on that band and she's doing it super fast, um, but you so can obviously take I've a bit got, more time. I'm doing a one centimetre seam allowance. Now this, this be, being a, a loose fitting project, I'm doing a one centimetre seam allowance. Um, and I have sewn from one side down from the back neck. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to sew all the way down from the back neck to the bottom edge on the other side. And this just stops it, you know, so that you've got all your directional knit, your sewing going in one direction. Yeah. So you're avoiding any, any. That's, that's always another puckering. really good tip that you want to sew in the, in the same direction. So sort of from top to bottom. So hence starting from center back down to hem. Mm. centre back down to here. The only trouble with that, Wendy, is that I've put my pins on the wrong side. Yeah, I, I did. I did. <laughs> so they yeah, were because you, out. you were kind of in a hurry. So, so I'm going to go back to my original plan of sewing without pins. So yes. you can see now that I'm just not bothering But actually, bothering if you pins. put your pins in at right angles, um, let me see if I can. Uh, are, yes, are you can pins get them handy? Out let me, as you let get me grab them. some pins and I'm going to show you. Ooh, I've got a little magnetic dish here. Look what I've got here. So if you, if you put your pins in, and I must say I do like glass headed pins, so if your fabric edge, if you put them in like that, so this is your fabric edge and your pin will be coming out to the right, so when you're feeding it through the machine, this is your foot, you're feeding it through the machine and you can whip them out as you go. And in fact, if you have them on the fabric edge like that, it wouldn't matter whether you were sewing that way or that way because they're still sticking out. So that's just a little tip on how to position your pins when you're sewing and when you're in a hurry yeah. and you're trying to do it on TV the live. The other thing I would do, Wendy, is that when you're stopping, always make sure your needle's down yes. as well. Because if you have to take a pin out, you might pull the fabric Absolutely. and it might shift out of place. So I, I totally agree. It's always agree. a good idea to, to, to make sure your needle's down when you if stop. You're, if your machine doesn't auto-stop with the needle down, um, you can just turn the balance wheel on the side or if you've got a needle up down button, you just press that and it'll put it down. Um, it is always a good idea, as Fiona says, if you're stopping and pausing when you're turning corners, when you're going around curves or anything like that, um, particularly when you're sort of shifting the fabric to move it on, it will prevent you actually taking a huge stitch or going off seam. Can I just say that the two and a half metres, well, if you're any size up to, I think it was large, uh, you've got enough to uh, do the length, the longer length that, that I'm That you're making. doing now? With the slightly larger sizes, you might need some extra, I'd probably say another metre. Okay. Um, I haven't um, worked that one out yet, so, uh, but I probably will pop it onto the blog about how much fabric you need. Um, but it's, it's, it's going to be more, uh, you know, at least a metre. 
extra for the larger sizes. So anything up from extra large to XXL, you will need an extra metre. But for That's only to make the extra long. So if you want to make it as per pattern, the, the two and a half yes. is enough. Because oh, yes, definitely. on the back it says, and that's what, we, that's what we've got in our fabric bundles, we've got two and a half. Yes. So if you want to make it longer, you will need... Well, if you're extra large or extra yes, extra large, for the you extra will need large a bit more. You will need a little bit extra. But to make it as per pattern, and the finished length on the pattern um, ranges from 24 uh, centimeters or inches, 24 inches to 28 inches, depending on the size you're making. So that's the finished length. So that'll be from nape of neck to the hem. That would mm. be the finished length. So if you wanted it long, so you can you know, put a tape measure behind, see where it finishes. And as Fiona said, if you're making the small, but actually you quite fancy it being a little bit longer, just when you come to cutting out your um, pattern piece and your fabric, continue down until you get to the extra long hemline and you've increased it by four inches just like that without having to do any particular pattern hacking. Right. Nice and easy. So you can see now that I've attached my band and um, that's all on. And then I've, what I do before I press it outwards, I press the seam flat because it can sometimes pucker a little bit. So I press my seam there and then I open it out and then I press it. Now you want to press the seam allowance towards the band. Now don't, you've already folded that band in half, so when you press it, you don't want to un... Yeah, don't unpress You don't want your to unpress your band, but it's quite easy just to sort of, just press lightly that You're using band. a steam iron. I'm using a steam so iron, So you get yes. nice and steam. Oh, we did have a message running along the bottom. Well, I'll get it up. I'm just ready to I'm just put my glasses back on so I can read it. So this is from Alison. Uh, morning, ladies and crew. Um, We'll be cutting out your Celia dress. You can see I'm struggling to read this later today, Fiona. So she's she's going to this is uh, oh, she's going to be cutting Celia. out your Celia dress, and she's looking Cecily. forward to it. Cecily oh, is it dress. Cecily? I think it's Celia dress. Celia. It is. Sorry, Cecily. I'm struggling. Oh. I put me I put my seeing eyes on. She's going to get it done for Christmas, hopefully. <laughs> you know, we want to see it on for Christmas. Who is yes. that? Yes. Oh yeah, you must share share an image of that. Um, <laughs> Because we'd all like, we'd like to, because it's really nice. That was the I, last show I was on. That, uh, we, we did the Cecily dress. Oh, did dress. you? Yes. I haven't got that one here yes. to look so at. We're, we're not here. We're not doing that one this I, so. I We've just got quite a few of my patterns today. We've sort of decided to sort of run, you know, this is like the So Girl show. I, oh, I think <laughs> and absolutely we're, we're doing is. all of the patterns in one, you know, not all of them, but we're doing a lot of the patterns that we've done previously. And don't forget, the patterns are all on pre-order. So if you are looking for some patterns, but these four aren't the ones you're looking, have a look at what we've got in the latest show. And they're also available. And if you've bought something already, you still get them at your same postage price it doesn't it's not each time you buy something you have to pay postage it's the one price per day so that's a really good deal um so now i've got to the end of uh, so i've pressed my bands outwards and excuse me lady right and she's uh, ridiculously I'm a bit skinny hemmed in here excuse <laughs> the pun now um i've just pressed that and um, so let me just press that back again. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fold back the bottom edge. So this is the very lower part of the, uh, the, the very front. And I'm going to fold it back like so. And I'm just going to press that down so that the edges all meet up. So this is just to do the bottom of the bag. So this is just to sort of close up that bottom edge. Now, I'm just going to open it up and I'm going to get a ruler and I'm going to mark her little line. Okay. Now, there are other ways of doing this, but I found this is the easiest to sort of explain to people. So this is the way I've adopted in the pattern, but there are other ways of sewing it into the hem as you're sewing it. But anyway, so what I do is I just draw a little line, preferably not with a, you know, permanent marker like I've done, but with <laughs> some sort of a marking pen. Uh, but pencil actually is fine. Yeah, and then, or you can use the heat away friction pens. I mean, yeah, they're, they they're are good. brilliant. Uh, we've only got about four minutes left on this demo. Right, so. so I'm just going to quickly sew that across and then I can show you how this, easy This is a really, is. really nifty way of finishing that bottom of the, um, the, fa the, the binding. That's um, right, so the, the line that you've drawn is in parallel, runs basically parallel to the bottom edge. 
And so you drop your needle down and you just sew a little back stitch at the beginning there. Sew across, back stitch there. Take it off the machine and then there we have it. And then you can just trim it down to one centimetre uh, beyond the seam line and then just snip your corners here just to reduce the bulk. Just get rid of that pin there. And I'll just turn it into inside out and you can see, where's that pin gone? It's hidden. There it is. Yeah. Remove <laughs> pins before giving <laughs> us a gift. And then uh, we can just trim down these seam allowances here just to reduce the bulk. And then turn it inside out like so. Get yourself a little poking tool or something like that. And there you have your lovely bottom corner. And then we just give that a little press. And Bob's your uncle. Really nice, neat finish Really to that nice binding. and neat at the bottom. And the you band. can see that it's the band is sort of parallel. The line is parallel to the bottom edge. And then just quickly, a quick word about it is that you fold it over the that, that um, edge all the way along. You just match it up to the side there, hand tack it on and stitch it if you want to, or uh, what I like to do is hand stitch it. Hand stitch round the band all the way around, or if you want to just top stitch it, you know, but you know, you can miss it sometimes. Yeah, so if you hand stitch it, it's a perfect thing to just sit in front of the TV. Little slip and stitch and while you're watching. Relaxing slip yeah, stitching, yeah. Watching just, it's a nice, a bit of a nicer finish, isn't yeah. it? As you say, otherwise it's it a lovely, could, you could miss it a bit. That's right. Or what you can do, and I like to do it just quickly, is um, pop some wonder, uh, bond, wonder web. And so you're bonding it first, and then that holds it in place for when you stitch it. Yes. And then it just you just need that extra stability to keep it intact whilst you're stitching, and then you can't go wrong. So then you will have finished your kimono. And there you have it. You see. Now so. we haven't got long left, Ooh. so we want to quickly have a look at the Hilda again. Oh, so that's the Hilda that tunic. Right. We, we're going to look at the larger size because this is the one that Fiona has very kindly uh, produced because of the demand. So this is the dress and this is the one, well I'm saying dress, um, but it's a tunic. But you, I mean you could wear it uh, with leggings, um, yes. with thick coloured tights or, tight or it, whatever. If you want to you? make it a bit longer. Make it a bit longer. Can, uh, this is the one that you're wearing, isn't it? This is the one that I'm wearing. And uh, I've got the pleats on this one. Um, but what I'm going to show you is, if I can find the piece, here it is, is um, instead of doing a pleat, I'm going to... Now, a lot of people do say to me, do I have to have that pleat in the front? And actually, I say, do you know what? You, if, if, if you don't want to have the pleat here, you can, you can line that, fold the pleat over the, the pleat line, and then you can just match that up to the front front, front centre fold. Yeah. And then you, it's much a little bit more fitting. Yeah. So you, know, you haven't got everyone that wants it sort of loose like that. Uh, so that's this something is, this you is can again, do. This, this is what you can do when you're making your own clothes. That's right. You make these decisions. Have fun with it. <laughs> oh, it's all falling down. <laughs> Let's throw them on the floor. <laughs> Here's one that I did. This is one I wear all the time. Um, but you can see what I've done. I've stitched it down at the front. If I turn it around, you might see it a little bit better with the camera. Ah, oh, so you stitched the pleat down for the first I what, stitched sort of three it or four centimetres? <coughs> a little bit more than that. Excuse me, I've got a bit of a cough. About eight cent ten centimetres from the top edge. I just literally stitch it down. And then the, the pleat is not from the top neck, but it's actually coming down a little bit further. So that's something that's quite nice to do. Um, now, this one, what I thought of doing, instead of pleating it, I'm going to just gather it because we've got a lot of gathers around at the moment, haven't we, in the shops? And yes. So I thought, well, you know, let's, I think that would do just as nice. So this is the teal that I've got, uh, that you've got yes, your Yes, this is, this is the same as the fabric that we have here, isn't it? So you're yes. using a lighter shade by the looks of it. Oh, yeah, it is So we've got this yours, sort of teal it? fabric. Let me bring it into the shot here. So this, these notches. So this is two and a half meters. I'm just sorry. Let me just double check. Is that enough for the la extra large size? Uh, you probably know this. So this uh, says if it's yeah. uh, 140 40. wide, 2.4. Yes, 2.3. So yeah. Yes. So you're yeah, fine. This is enough. Yes. Yes, that's enough. Sorry, you were saying about it, matching it your notches. It gives you 
it might it might give you enough as well because what I did is I cut some of my um, frills from the side side panels as well. So you might be able to get your hack out of this as well. Oh, good. Now what I'm going to do, so I've got I've got my notches at the top neck there. There's one, two, either side of the centre fold, which is here. Uh, and they're all marked on the pattern where they are. So you just nick your pattern, uh, nick your fabric when you're cutting out. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a line of gathering that's a little bit more longer. So it's a little bit longer than my, a uh, bit wider than my pleat. Now I'm going to lengthen my stitch up to the maximum stitch length. And... Um, I'm going to do it about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. What is your seam allowance? Uh, a centimetre. Right, so it's this. just so it's sort of six millimetre yes. as opposed so to So you want it to be within the seam allowance. So I've literally, you've got some markers on your feet here, which are quite good for lining up to the edge. Yeah. And that kind of, now leave a long end like so. And then so you've got your threads here at the side. Now you might find you, you might need to extend it a little bit further, but I mean, I think that's probably fine because what you want to do is to lose that fabric that you would normally do with the pleats. Yeah. You want to lose it with gathering instead. And so we're just literally pulling our threads like that. And in fact, you f I find if you pull the bobbin thread, it's easier oh, to really? gather. Yeah. Don't I've know why. Not, I've found them. Yeah, just turn it over and you can pull the bobbin thread oh, and it's okay. easier to gather. So you're gathering it up like so and you can see that that looks lovely, doesn't it? And, and then what you want to do is when you actually fit your facing on, your neck facing, here's your neck facing that I've joined together, the front and back facing. It's been interfaced. It's the, uh, the outer edge has been finished. And when we put the facing on, so if you leave it like it is, and then when you put the facing on, you can just literally ease it out mm. accordingly. To so make if you, it match. If you do it quite tight, and then when you put your facing on, you can sort of spread it out a little bit. And then just make sure that your gathers are sort of spread evenly. And then when you put your facing on, you just stitch it on, turn it to the other side, just like you would with your pleat. And then that gives you your lovely gathered neckline here instead. I think it just makes it a little, little bit different. A little bit different, yeah. So the other thing is uh, our sleeve. Here you've got like a lovely flouncy sleeve. Now, if you wanted to, you could have it much smaller. You could just have a small frill, couldn't you? So this again is a hack. So this, this is, is the this hack. This is not what you've That's got in right. the pattern. So the normal sleeve length looks like this. Um, that's just an ordinary simple turned up sleeve. It's a very, it's a grown on sleeve, this one. And then the sleeve has been attached to the, gro the grown on bit. So, you know, it's just Stop an extension of it. Um, you can also make Hilda without the sleeves. So, you know, so that it's, so it's just got like, like a top. drop shoulder then. Yeah, yeah. so that looks really so nice. Again, and that'd be nice for the summer. Not forgetting but the lovely side pockets, by yes, the way. Yes, um, I noticed. I noticed earlier that the I just love a pocket. We love the I side love pockets a pocket. with a good swaggering that we get on there. So, <laughs> so you added a frill to the bottom of the sleeve hem, and probably you've got enough fabric. Possibly not with the very big big sizes, possibly but not you with will the do with the sizes. other sizes. Yes. Um, so you can have a look when you see. You could, of course, you could add the frill in a different fabric. It doesn't yeah, have to that be, would be in nice. the same fabric. Yes. You could actually add it in something different. That's right. I'm just, I've done this seam, <laughs> but I don't actually need it. Right. So that was quick unpick. In quick use. unpick. Do you remember with your quick unpick, you get a quick unpick in your sewing machine, but they do blunt in the same way as needles and pins blunt. So if you're you finding it difficult them? to... I've never tried to sharpen one. I must admit, I've just replaced. Yeah, um, it's a shame though, isn't it? It is a shame. I'm not sure how you would... Because the bit that you need is the sort of little curve right on the inside, isn't it? And I'm not sure mm. how easy that would be to sharpen. But yeah, they do blunt. So if you're having problems... And you can get pick, quick unpicks that have got thicker, um, pointy, sharp bits. And finer ones, that's a technical term. Uh, so I like the finer ones because you mm. can really get them under the little stitches. Yes. I don't think I could live without a sticker oh, no. stitch on pick, could Stick, you? No, absolutely. I use it for all sorts of things that are not, it's not normally designed Do you for know, either. They, I mean, you might know because you, you used to be knitting, didn't you? Yes. But they use a term called frogging. Frogging. Which is ripping out the stitches. I like that. So it's ribbit, mm. ribbit, ribbit. 
I think we should put that into dressmaking. Yeah. So I'm. I do use I'm a lot flogging. of my old knitting <laughs> tools, actually. For, do you? Yes. I've got this hook that I use for sort of gra grabbing things and pulling them through. <laughs> anyway, we're, we're, we're sort of getting it. distracted here, aren't we? <laughs> we're on a sewing show now. <laughs> chitty, chitty, bang, bang. We grab the children with a hook. <laughs> now, um, here's my frill piece. Now, I've very simple. Oh, I forgot to mention in the uh, pattern, here's the pattern instructions. Um, you have got an extra sheet. Here we go, Hilda Tunic Hacks. And it just tells you everything about how to do the frill um, and how to gather the, the front neckline. There's a little bit of a uh, thing about that. And also for your size, it just tells you what, to, what measurement to cut out so that you've got um, you know, a frill that's just the right gather. This is a new addition. So if somebody's so already is, bought it, yes, they haven't got that. Right. But if you buy it now, no, you're going to get yes, it. Yes, but if you haven't got one, if you've got the pattern already, you can find all these details on the blog. Brilliant. So, you know, it's not, uh, you know, exclusive. It's, but I just thought, well, some people don't go on the internet, do they? So I just thought, well, you know, if I'll just pop a little sheet in there. And it's just, I quite like to do this with all my patterns, actually. Just put a little I think extra, it's a brilliant idea. Extra because pattern hack in the pattern. You know, yeah. I just think that'd be really nice. But anyway, for those who haven't got it, it's 15 centimetres deep by whatever the measurement is that you need. And I have turned under uh, the and pressed the the edge for the fold for the hem at the bottom edge. So this is the bottom edge of the frill here. And then this is the raw edge that's going to go to the, onto the sleeve. Now I've pressed this first because it's much easier to do it when it's flat than when it's actually on the sleeve. So, but I've not sewn it yet. I've just left it pressed. So little tip there. That's interesting. And yes. you've done a double turn, haven't you? I've done a double, yes, a one centimetre and then I've... A, and then but a you could do as if you've got an overlock, as often I've just... Just turn it up the once. Yeah, you so see, I've done it with that one, just a minimum once. hem, you know. Now, um, I've got my five stitch length again, so I'm going to need that again for this. And I'm literally doing this um, half a centimetre or quarter of an inch away from the edge of my... So that's on the other edge, so the other long edge. So this edge. is on the raw edge, the one that hasn't been folded over for the hem. And I'm taking that off. And then again, just like we did with the neck, I'm just going to take the bobbin thread. <laughs> I don't know why, but it just makes it easier. Does it? If you're doing a very long piece of gathering, um, then I would probably do two rows of gathering stitch. Nothing worse than pulling it up and then the thread breaking halfway through well the, i think the best thing is to to gather from one side and then, and then gather, gather from, from the other and to Absolutely. the center and then gather from the other side because like you say yes you can sometimes uh the other thing i do sometimes is i loosen my 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 tension so my tension loosen it up to the maximum and so that loosen is lower loosen loosen is, is lower lower higher. number higher higher, num higher number on the yeah, tension. so it's nine is loose isn't it no, and I thought it was the other way around. Oh, is it? Oh, well, whatever you Anyway, yours, whatever. Or, whatever you, your you machine can do does, And the other yeah. thing you can do, if you've got a very long piece, I mean seriously long, um, you can actually zigzag stitch over a string. Yeah. And then you pull up the string and then you stitch over the gathering. That's, I mean, I'm not talking about when you're dressmaking something like this, but I'm just thinking about when you're doing really, really long, long bits of gathering. If you were making sort of like period costumes or fancy dress or something like that, it's just a very quick way of gathering long, long pieces of fabric. Some machines, uh, they've got a, like a special gathering foot, haven't yes. they? Yeah, you or, can use or a gathering Or an overlocker foot. will do gathering as well. If you can, you know, be bothered to set it up properly. I think it's just as quick, just to lengthen your stitch though, don't you? Uh, very short on time right now, so, so very quickly what I'm going to do is pin it to the shorter end uh, edge of the sleeve so it's the the one that's not this one that's slightly curved obviously that's going on to the body and then the other one the raw edge is just going to pin it onto the sleeve so start from um, our ex the furthest points the furthest ends and get that done and then pop pop it in the middle make sure that your gathers are nice and even and then we're going to pin it at the center and then 
So basically you're putting the sort of frill onto the sleeve before attaching the sleeve to yes, the garment. Yes, much easier Makes to do it. Makes it much easier to yes, do. Yes, because yeah. you've got less bulk on the to work with, haven't you? So um, it's, it's much easier to do it when it's before it's been attached. And remember that the fabric that Fiona is using is this sort of linen-like fabric. Now we've got, she's got a lighter colour here. I've got um, quite a nice teal colour. And you get enough in this bundle to do even the larger sizes. So it's really good. And uh, for the smaller sizes, you can do the hacks with this same bit of bundle. Uh, for the much larger sizes, you might need to get a little bit more. Now I'm just going to sew along, so I'm just doing my one centimetre seam allowance again. And I'm sewing, you know, you don't, you don't want to see any of those, you can leave those gather stitches in the machine. Um, just make sure that your pleats aren't, um, your gathers aren't sort of going at an angle. Sometimes that's, you know, what you were saying, Wendy, before about doing two lines of stitching is quite a good idea. Yeah. But just for speed, I'm doing one here. And if you've got lighter fabric, I think one line is fine. Um, and I'm just literally stopping, making sure my gathers are nice and I, I notice straight. you've got the gathered fabric uppermost as well, so you can see how yes, it's going Yes, that's right. Through. I've got the yeah. raw edge on the inside. Yeah. You know, you don't want to be sort of trying to push all your yes. fabric through here. You've got much more space, haven't you, on the outside of the machine. And again, you know, drop your needle down when you stop because, you know, you can sort of shift it about and lose your place otherwise. And then just keep... Now, we were saying as well about this fabric, it's quite thick for doing gathering as well. You know, obviously with finer fabrics like cotton lawn or viscoses, you know, you might get a, like a little bit more, um, you know, it's, it's not quite as... A weighty as this fabric but you know it's still gathering really well actually it's just you're getting a quite a different sort of effect aren't yes. you but look it's what it, it still works beautifully i just think a frill just changes everything i do i love it, it. and it as you say really you know, if you look into something. shops at the moment if you get chance or if you're doing it online um you'll see a lot of garments with a lot of sleeve detail now i'm so just going I to press that like so and just very quickly um, you, you will press it so that it's nice and flat there and give it a good whack on the steam and then we're top stitching the so you, the seam allowance is up towards the sleeve and then we top stitch it along there so that it so that it keeps the seam allowance in place and if if you as, as we said earlier top stitching is basically a stitching that shows on the top you can increase your stitch length to say maybe three and if you're a little bit unsure about it use a thread color that matches and if you want to make it design detail use a contrast thread color so that's what it looks like you that's see too actually you know this way we were saying it was a bit weighty but i actually really like it it, it does look really nice and i think it, and i think it will suit the sort of body of the garment yes um so let's have a quick look before we finish at the patterns um so before we have a quick look at the pattern, I just want to say thank you, Fiona, for those. Yeah, and it's lovely you. to see those I'll hacks. Back and again. Expand your pattern. And of course, she's back again at I'm back again with a lot more sort of yes. bags and things. So yeah, so see let's you have a, a very quick look at these patterns one more time. Don't forget they are on the website for the rest of the day, not a problem at all. In fact, probably stay on the website. We have the kimono is the most popular. Let me bring that one back in. So this is sizes small to extra, extra large, which um, if you wanted to know what that means in sizes, that's eight to 26. So that's a really good size range. This is the one we looked at earlier. Such a versatile garment, such a classic. So that's a very good one. Don't miss out on that. Suitable for beginners as well. Uh, then I'm going to look at the Hilda tunic, which is the one that Fiona's been working on. So we've got eight to 18. So it's another really good size range. And then by popular demand, sizes 20 to 28. This is the big, for again, suitable for beginners. This is the one that Fiona is actually wearing. Really versatile. Um, we are selling out of this one. If you're interested, do grab it whilst you can. And then I want to have a quick look at Edith. So this is Edith. And she is, uh, she's, where, she's a size 8 to 20. Again, it's a, a beginner's design. It's sort of a tunic, tunic dress. It's on the stand, 
stand. It's, oh, it's on the stand yeah. next, to, to it's next to Fiona. Now, she's made it in like a denim -y fabric. This is like a linen, um, or you can make it in a denim. Yeah, so, I mean, look at the top stitching detail, which really uh, It's got these out. lovely pockets where you just literally um, insert them into the seam. They're, they're really easy to do, but, yeah, they're but really they look nice. really good. Yeah, that looks really designer. Great, I love that. And yeah, if you like top stitching like me, you'll be you're well away with that pattern <laughs> so that's a really good so again this is uh, it's an e it's a beginner's one so it looks stunning it looks amazing but actually if you're a beginner you can still do it full instructions inside eight to twenty you can and do then, it as a short um, version as well actually oh yes Sorry to which interrupt. again so you can just make it as like a shorter little top. version i've just left the sleeves off that's all i've done i just popped a little hem on them and um yeah so, so that yeah. looks and really, made it really into good. a top. So I think I've sort of shortened it as well. And did you use a twin needle for that hemming round the uh, Do you know, I didn't in with this one, but we're going to, to talk <laughs> about that in the next show, aren't we? Sorry. I thought I'd bring that in. You were going to say that, Wendy, weren't you? I'm See, we think alike on a lot here. of these yeah. things <laughs> <laughs> because, because we're so both passionate about dressmaking. Yes. Um, but before we go, let's have a look at the last one. It's not Peggy Sue, should be, I think. <laughs> it's Peggy, Peggy Top. <laughs> Peggy Top, again, it's 8 to 20, and this is for adventurous beginners, and you have four sleeve options to choose from. So, again, make it in different fabrics, and it looks different. There it is there, look. Oh. So this one is it's great in all sorts of fabrics. So but something nice and soft would be lovely. Yeah, so, something you know, yeah, like, that's, a like that jersey this, that I was looking at earlier. That did you? I don't know if you saw them, but I was looking at some yes. really beautiful jerseys earlier oh, on. Right. That would be lovely. Yes, that would um, be nice. Yeah. That is more for adventurous beginners because jersey does sort of stretch and pull. Yes. But as this I said, got use a ballpoint needle. As well. So. I think it's got darts, but it's not actually very fitted. It's very boxy, so it just literally sort it of... It just gets a little bit of shape. I was going to say, it's going to hang off you, but I mean, just, that doesn't sound great. But you know what I mean? It's yes. just sort of something you can it's wear with comfy, trousers, yeah. you know, so it's quite casual. But it's got this lovely loop and button at the back. You can make, you can make it as smart back. as you like by the fabric choice. That's right, yes. Yeah. So something a bit fluid and yeah. soft, you know. I think the fabrics we've got are lovely for that. Even the viscoses over there would be gorgeous, yes. especially that, that mosaic one. Is it mosaic? Um, so thank you, Fiona. Oh, thank you. And I don't forget there are more forever. patterns. I know, um, if you left us to ourselves, <laughs> we would just keep going. Um, there are more off. patterns from So Girl on the website. So do have a look at those. At 11 o'clock, we come back with more patterns with Fiona and a few more ideas on sewing, patch pocket twin needles. So stay tuned and see me later. Christmas is going to be a little bit different this year, but Sewing Street will be here to keep you company from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Christmas Day. Help me, John Scott, spread some festive cheer by sending in your Christmas messages for us to play on air on Christmas Day. Whether it's a message to your fellow Sewing Street fans or to a loved one, a video message or text, we want to hear from you. Send your videos, photos and messages to studio at sewingstreet.com by Tuesday the 22nd of December to be included and be a part of Sewing Street's Christmas Day celebrations. Have you heard about Yarn Lane? A TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn. Bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the program guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Join me, Vicky Carroll, live from 8am on Friday the 18th of December for a very special show. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page.
Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. Christmas is going to be a little bit different this year, but Sewing Street will be here to keep you company from 8am to 12pm on Christmas Day. Help me, John Scott, spread some festive cheer by sending in your Christmas messages for us to play on air on Christmas Day. Whether it's a message to your fellow Sewing Street fans or to a loved one, a video message or text, we want to hear from you. Send your videos, photos and messages to studio at sewingstreet.com by Tuesday the 22nd of December to be included and be a part of Sewing Street's Christmas Day celebrations. Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn? Bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Join me, Vicky Carroll, live from 8am on Friday the 18th of December for a very special show. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. Hi, welcome back. I'm here with loveliness. So, <laughs> I'm here with Kerry. I'm sure you all know her very, very well. So it's my pleasure to be with Kerry yet again because my first week last week, she was one of my two guests and it was so, so much fun because we're talking about fabric and sewing. What's the more to love? Um, so let's start because I've got a bit busy hour with lots to get through. What I want to start with is something that I absolutely adore. I'm going to bring them into sight here. Am I in? Oh, hold on. Let me put them on. Oh, that's a bit better. Look, look at these. These are pattern weights. And they're really, really gorgeous. So you get them in this lovely presentation box. There are six in the box. And I love this on the back. 
living in loveliness so they are branded so you know if you are a fan as i am of kerry and her patterns and her issues you can have these now these are really good to use instead of pins basically when you're cutting out you just put them on the fabric um, and lay them in, lay them down and then you can cut um, i pers i mean I, I use these and i like to have quite a lot so i would buy more than one pack one pack is 13.99 uh, so that's one pack so i would get at least two personally i'm not sort of trying to spend your money for you but i i like these it's so much quicker than using pins and you can sort of pop them down you can use them as well as i mean if you've got tricky areas that maybe you want to pin around but these are for the long seams not only does it save you making holes in the fabric if you're using very delicate fabric it's quicker to do it's quicker to remove so brilliant i think they're lovely and i like the way they're in a presentation box because they make a great gift um, but look at these, I don't know if you can see, can you see these different designs on here? So they're all sewing machines, but they're all slightly different. So it's got a real vintage feel to them. They're beautifully printed, really lovely. And on the back, as I say, we have the Living in Loveliness logo there. So that's really, really beautiful. So definitely, I'm going to leave that out. So this is a brand new design. Have you had other designs of this we've, then? We've had two other designs previously um, with ladybirds and some quotes. And today. Oh, right. I thought these are particularly lovely. Ah, with the so old. if you've already got them, you'll know how good they are. Um, so you need to add these to your collection. But I love these with the sewing machines on them. I think they're really lovely. Very different. I've left that one slightly propped out, but they fit back into the box as well. But um, I've left it out so I can get it out easy. Now, there's a reason. There is a reason, and I had said to Hannah earlier, I might have to say, stop the show, because my nail <laughs> is broken. It's the shellac, and, it, and I've stuck it down with Brit stick. <laughs> and so I have to be very careful of that one finger. So the others are fine, it's just that one. That's why I'm leaving that out a bit, so I don't inadvertently pull my nail varnish off. It's only the nail varnish. Um, it's not my whole nail, but it's, you know, it could, it could be a disaster. So. <laughs> so we're going to do lots of different bundles here and everything everything from Kerry like all the other shows we've done everything is on pre-order which means that even if I haven't got to it yet you can order it um, because sometimes we do sell out quite quickly so let's look at the first one so the first one we're going to look at I'll look at the finished items and then I will open up the bundles so each so I, I'm getting my head around this whole thing. So what, what Kerry does is every month she produces an issue, just like a magazine comes out monthly. She produces an issue and in each issue she will have three projects to make from the bundle that you get. And the bundle you get includes two fabrics for these this, these For this ones. particular bundle, this two fabrics. This is the fabulous... Fabulously fast fat quarter fun. And the, actually, there's four fabrics in the fast fat oh, quarter Oh, so in those fun. ones, there's four fabrics <laughs> in the oh, F, 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 F uh, collection. So on this one here, we've got what, I mean, this is, this, I mean, I, I don't know, you could call it um, a make, this is issue, so I, okay, let me just make sure I say this. So this is issue two, the F, 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 Q, F, <laughs> issue two. And what you get here is this really lovely tool holder. It can be makeup brushes, it could be sewing tools, it could be um, pens, you know, anything you like. You decide what you put in it. So that's really, really nifty. We showed this last week, didn't we? Did. We did, we had this one um, last week. And you roll it up and then you can just tie it together. Really good. Also, we looked at last week, this was a really quick make. So this is the this Lotus, is the Lotus bag. bag, yeah. So this opens up. Now again, you could use this for makeup. So you could put your makeup in there and then you can just pull on the string. So it's really good. So you want to put your makeup on, open it up. It's all there to be seen. Or you can use it for your sewing bits and pieces. Or oh, I think you said you, your son has this for some toys. Yes. So and, you can and, use that um, for toys. On the page, people were making it to put chocolate oranges in there. Oh, or chocolate, chocolate oranges. oranges. Yeah, that's what a really nice good surprise. Idea. That would Isn't be. it beautiful? It's really quick to make. Kerry demonstrated this on the show last week. Really, really quick. And the, amount, the fabric you get in these particular packs is enough to make all three of these items and the final one of the three is this and again I don't want to call it a cosmetic bag because it could be anything so this is like a little uh, little bag little case with a centered zip so you're learning the technique of putting a zip in it's patchwork and you've actually done some decorative yes. stitching on the top as well 
So let's look at the colourways. So number one, I'm getting number one out, which is 107. Let's have a look. Ooh, this is exciting. Um, I need to bring it over, don't I? So here we are, look. I've opened it sort of upside down. These are Michael Miller fabrics. All three of those items I've just shown you, you can make using these four fabrics. Look at these. Now, this uh, is this going to be my favourite? Do you know, when I was cutting these and packing these, I couldn't stop thinking about that lovely dress you were wearing, and I did think this might be your favourite collection It today. is absolutely beautiful. I really love these fabrics. Now, I also, I mean, I get really... Um, uh, interested in how people present patterns, um, having written patterns for many, many years. So it's something that I like to see and I just love this. Look at this, step-by-step -step instructions with photographs to take you through the construction of each of the items. So you really can't get it wrong. It's absolutely beautiful and you also get a full-size pattern template printed on good quality paper so that you can use the template again and again and again it's not going to disintegrate with repeated use so this is the first collection look at these and you these are fat quarters aren't these they, are fat Kerry? quarters yeah so fat quarter these are approximately 18 by 20 in the oh, kit this 18 yes 18 by so 20. yeah i mean the reason is fat quarters can be different sizes depending on how wide the fabric they're cut from are because basically if you imagine a meter and then you, you divide it into four, like a window pane, sort of vertically and horizontal, they're fat quarters as opposed to a strip yeah. quarter. So the width of the quarter will depend on the total width of the fabric. So these are about 18 by Approximately 20. Approximately 18 by 20. Beautiful fabric, I love this. It's a really soft they're filter, lovely, aren't isn't they? it gorgeous? Absolutely beautiful. And this is the first time we've had Michael Miller in our kits as well. So this is Michael Miller fabric, so it's gorgeous. I know you're a fabric buff and you love it. So you've got this lovely sort of peachy colour, and then with the same pattern, this rose red, isn't that gorgeous? And then as a, a pop and a wow, you've got this lovely yellow. So that's really gorgeous. But I want to show you the next one too, because we've got another colourway. And don't forget, you can make all three projects from this one pack of four fat quarters. So this is our next one. Oh, look at this. So this is Liberty. What's not to love here? So again, pattern, template, welcome letter with lots of details on there. And look at these. So again, I'm going, I'm going to just lay them out so you can see. And I think what, what I like about these, Kerry, is the fact that you've carefully chosen colours yes. that really go well yes. together. So that takes, that takes the worry and the thinking, because yeah. you can spend hours, if you've got fat quarters at home, you can spend hours looking at all your different fat, which one goes, which one goes. This takes that out of the equation. You know these go together. Let me open this one. It's beautiful, isn't it? This isn't one? it? Lovely. So there it is. It's a beautiful fabric from Liberty. And you know that, because it's got Liberty written down the sides. <laughs> it's beautiful it's a lovely it's not the tana lawn it's a nice weight cotton nice, isn't yeah, it nice it's really cotton, lovely yeah. it's lovely and soft i'm really enjoying that i'm feeling all these beautiful fabrics today so that is number two that's the second selection for this particular project um, which includes the three makes it's the lotus i was, always want to call it an oyster bag i don't know why it's the lotus bag the roll, which could be for pens, pencils, makeup brushes, your marking pens, your sewing tools, um, small scissors and things, and this really nifty little zipped bag. Notice I'm keeping my finger out of the way. You, you could pop your nail polishes in there. You could pop your <laughs> you could. I could have bought my nail polishes, my nail files and things like that in there. Um, but I didn't. So there's a really lovely zip bag. So having looked at these, let's see a quick demo what are you going to demo today so today we're going to make um the lotus bag uh, not the lotus bag the pencil roll the pencil oh brilliant because we made the lo so the, the lotus bag we did last we did the week. lotus bag last week so um because we've got the projects back for you with different fabric options this week i thought it would be quite nice to make the pencil roll and it is just so useful for you could even use these for your crochet hooks 
or of course your sewing equipment. So it's, again, this is a nice fast project as we work through the fast fat quarter fund. Those, as you said, um, Wendy, those techniques increase, but these are nice, easy projects, nice fast projects as well. So and for you, just just to reiterate, what you get in this bundle is the fabrics, the patterns, which includes the yes. templates. But you might need to use other materials yeah. like interfacing. Yeah. So on the back of each of the patterns, there'll be a list of additional items that you need and things that you'll need for this particular issue is some ribbon, but we tend to find that we have ribbon in our collections. You'll need some batting as well or something that gives a nice plush feeling. You could use interfacing for this project if you wanted to, but I really like working with batting. I do recommend working with 505 um, spray just because it secures the fabric into place, but again, that's an optional item, but all of the items are listed on there as well. And of course, one of the projects in this collection is a project with a zip, so you're going to need a zip as well for this project. So that's all listed. I'm looking at the back of the pattern here, and it's all listed what you need. Yes. So that's brilliant. And the patterns have all been designed to make sure that really that you're getting the most from your four fat quarters. And if you look at the little zipper purse, that's why there's a lot of patchwork on that little makeup bag there, because we're literally using the remnants that are left over. So I always think when we're cutting into our fabrics, we tend to have a little bit left yeah. over. So making sure we're getting the most out of those fabrics. One of the things I like doing with my remnants, I'm, I'm really into crazy patchwork. Yes. Because it's really easy, really easy. In fact, I taught a Zoom class yesterday really? um, on doing crazy. And what I loved is the fact that everybody that did it, their result was so different. Yeah. But it is a great way. So this is a really good way of using up those little little bits of really the, beautiful the fabrics fabric. as well. Change the look of the project, Absolutely. even even though they're the same. They and change. And if you're the using look. something like a Liberty fabric, you want to use every you bit. You want to, absolutely, don't you? Absolutely. So for this project, what we're going to need is your two fabrics, and I have chosen that beautiful. Um, strawberry print there and the, that beautiful mustard. I'm loving mustard at the moment, but this is really going to make the inside pop. Just to take into consideration when you're making this, that the exterior fabric where we fold the flaps in a little while, um, choose from your fabrics one that doesn't have a pattern direction because your flowers otherwise may end up upside down. That's why I've chosen this for this particular outer project. So nice and easy and using the 505 is optional, but just pop a little bit onto your batting to secure that fabric on there while we're sewing that together. And then just aligning the raw edges of your first panel. So this is your exterior panel. Just um, if you find, because when you use 505, I, I agree, it's, it's wonderful. But sometimes you can get a little sticky residue on your needle. Yes. It, you can use like wet ones to wipe it off. Your wet wipes. Yeah, little wet wipes. Yeah. Um, that helps wipe it off. And the other thing you can use to get any residue of things like that, it's particularly off the spindle, you know, when you get the yeah. glue. Uh, if you use a little bit of hand sanitizer. Oh, it's coming in handy for everything. It comes in handy for everything, it does. <laughs> yeah. Multi-purpose. Absolutely. I do like the little hints and tips that you give. I did go home and check out a few, lots of hints and tips you gave me last week. So nice and easy. What we're going to do on here, we don't want any raw edges on this particular project. Just make sure all your raw edges are marrying up. It's only slightly overhanging, so I'm not going to worry about trimming that. And we're simply going to sew a straight line across the top and the, uh, let's, let me just make sure the pattern's right. Yeah, across the top and the bottom. Because I've got a pattern direction here, it's important that this is the right way. So just double check as you're popping it down. So we've got the exterior fabric facing up towards us. The lining fabric, we're going to pa pop pattern facing down. If there is that direction, just double check that that direction is the right way. This is only going to be on the inside, but you will see a section on the inside of the panel. I've got it open. I've got it here in front of me just to show that. Because this again you've used a directional one on the inside. There we go. There's lovely, there's lovely flowers here. And I'm simply going to sew along those raw edges that I've just clipped into place, just using a quarter inch seam allowance. Remembering to reverse stitch at the start and stop point. So uh, Kerry's using the clips rather than pins which uh, we were just talking about last time yeah. because it's not something that I've got actually but I do really need to get and they are so useful and so easy to use and particularly when you're pinning through layers. Absolutely I and I've been doing a lot of sewing with vinyl recently so I'm, I've got myself into a bit of a habit of using the clips rather than the pins because of course we don't want to pin and I think as we go through our sewing journey, we do find things that make life easier and I Definitely. certainly, file, certainly find that these do. And I think um, 
you know, one other thing, if you use the clips rather than pins and you drop one on the floor, they're a lot easier to find. <laughs> <laughs> Having been known to find pins on the floor days after I've done some sewing. It's just part of life, no, pins on, <laughs> pins on the floor. It's not so good when you've got little ones around calling, though. <laughs> no, absolutely <laughs> not. Avoid you it. definitely need your magnetic dish at that point. You do. <laughs> <laughs> so I've just sewn across those two raw edges. Take a moment to remove those um, excess threads there. And what we're going to do is to just pull this through. So you've just sewn top and bottom? Just top and bottom at the moment. So we're going to make this really fast, really easy and without any raw edges in there. I love this ironing mat that keeps being I used as well. I absolutely love these mats, so useful. It's the June, is it June Taylor? Yeah, June Taylor cut and press, which is a, a make I know quite well. But isn't it, fa I mean, I think it's really fabulous. It really is. So you turn is. it over to cut, and, but it's a lovely size to have right next to the sewing machine. And the carry it? handle as well makes yeah. it really nice no, and really easy like to use as well. So all I'm doing is just bringing those fabrics and I'm just going to press these. So you're just pressing, so you're pressing so that the seam is right on the edge. That's it, on both sides there. Just saves us doing that in a moment. It's always good to press a seam before you sew over it again. Unless you're quilting and then you get your wrist slapped, as I did. Because I was doing some quilting and I carefully pressed each seam before I sewed over it. And then the tutor came to me and she's... I did know her very well, by the way. She wasn't just slap happy. She just... <laughs> she, she looked at me, she said... She slapped my wrist and she said, did I tell you to press those seams in between? I said, no, but you always press a seam before you sew over it again. She said, no, you don't. Not when I'm doing this patchwork because you can stretch the seam while you're doing it. Okay. So well, I, I learned. But do you still, I still press my seams. I, 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 I just, but I think I'm with patchwork. I suppose you're too I scared to, do. <laughs> There's somebody lurking behind me. No, she was a friend. Please don't think this. I'm not going to say that. She's watching anyway. now. You're going to be a lot of trouble now. <laughs> so what I'm going to do just along the top folded section here. So this is the bit that we'll see on the inside of the bag. I'm just going to top stitch across there just to get a nice finish on there. And again, this is an opportunity to use those nice stitches. I have actually only got white on the machine. I could have put a, a nicer colour on there. It'll pop. It'll make it pop. So I'm going to change to a zigzag. You're just doing a regular zigzag or a triple zigzag? Uh, this is a triple zigzag. I really like the triple zigzag. I know. Zigzag. So the triple zigzag, um, it's the stitch that looks like a zigzag with broken lines. So actually it's a really good stretch stitch, but it's also a really good stitch if you're um, couching down ribbons and trims. If you use that stitch, it will catch the trim in the middle at the same time. If you just use a zigzag, you could actually pull the trim out. So it's a really good, a really handy stitch. And Definitely. It's a basic stitch on nearly every machine I've ever seen. And so the other thing I've found as well with these particular stitches, I do a lot of classes, so I generally end up threading lots of machines. Yes. And it's always number seven. <laughs> On the machine, it's number seven on my machine oh, that really? I have. Uh, yeah, and we'll have have I mean that might not home. be the case on all machines, but definitely check it. Yeah. So it's the one that looks like a zigzag, but it's broken. With broken lines. Of course, if you've got a nice embroidery, all singing, all dads, and it might might be a, a little further in your numbers there because you've yeah. got all those lovely stitches. Yeah, it's usually one of the sort of utility stitches, isn't it? Yeah. If you're just using a regular needle here. Just a regular needle yeah, on so here. Like size 80. Uh, and you could, because we're using batting in there, I tend not to on smaller projects like this, but you could if you wanted to walk, use your walking stitch yeah. over walking, that. Walking Some foot. Walking foot. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Making things up today. <laughs> so going to fold this over now. So the bottom section, make sure you've got those flowers the right way. We're simply going to fold that. And the great thing about this mat again is that we've got those um, measurements on there. So I'm folding this up four inches making sure there's no tuck in there because we're not having a seam in the bottom. As I said, this is a nice fast project. Just going to run that iron over there again. And now we're going to pop the ribbon in. So the ribbon, we can just literally line that up at the top of the fold. I haven't actually measured this ribbon, but there is measurements in the book if you want to know the sizes of the ribbon. And I'm going to pin the ribbon just to that lining section and just for this stage just sew that into place so I'm just reinforcing it, that. Yes. You tend to find when you're wrapping things round. You can pull on those ribbons. Yeah. 
Uh, don't forget, if you are interested in any of the patterns that we've got with Kerry, they are on the website. You can pre-order. Um, you can get in there quick, particularly those that have got limited stock. It's a good idea. Um, and also don't forget that it's one P&P all day. So even if you go in and you check out and pay, when you go back in later on today to get something out, it's another must-have you've got to have. You won't pay P&P again. Clever these systems, isn't it? How it works. Very yourself. clever, very clever. I'm not particularly technical myself. <laughs> so uh, there will be a turning gap in just a moment. So I'm going to actually put that turning gap just along this top section here, and I'm just going to mark it. You can use your double pin, or because we're going to reverse this, I'm just going to use the clips and that little marking tool for myself. As we pull this through now, what's really important is that those top layers here are pinned together. So the bottom part that you've just folded is pinned to the lining on both sides. And again, this is what's nice working with the clips. As we reverse this just now, we're not going to catch our hands on any of those pins. Yeah, that's a really good tip. So popping this onto the back, making sure your ribbon's tucked neatly inside, but so it's not coming into contact with your opposite side. Fold this again flat where you can see those seams. I would just pop a little clip on there to secure that into place. You can see what a quick and easy make this is. Oh, they are and this is, this is from issue two, isn't it? This is issue two. So, and, and as you go through the issues, um, it, they get more complex. So you're kind of like building on your skills, yes. which is really nice. But you can still buy the first one. So if you're new and you haven't done this before, you can buy the issue one, you can buy issue two, which is, this is one of the issue two. And we have the two colourways here. This is the one we're working with. This is Michael Miller Fabrics. Brand new colourway today. Th these are gorgeous. This is the one that Kerry's working with. Two out of the four. So she's using these two. Aren't they beautiful colours? If you, I mean, what's really lovely though is you could actually put those two together. You could put those two together. You could put, you know, you can mix them. You can put whatever two together you like. There's all the four in there. So you, you don't have to do the colourway that Kerry's doing. There's enough in the four that you've got here to do all three of the projects that are in this kit. So you've got the pattern, the template, as well as the uh, brush roll or pen roll or um, crochet hook roll, whatever you decide to use it. Uh, you've also got the lotus bag, which is really nifty. So uh, we, we had this on the show last week on how to make it. And again, it was super, super easy to make, really quick. And of course, you get the instructions beautifully illustrated. So it's very easy to follow and the full size templates. And the other thing you get, of course, is this zipped little purse bag, um, nail varnish when your nail breaks, <laughs> uh, makeup, sewing bits and pieces. You could take your sewing sort of your needles and threads and little needle case and things, all of that when you go away on classes. Um, you could even actually, if you've got, if you're going away and you're staying away and you've got your delicate tights and things, you could pop those into a bag and it protects them from snags and catches. So there's all sorts of uses for a bag like that. Um, so you, just before I show the other colourway. So all I just want to show you very quickly what I've done here. So I realised when I marked it up, I wouldn't see it because it was inside out. So I did just <laughs> go back ahead and just mark up a three inch turning gap. I always tend to leave a little section, at least an inch mm. at the top, so you're not fighting that seam as you reverse your project. So I've sewn from the top to the first pen mark and reverse stitched and then left that gap starting again with a reverse stitch and finishing on a reverse stitch and on the opposite side just starting and finishing with your reverse stitch along the full edge of those and what turning gap would you leave three inches yeah three yeah. three inches for this definitely so because of the eight batting centimeters. in there oh you're very good i'm some very good with I centimeters can. I can i'm better some. with inches things like uh, body measurements inches only because I don't want to know that my bust is a hundred and something. That would be just too depressing. Mine be a bit ten, so you're all right. That's the, uh, that would be quite small for me, so I'd be particularly happy with those. Oh, I think it's a lot more than that, but I'm not going to go there. <laughs> you want to measure me up for a dress. So just on these corners here, I'm just cutting those to reduce the bulk in that corner. And then as we bring this through, and you can see just how fast this project comes together. I just, I just love this. It really is great. Really nice and easy. I like speedy projects. I do. 
because sometimes you just want to make something quickly because you've just got half an hour or an hour to spend making yeah. And it's nice to get something finished. Absolutely. Um, and not just add and it, it to the you know, pile if you're, of UFOs. If you're gifting for birthdays or um, Christmas, they're fast projects to make and yeah. very useful. We do like useful projects. So you can see very quickly here that we've got that little pocket at the bottom. Now you could absolutely keep that as one pocket or perhaps split that into two and pop something wider yeah, into wanted, there if you, you wanted to. If you were doing it for maybe like hairbrushes. Yeah. You know, hairbrushes yeah. and things like that. And you your little just, mirror would go in there quite yeah, nicely, so you wouldn't can just, it? You can divide it into as many pockets as you need or not. So what I'm going to do here is to just press that seam inside and I'll go ahead and very quickly hand stitch this because it's nice to have a nice finish on there, isn't yes. it, the hand stitch? If I can find my needle, that is. So you could, but you could machine stitch it, couldn't you? You could edge yeah, stitch you could, it. Yeah, you could machine stitch I tend to, especially if I'm gifting something, always finish that with a hand stitch yes, on there. Yes, I think, yeah, I'd, absolutely, yeah. There we go. But while you do that then, let's look at the other colourway that we've got on this. So you can see, so this is the other colourway. I, I just love the way the packs come in this beautiful tissue wrapping. It's like a gift to yourself. So again, we've got the pattern. This is the fabulously fast fat quarter fun. Don't try and say that when you've had a glass of wine. <laughs> uh, and in it, you've got the four fat quarters, which Kerry has carefully chosen to coordinate with each other. And which ones you use for which product are entirely up to you. So these are the lovely four. These, this selection is Liberty Prince. Not the very fine cotton lawn that you will remember from Liberty of old. These are really a really nice weight Liberty and they are lovely and soft. I got that one out last time. Let's pull out another one that goes with it. Because I just love the fact, I mean, these are two patterns, but you could put them together because they've got the same sort of colorways in them. So they're really beautiful. All works really well together. Or if you prefer not to mix them, you could put something like this with either of them. So again, what you're doing is you're mixing up these colours. So the, oh, I've covered up that one entirely. Let's do it like that. So you can put them with either. And then, of course, there's the one more. I mean, getting flippant, unravelling all of them. You do. You do really have to. I'm, Hannah's just said you have to when it's Liberty. Absolutely. The feel of this is absolutely gorgeous. It's a really lovely weight fabric. It's soft to the handle. Um, and again, you can mix and match these colours. This goes beautifully with that pattern. It goes beautifully with the little pattern. It goes beautifully with the blue. So you can mix and match those to your heart's content. This is a really lovely collection. Are any, I don't think any of these are directional either, are they? Only the one. Is, is this one directional? Yeah. yeah, this one is. But it's not, it's not hugely, so it wouldn't matter terribly. I find that hard to see which, which way is the right way up but I'm, I'm fabric blind. <laughs> so, it's, oh, they're beautiful. And of course, you know that they're Liberty because they've got the Liberty mark on the side. Look at these, absolutely gorgeous. So you've got four fat quarters and they can make the three projects that you have in this pack. Um, of course, once you've used these and you've made these three projects once, you've still got the pattern. You've, the pattern is printed on really good quality paper. So you can use it again with any other fat quarters you happen to have to hand. So it's, you know, it's reusable. So what you could actually do, which I would think would be nice, if you had some, you know, a group of friends coming round, I'm going to say female friends without wishing to be sexist, but you could make them all one of these lovely little lotus bags. With, and you could put something nice inside, a few chocolates, a little bottle of gin. I mean, you know, choice is yours. Put whatever you like inside this little bag. Gin and that makes a really good. nice gift. <laughs> Kerry says gin sounds good. So <laughs> went after my own heart. Okay, this so is what, really lovely. Oh, sorry, I've got some. Oh, no, please go on. Yes. Go, you, you're ready to go to the next one. I'm, I'm ready to move on. Stitching, <laughs> so. It was the gin that distracted me, you see. That was it. I was like, I'm, I'm done. I, that'd be great in here if you had your little miniature bottles. You could, could That you? would be a great. I think that'd even my husband would gift, like that. Yes. He tends not to like the floral fabric, so perhaps we could make it in a different but you've fabric. But you've got a kind of like, these ones aren't so florally. There we go. You can have a mustard and bloom. <laughs> now, just so you can see where I have um, drawn those lines onto here, what I've done at the top here, nice and easy, again, just using the measurements, is folded this over two inches, and I'm just going to pop a clip onto the top. 
and then we're simply going to reverse stitch at the top and sew across the full length and finish with a reverse stitch. That will secure that fabric together. And then on the bottom here, I have changed this around slightly so we can see those lines here. I've simply just drawn, using a ruler, just drawn those vertical lines there to give me a guideline of where I'm going to sew to allow for those. And I think that would be a great size for a, a miniature bottle of gin. <laughs> if you want to do it for your pens, then do make these a little smaller between. But think about the projects that you're going to put into the fab, into yeah. your roll and the distance between those lines on mm. there. So I'm just simply going to sew across the top now and secure these together to finish this project. I think it's a, it's a good idea if you're not going to uh, follow the lines that were, are they marked on the pattern, the lines that you originally On did? the pattern, um, I, I do exactly that. I say yeah. think about what you're going to put in there and the distance it, and, between and those lines. And what I lines. would actually do is put whatever you're going to put in there, in there, so you can see it fit. Because obviously once you put a 3D object into a pocket, it takes up more space. So sort of pop it in and then mark where you yeah. need to do your lines. Yeah. And, uh, I, th I think for something like this so we don't stretch the fabric on here the things that will sit in here nicely are things like your makeup brushes yes. your pens nothing too bulky otherwise it changes the, changes the finish the shape. Yeah, yeah it changes the shape of this so this is just finishing up one so that's the two projects that we've done two projects of. over the last two weeks so now I'm just simply going to rest the center of the machine foot on that first line. I always tend to, especially when working with batting, work with the center of the project and start with a reverse stitch and also finish with that reverse stitch. And have you increased your stitch length? I've increased it to five on yeah. here, yeah. So again, because you're going through all those layers, you want a longer stitch length. And then to reduce the amount of waste of thread, just tease a little thread across and then start at the bottom of the panel this time and again just with that reverse stitch. I should definitely have used a nice pink on this fabric to see those <laughs> lovely stitches. And reverse these. So in the earlier issues of the Fast Fat Quarter when you can see these are nice, nice fast and easy projects. to remove that thread and then on the second side as well so just coming across to those second sets of lines I've only put a few of these on here so you can if you want to to make sure you get nice straight lines of course you could mark them with a, a fade away marking pen a chalk pen or anything like that couldn't you yeah just to be you know make sure you're really accurate with your straight lines if you're a bit worried about that there we go Just always remembering to finish with that reverse stitch yeah. at the top because of course you're going to put your project products into there and put a little pressure on those seams. So to finish this now really is to give it a final press and to trim away those excess threads. So that is, I mean that was super quick wasn't it? Don't those colours look beautiful? And I obviously got distracted because I've ended up with a mustard on the outside. I was going to say, it uh, wasn't quite what you said earlier, but, you know, I'm not gonna, but I think it still looks great. That was a nice actually. surprise when I reversed it. <laughs> that looks great. And you can make that decision actually after you, you put the two pieces together, can't you? You can yes, fold absolutely. it one way, I like that, fold it the other way, you like that. So it doesn't matter at all. I think that's really nice. But come on, let's look at the next thing. Whilst you're just cutting those threads, I don't want to lose the opportunity to show these next things. This is sewing with scraps. So this is issue two, sewing with scraps. Um, what we can make, these, so these are pattern weights, or you could actually use them as little mini pin cushions as well. Um, so these are, these are can you make all five of these from this? Yes, and in the patterns as well, there are different sizes, and it tells you the finished sizes in there as well. That's brilliant. So, so there's the three different sizes in there. Oh, so, oh, yeah, that's the same as that one. So three different sizes and a round this one it goes on the wrist so this is a pin cushion for the wrist which is really great and ah oh, this is the are you going to finish this is this what this is here for this this was here from last week wasn't it so this is one that we that started last week so this is a scissor keep so you can pop your scissors in so it, i mean it, it's great if you uh, if you want i can turn it around this way shouldn't i so it's great to pop your scissors in 
If you are going to transport them, you're transporting them safely. But even you know, if you're putting them in a drawer, if you've, yeah. got, if you've got a drawer and you're keeping all your hubby in a drawer at home, it's good to have the blades protected and your hand protected when you root around in or that drawer. Or hide them from the children or, and the husband. Oh yes, as Carrie <laughs> said, hide them. Hide them from the husband. You must only use your dressmaking shears to cut out fabric. So these are really good. But actually, you could use this as well for your uh, rotary cutter. Yes. You don't have to just use it for scissors. It's big enough to put both in there as well. Oh, it's so big enough nice to put both yeah. in. So this one, this is a pack. This, this is the sewing with scraps, and it comes, we've got three, three colourways for this one. This is our first one. And the idea of this is that you're using up scraps, but what we're using here is we actually get, in this pack, we're going to get two fat quarters and the pattern and, I, and again it's exactly the same as the previous one pattern instruction sheet clearly illustrated instructions really good quality tissue and then two superb little pieces of fabric through fat quarters so you look at these again they've got a lovely feel to them I, I mean that's just like medium weight it's sort of yeah it's it's a really lovely weight so it's good for all sorts of projects and look at these two, they go beautifully together. So this is what you can use to make. Okay, just, just to let you know that the image on the web for this one at the moment is wrong. So I'm just gonna take two of those away. So these are the colors that you get. So the, these, these examples have been made with other colors previously, but I just wanted to show you what they look like. So these are really, this is three little uh, pattern weights. So like those beautiful pattern weights we were looking at earlier, you use these instead of using pins or as well as in addition to. Um, but you can also, you've got your pin cushion, which is a wrist pin cushion and your scissor keep. Let's look at the other colorways. So this is, um, again, it's the Sew With Scraps issue two. And this is, oh, look, look, look. Exciting, look at these beautiful colorways here. So these are blues, if you're looking at the blues. So exactly the same pattern with the instruction sheets. Uh, these are absolutely beautiful. So this one's got a, this is a directional print. This was actually one you used before on that. Lovely colors that go together again. So this is really good. So again, you can make all of those projects, um, but you can also, because you've got the pattern, you can do what the, um, what the idea is, is to do them from scrap fabrics as well, because they only use small amounts each. And then this one, I'm trying to open these really carefully so I don't ruin, because it's oh, so beautifully, exactly. so beautifully <laughs> packaged. I just love that. They make a gift in themselves yeah. for a sewing friend. So this one has got two sort of really contrasting fabric pieces. So if you want to sort of really pop, this is lovely. So you can see how this is made. So on the, the pin cushion, you, you, know, you use the two colours like this. On the pattern weights, you can use two, or you could actually use more if you wanted. You can use, you know, so you can use up the scraps that you've got. But all of this, the sizing and everything, is all on the pattern. So that's all very clear on the pattern. And you've got the tissue and you've got the pattern which gets all your instructions and exactly how to put it all together. We haven't got much time, but are you going to show us something? I'll, I'll wait till you finish. I know, no, I'm, I'm ready for you to ready for Ready for me? I just know you're, re you're, ready, <laughs> you're ready there. <laughs> It was just very quickly to show you um, how to make those little pin cushions for your pattern weights. So nice and easy, I've just got two of the fabrics and what we're going to do is to have one of the fabrics facing up towards you and then place the second piece of fabric on top pattern facing. And we're simply, so again this is a really nice fast project, would be great for um, your pattern weights as they're intended in the pattern or as your pin cushion. And if you were really, really good, you could increase the sizes and make little cushions from these as well. You wouldn't get that from your, pa um, from your fat quarters. But I think once you've learnt the technique, it's easy then to transfer yeah. it into another project. That, I think that's, the, uh, that's a lovely idea with these things, isn't it? The fact that you can... You're learning techniques each yes. time, aren't you? Yes, and absolutely. And you're building up on your techniques. And this is just so... I particularly love making fabric-covered buttons as well. So this oh, is a yes. nice way to yeah. use those little, little pieces of fabrics that are left. So I'm simply going to sew around all four sides, just starting here in the centre. 
making sure that I'm using that quarter inch seam allowance. My stitch is at 2.5 and I'm just sewing around all four sides for this particular project. Just to show you just how very quick the pinwheel pattern, um, the pinwheel pattern is. So just each time we arrive in at that corner, just pivoting the fabric. So you go all the way around, not leaving a turning gap? No turning gap for this particular project, all the way around, nice and speedy, until we arrive just a little further from our start point, then we don't need to worry about doing that reverse stitch there. Just removing those pins. And I would always recommend, if you have the equipment, to use your rotary cutter for this particular stage. But if you haven't, I'll show you that technique as well. So just lining your rulers up point to point and just drawing across those points. And in the pattern, it mentions how to do this setup here. So if you are new to sewing and you haven't got the mat or you're not particularly confident with a rotary cutter, you, then you can follow this technique here. So just using your scissors to cut across. You will, of course, with patchwork, get a more accurate finish when you're using your rotary cutter. Yes, it's something that you do need to get used to using, yeah. though, don't you? I wouldn't be without mine. It. I know. It's like, I, I've seen people use them for dressmaking, but I must admit I'm still a scissor person for still dressmaking. Still a scissor person. Um, we are on very limited stock for the, one, the, the, the kit we're using at the moment, this, this particular pattern. Um, the picture on the website is the wrong colourway. What you will be getting is the colours that we've got here that we're working with. So we've with these triangles that we've created here, just make sure all of the fabrics, whichever way you decide to press, I generally tend to put the, the lightest of the options of the fabric facing down towards the ironing board and then just press against that seam there to get a nice finish on that seam. So just opening that up. Now, if you were doing this as for a quilt or a larger project or your cushion, I would definitely trim these down and square up these pieces. But for these little pin cushions, we're not going to worry about that for today. So we are down to about eight left of this particular one. I've just sort of opened this up just to make sure you realise the colours you're getting. Uh, these are the colours you're getting in this particular kit here. Um, or this pack, so you've got these two beautiful fabrics, um, sort of blue, it's really pretty light blue here with the pink, and then the, the pink, which is really pretty. I love the And of course, don't this. forget, you do get the pattern with the instructions and the template, the full size template for all of these as well. I had to think then, was I ironing? <laughs> <laughs> This is the problem when you're playing with fabric, you distract <laughs> I definitely had a distracted moment then. So I've just trimmed these corners. If you were doing this for a larger project, I would use your ruler and your rotary cutter to trim those down. That instruction is given to you in the pattern. But to keep this nice and speedy and easy for today, what we're going to do, what's really important is that we make sure the centre part is marrying up here. So bring in, and I always work top to bottom, bringing the top over and naturally these points are now going to nest together. And although I'm a huge fan of the pins, I much prefer of the clips, I much prefer working with pins when doing any patchwork. Also when working on little tiny bits. Little tiny pieces, yeah. yeah, to keep that point nice. I mean the clips are really good when you're adding bindings yes. to quilts and things because yeah. it's big and bulky, but small delicate little bits. Yeah. Definitely. And the glass pins. headed pins. These are yeah. I, I love the glass because yeah. you can pull you can pull out the, the pin head very easily. And of course, as I keep so when you drop them, they're much more easy to <laughs> Do you drop a lot of, a lot of pins? <laughs> yeah, I have in the past. I'm sad to say I do still, yes. I really like the flower head pins as well, because oh, I find yes, those really yes, easy yeah. to work with. So just removing those pins, I have left mine far enough back that they won't come into contact with the needle. But if you feel like they are, always remove those. So just sit on one side edge, aren't you? Just that one yeah. side edge. And I've kept the pattern together so when I open this up, just trim away that joining thread. And then when we open those panels, we've got that lovely pinwheel there in the centre. Now to make sure we get that nice point in the middle, what I tend to do is to just flip these over onto the back and push one seam away from me and one seam towards me so they're in opposite directions. 
and that will allow the centre of those fabrics to rest together or nest together nicely. You know, if you leave that little joining thread, it also helps put that centre together. Oh, really? Mm. It's a sort of quick way of... Um, I'm, all fingers, I'm all fingers and thumbs, though, I think <laughs> I'd get all caught together. I will certainly have a go. I feel like you give me homework each week. I like it. I like our shows. I have lots of homework in all the spare time. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I hope we're on together soon. So the next thing that we're going to do here is to just bring these together. Ro I tend to roll these out and make sure those those, that point is marrying up here. Feel through your fabrics just to make sure they're marrying up. And wherever there's a join, I tend to put two pins to prevent that movement in the centre. Yeah, and always pin from the crucial centre yeah. to the outside. Yeah. Yeah. And again, because you can, you can adjust the edges if you need well, to. Well, we, we tend to square those up afterwards anyway, yeah. don't we? I tend to do a lot of adjusting with little projects. <laughs> <laughs> I like fine. that word. And also, buttons are wonderful. Absolutely. Because they can cover a multitude of Which scenes, is what's really they? quite nice about this. If you're thinking of, you know, doing any kind of patchwork and you want to start with small projects and learn that technique, then you can. And just a few weeks ago, we had the pinwheel quilt on. So once you've got this technique, Exactly. And actually, with those sort of half square triangles, you can put them together in different ways yes. and create quite a different look just by those same, oh, I love half same square pieces triangles. that you've done. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? There we go. And then that is... Now, this is a little larger than the sections in the, in the pattern because you can see we've got that really cute tiny one. But just to show you how to get that lovely pinwheel and how these fabrics go together. And then the back is just plain. And the back's plain. And you could use something from your remnants bundle, or you could use the back of one of these. And the, again, the templates are in there for you for and the back. If, if you haven't got that center perfect, look, you finish it with a button. There you doesn't go. Matter, doesn't matter. Right, let's have a look at these other kits because we've only got a couple of minutes and I want to quickly look at the other kits. I'm sorry, I'm really messing things Don't up. Don't worry, I'll, I'll tidy okay. it up afterwards. Right, so those are out of the way. This, this is our other kit we have here. So the, I've got two colourways. This is also sewing with scraps. Um, those belong to that one. These are here. So we only get one of these in here, don't we? We've just got some Yeah, options. there's enough for one, yeah. So there's, there's a little tissue holder which we all need to carry tissues around. And I just love the fact that this makes a really fabulous yeah. gift. Um, this is a little little bag which you can use for all sorts here. It's got sort of threads and things in here, but this could be your lippy. Um, it could be your mirror. So it could be all sorts in there. And this is just a tag, a uh, key ring tag. And you can put in the top here your uh, supermarket coin or, of course, a pound for parking. Um, and that's just sort of stitched along there so it keeps it into the top. But let's look at the colours. So this is the first one. So again, this is Sewing with Scraps, issue three. It's just issue three. But we've got two, two different colourways. This is the first one. So look at this. Look at this. Where's this fabric from, Kerry? This is beautiful. It is Liberty. I, you know, I didn't want to say because it hasn't got the branding on the side, but it has that feel to it. You, you can definitely, you can definitely feel. The, yes. Uh, the look at that. So Liberty. two beautiful fabrics there again, but they go so well together. So I'm not sure. I can't see the colour on an angle to the screen. This is like a candy floss pink. It's really, really beautiful. So I'm not sure. It might be a little bit washed out on the screen. It's a very beautiful colour. And it's teamed here with this uh, print here, which is so Liberty, it just looks so Liberty. And don't forget, it comes with the pattern pack and full instructions. So that's there as usual. Um, really fabulous price for all of this. This is $15.99 for all of this. this is lovely. So your two fat quarters, your pattern with the templates for three projects. And the second colorway that we have for this let me try and open it delicately so it can go together nicely. Um, this one, oh, these are the blue. So you've got the sort of pastel -y colours there and you have got a blue colour. And again, this is Liberty. So you can feel it. You can feel the quality. Look at that beautiful little print and then a more of an all over design. So you've got the two designs. And as I said, this makes the three projects 
out of this. So these have obviously been made in other fabrics previously, but these are the projects that you get to make. And this is sewing with scraps. And once you've made them, you are able to remake them in your scrap fabrics, of course. Now we've got five minutes max to finish a little demo, Kerry. Five minutes. Five so minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally how I am every day. <laughs> <laughs> you did a great impression of me there. Everybody that knows me will know that's exactly what I'm like. <laughs> so you're, you're stuffing. You're stuffing. So all I've done on here, you do make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> My mum calls me a whirlwind. A whirlwind. So all I've done just to show you is I popped. Now you will have the templates in your collection. I'm just working with the scraps here. The panel that you made the pinwheel with, pattern facing onto your fabric. I've sewn around all four sides, leaving a turning gap. And on that turning gap, I would definitely recommend avoiding leaving the turning gap on either of your seams. So we've got a one and a half inch turning gap for this particular size that I'm working with. It will, of course, be reduced on those smaller pins there. And then simply just reversing and filling it with lots of stuffing. Mm, uh, filling the stuffing bit by bit, don't try yeah. and put too much in at once because it just makes it takes longer, in fact. Little yeah, bit you end up bringing it, it out because it stays in a hard If you're board, using it? it as a pattern weight, this is when you would add lentils or something? Yeah, lentils, or I really like working with crushed walnut shells, of course, if you've got a uh, nut allergy, you can't work with those, but I really like those because they keep your pins nice and sharp as well. Or you could, or you could use rice as well if you want yes. to. But if you're making this as a pin cushion, or as we mentioned, you can increase the size on the pattern, although it's not in there, um, you can increase the size to make yourself a nice a little cushion as well. And once you've got your stuffing in here, when you put your button into the centre, you get that lovely plush Yes, you get feeling. that lovely sort of feeling, don't you, where it comes up. So this is from the, uh, um, the other pattern. This isn't what we just looked at. This is the one before. Uh, so this is what you're getting. So That's what you're getting, this is, yeah. this is the big size. You've just made a big one for, to show on Just TV so we can easily. see that nice yeah. point in the centre. And, and I've got a button top and bottom as well. Button on the top and the bottom to bring that in, to mm. really give that that plush feeling. But if it was me, I think I've got a slight obsession at the moment with covering buttons, with all yes. these little remnants that you're going to get. Perhaps you want to incorporate some of your other Liberty fabrics that you've got from other Liberty kits, something to really make the centre of this project pop. So and self, yeah, self-covered buttons are beautiful and of course the perfect because if you don't have the right button and the right size to hand when you're sewing, Sunday night, you never do, do you? You can make your own self-covered <laughs> buttons, true. don't you? So <laughs> yeah. it's, it's the perfect thing to do. So in the next hour that you come on with us, because yes. we're going back to Fiona in just a second, but then you're going to come back to me later. So we've got two different kits in the next hour. These have been on before and these are your, so this is issue seven of your um, fabulously fast fat quarter fun. And we've got back as well, which was, I think each time that we've bought it on, the was a sellout. We've got the vinyl bag and the diary cover oh, as brilliant. well. That's good, because sewing with vinyl is, is a different thing. In I think I've like got those just, just so here. Different. Yeah. So, um, so you can see, can you see this one? I don't know if you can see it. It's got a little scrap bag hanging down at the front here and it's got a really nice hefty pin cushion on there which is actually velcroed on so you can take that off and use that separately. The graphics for that are coming through now so you should be able to see that and we've got different colourways. We will be bringing this to you at 12 o'clock. We've also Oh, okay, we've also got two kits for the sellout project, which is the vinyl bag. So yes. Okay, so if you want, because because it's very very busy and uh, it might you know it might well sell out before we even go to air. Um, the graphics are coming up now. It's from issue six. So as I said earlier, um, to each of these. Uh, sets these, these sets of projects are by issue and the issues as they go on up in number so they go up in slight complexity because you're learning new skills and techniques each time each, that's it you can you can look at them all on the web right now and you can see all the different colorways but we will be bringing you the show back again at 12 o'clock 12 o'clock but for now i must say thanks ever so much kerry a blast again <laughs> and i look forward to seeing see you, you at 12, 12. See you at 12. But before then, of course, we have, we're have we back with Fiona from Sew so Girl to have a little look more at patterns that she has produced. These lovely 
suitable for beginners patterns, which I absolutely love. And also she's going to do some techniques using doing a patch pocket and twin needle sewing, one of my favorite things. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Christmas is going to be a little bit different this year, but Sewing Street will be here to keep you company from 8am to 12pm on Christmas Day. Help me, John Scott, spread some festive cheer by sending in your Christmas messages for us to play on air on Christmas Day. Whether it's a message to your fellow Sewing Street fans or to a loved one, a video message or text, we want to hear from you. Send your videos, photos and messages to studio at sewingstreet.com by Tuesday the 22nd of December to be included and be a part of Sewing Street's Christmas Day celebrations. Hello, my name's Fiona Hesford and I'm founder of Sew Girl. I'm based down in Worthing on the south coast of England. And I've got a range of sewing patterns which I've developed over the last few years which are projects for loose fitting clothing, everyday, simple garments, things that I really love to wear myself. And I'm going to be bringing you them to Sewing Street over the next few months. So I look forward to seeing you then. Bye. Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet, and all things yarn? bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Christmas is going to be a little bit different this year, but Sewing Street will be here to keep you company from 8am to 12pm on Christmas Day. Help me, John Scott, spread some festive cheer by sending in your Christmas messages for us to play on air on Christmas Day. Whether it's a message to your fellow Sewing Street fans or to a loved one, a video message or text, we want to hear from you. Send your videos, photos and messages to studio at sewingstreet.com by Tuesday the 22nd of December to be included and be a part of Sewing Street's Christmas Day celebrations. Hello, my name is Fiona Hesford and I'm founder of Sew Girl. I'm based down in Worthing on the south coast of England. And I've got a range of sewing patterns which I've developed over the last few years, which are projects for loose fitting clothing, everyday simple garments, things that I really love to wear myself. And I'm going to be bringing you them to Sewing Street over the next few months. So I look forward to seeing you then. Bye.
Hiya, we're back again. I'm Wendy Gardiner and I'm going to be joined by Fiona from Sew Girl again. I'm living my dream, I really am. I'm on a sewing channel with dressmaking patterns. What's more to love? But the first pattern we're going to look at, um, so if you, would, if you joined us earlier, you will have known about Fiona and Sew Girl. So Sew Girl is her pattern brand. Uh, she trained in fashion, so she's come up through fashion. And it all sort of started uh, a few years ago when she was asked to design a skirt out of the blue. She thought, I can't do that. Do you know what? I can. And she did. And she's gone on and on and on. And what she does is she's designing patterns that are easy to make for beginners. Um, so that's going to get newbies into sewing. And what I love about them is not only do you get an amazing pattern with all the information you need on the front and the back. So this is the first one. This is uh, Mildred. They've all got like nice names too. I really like this. So this is Mildred Pinafore Dress. The, this is one of the most previously uh, popular, pa most popular previous, pa yes, I've got those words the wrong way around, but previously it was one of the most popular patterns. So we've got it back again for you. And in fact, you'll see in a minute that that's what Fiona's wearing. Suitable for beginners and in sizes eight to 22. Now those sizes are basically the same as an M&S size. Um, so that's really useful to know because that's quite unusual. The back of the pack, it's got so much information. Don't worry if you can't see it closely on the screen here because it is on the website and you can see the detail. But I really love patterns. I'm a devotee of dressmaking and dressmaking patterns. You get the little picture of what you've got. So sometimes you can't see all the detail in the photograph because the fabric used you know, hides pockets. So it gives you the details of what you've got here. It also tells you uh, what you need to know on sizing. So don't just assume if you're a 14 in the shops, you're a 14 pattern. You probably will be if you're thinking M&S size for so girl patterns, but do check your own body measurements. And the other thing to look at as well is the finished garment measurements. And the difference between these two is the amount of ease. So there'd be wearing ease. So even a, a close fitting garment might be an inch or two bigger, but there'll also be designer ease. So on here, this tells you what sort of um, fit it's supposed to be. So it might say very loose fitting, loose fitting, etc. You get that information. Inside the pack, I think I'm going to have to open one again. I do hate, I hate ruining it. So I'm just going to, uh, I wanted to show the tissue and everything. I'm just going to open it. I'm going to, oh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go mad here. Open this pattern. Um, because I want, to I want to show you the quality of what you're getting inside this pattern. And this is the same for all of the patterns that Sew Girl do. So whatever Sew Girl pattern you'll get, this is the quality you get inside. So you have these instructions on an instruction sheet, um, nice and clear. It gives you the layouts that you put your pattern pieces, which are all numbered, and you know how to lay it out onto the fabric. And then it tells you all of the step-by-step -step instructions, very clear, nice big diagrams, so you can follow that through. Really, really simple to follow and easy. And here, look, we've got some examples of finished ones. And the sizing, as I said, on this particular design is 8 to 22. And it also comes with the tissue pieces, which are multi-sized. So if actually you find that you are 14 top but a 16 bottom, no problem. You just cut from one line to the other. So they're all clearly marked. And it's in paper, which means that you can use this pattern again and again and again and again. Now, you buy this pattern as it is. So this is the pattern. It's the Mildred. And then if you've got your own fabric at home, you might think that's enough, but you might actually think, do you know what? I quite like to buy one of the bundles of fabric. So we have two bundles of fabric to go with this particular design. First one, which one would you like me to start with, Hannah? Let's do the pink. So this is a sort of linen-like fabric. It's a soft pink. Now, I'm not sure, I can't, because I'm seeing the, um, the screen at an angle, I can't see whether, it's, whether you can see that. It's a, it's a soft pink. It's a soft pink. Oh, I'm still wearing the pink cushion from Kerry. It's a soft pink colour and you will get three metres of this. I'm not going to try and open it all up because it's huge, but it's a beautiful fabric. It's got a lovely feel to it and it's got a, a good weight. And being as it's sort of linen like, you'll find it'd be good for summer as well. And it makes a really nice sort of pinafore kind of dress because it will hold the shape well. Um, if that's not your colourway or your choice, what about this? 
So this is the, uh, this is a denim. So I've got two, I've got a dark denim and a light denim. So this is a denim. So this is, again, it's a lovely weight fabric. So this is great. In fact, you've got the dark denim on, haven't you, Fiona? Yeah. So this is the light denim. Let's just, I'm just shoving that one out of the way a minute so you can see this one. So again, you get three meters and it is really, it's, it's kind of like the original denim, is it? I don't know. I like, I like the, oh, it's called true denim, true denim, because oh. it's not being mixed with anything. It's a washed denim as well, isn't it? Yeah, eight it's, it's eight, eight, eight ounce, ounce washed denim. denim so yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a really lovely fabric. And Can I, for yeah. pinafores, it's The thing about the brilliant. washed denim is it's a quite good idea to wash it actually again before you um, I, I, do use Do you know, that's it. a gen general even good tip. Washed, even, yes. even when something says it's been washed, uh, you really should wash your fabric before you sew yes. with it. I have done the opposite and I've made a dress and washed it and then it didn't fit afterwards. So, yeah, you should always wash your fabric Even before you dark, sew. Actually, it, when you, you know, it's a little bit of blue comes off a yes. little bit, but after you've washed it, it's fine. So just put it in with your dark colours. Yes, your dark, yeah, exactly. You, know, you don't have to wash yeah. it and on its own. You could just put it with all your dark stuff. So this is a dark denim. So this is this is really popular. I think this is, again, an eight ounce denim. And again, you get the three metres. 100% cotton denim fabric, um, eight ounce, lovely colour, and as Fiona said, do wash it, even, even if it says pre-wash, and this goes with any fabric you buy for dressmaking, you should pre-wash them. So that is your second colour weight for the pinafore dress on the denim. Can I just say about the Mildred as well? It's lovely to wear it with t-shirts, but it's also really good to wear it with like the sort of little um, polo neck jumpers underneath. Oh, yes. So you can mix uh, yeah. between seasons. You could wear it in the winter and the summer. And, know, in, and if you know, in the summer you could even wear it with like little crop tops. That's right. So yes. you know, depending on how young and trendy yeah. you feel. Well, so yeah, it's not quite my thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so shall we go to another pattern or you want the coat? Oh yes, look at this. I'm going to bring this forward. So firstly, I'm going to look at the coat. I'm just going to put that so I don't mix up the patterns. So this is the coat. This is a, it's a coat again. So you, can, you could wear it sort of indoors as a cardigan type thing, or you can use it as a coat. It's available in two lengths in this pattern. And again, it's eight to 20. It says all this on here. Now this one says intermediate. Um, doesn't mean to say you can't have a go if you're new, but you just realize there are a few techniques in here that would be a little bit more challenging. Um, using coating, uh, you've got buttonholes to do and you've got a band to put on. So it's, it's all clearly illustrated, the instructions, just like the other one I've opened, clearly illustrated instructions all the way through, all the details on the back, knowing you what, what you need. Oh, we've got a little clip here. That's, that's not, that's Lottie, actually. Oh, that's a different you coat. Got Ursula. No, that's Lottie. That's Lottie. <laughs> Hold on. You have got <laughs> Ursula somewhere. No, that's Cecily. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, maybe not at the moment I, then. Yeah, just working with the boiled wool, is, uh, I wouldn't turn under the hems on the front band It's because it's quite thick. So just turn under single fold hems. Rather than just the double fold so that, hem. Yeah, and pop your walking foot on. Yeah. But on the blog, there's lots of information about how to do this fabulous hack with that particular boiled wool because that is just so lovely to work with that with this pattern and you can see here I've just hacked it and very simple add-on back neck sorry I'm interrupting I know not at all because this is really I'm all information this is really useful information because I mean what you're getting in here is this pattern with this look and what Fiona's saying is having done that confidently made the dress you can hack it you can just do a few alterations and make it look different um, well, like she, whilst, uh, whilst Fiona's modelling her hack of the Ursula pattern as the coat, I want to show <laughs> you the actual boil wool she's used. Now look at this big chunky piece here that I've got. You get two and a half metres of this boiled wool. Um, is that what the pattern calls for? I need to have a quick check on, my, on here. Fabric requirements. Yeah, so on the long coat, size 20, says 2.3. Plenty, plenty of fabric here. It's really lovely. So it is that boiled wool. Uh, brilliant that you, you don't need to line it if you don't want to. So it can be an unlined garment because it is a fabulous fabric. The edges won't fray. So you don't have to neaten them unless you wish to. Um, and as Fiona has said, you can actually just turn up one level um, you don't have to sort of double turn because you're not going to, the edges it's aren't going to fray. It's too bulky to do it's, that. Yeah, yes. you can, it would just be, so it makes it simpler. Um, mm. 
I'm not sure what that the width double looks to me as well so you can it, you know play around with that double yes. sided and the width, um, that looks like it's 60 inches to me, so it's a nice wide mm. fabric. You've got a nice big piece of fabric. So this is the first colour. So it's 140 to 145 centimetres wide. It's lovely, isn't it? Lovely big chunky fabric. But let me show you the other colourway. Look at this. So if you're not into um, the blue, you can use this lovely... Lilac? Gorgeous colour, or dusky isn't it? pink, dusky pink, dusky pink, I, pink, I think. It's gorgeous. So it's isn't lovely it? again, and again because it's this boiled wool, so it's lovely finish. It's mm. it is a wool coating. I mean, mm. it, it's what it's for jackets and it's pure wool. Do you know you can also use if you, if you've got any left, if you've got mm. enough left, you can use this mm. to make a handbag. I was going to say, in fact, I did say that on the last show to make a gorgeous, um, you know, like a little hold all bag would yeah. just be gorgeous. Little and I, I, w I want to do some applique patterns with this, where you actually can put felt applique on the front, yes. you know, make it really fancy. There's all sorts you can do. So this is yeah. a really lovely piece of fabric, yeah. uh, £53.99. So, you know, you're getting a coat very cheaply mm. if you make if you for and of course wool. I mean, for you wool. so coat that much, exactly and you not yeah. only have you got that then you've got the pattern which you can use again and again yeah so you can make repeated yeah. coats and of course you use different mm. fabrics and you get different well, the, looks and the good thing about that pattern again is it goes from summer to winter so behind yes. you you've got the linen version Ooh, let me get let me grab and that. that just is something you can sling on at home and you know it's like a sort of 60s duster it is and, um, it's so it's got, it's got the same pattern it's the same ursula look. pattern yeah. And then it's just made in a much lighter weight fabric for summer. That's in a linen, that one. That's a linen. Mm. Well, you could do it in a denim as well. This yes, dark so denim this, that you've got yeah. would be perfect for it. So that's, that's a really good one. I want to look, because I, I love this one. I'll just pop that one out of the way there. The Betty dress. Now this one, so this one, she, Betty's standing here to my left. But she's also, if you're not, if you're not, Keen on having a belt round your see, I wouldn't put the belt round my waist that way. I would actually pull it round to the back. Would you? Because because uh, I've got a tummy. Your bit hides it. No, I find it just oh, just. Sorry. But what, but so what I've got, so what I have is I would put the I would put it round to the back yes. like that because I just love this one, this mm. version. Wendy, and also that one there does not have the buttons that go all the way down. And if you want, if you fancy doing that hacked version, there's all the information about how to. It's basically cutting two backs instead of a back and the front. Right. And it's just so that the buttons just go down. To just the waist. go to the waist. So it's like more like a dress. And it's got lovely yeah, patch lovely pockets. Patch I love pockets. it. That's that's so gorgeous yeah, to wear. It's one of my favourites. Um, that. And of course, you know, we have fabric again to go with it. So you can do the full version, which is in the pattern, or you can do the pattern hack. Mm. Have you got the in, pattern hack in in the blog? In the, just in in the, the blog. blog. Yes. So if you want to get so the the blog, and the blog details, details are, are in the in pattern. The pack, yeah. Um, two fabrics. So again, I've got this pale pink, uh, sort of linen look fabric three meters to make this dress remember that this dress is um eight to 22 so your three meter piece in here it's lovely it just feels so lovely it has got some weight to it so it will make this dress really beautifully um, and i've got it in two colors i have it here in this dusky pink very pretty that pink, so it is it? Very, pretty, very pretty isn't it mm. uh, but i, I actually like this color as well <laughs> <laughs> as long as that nail stays intact. Oh, right. <laughs> not real then, are they, Wendy? <laughs> no, they're not, the nails are real, but it's, I've got shellac on them. Oh, and it right. just, I put them on yesterday and it started peeling off. Oh. Sorry, don't need to know all that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is the other colourway for this. This is a, it's a sort of a, a denim blue, um, indigo blue, I think. It's, it's lovely. I, I like this colour. Mm. This is really nice. I think this is lovely. And if you know, if you think about the buttons, you could you could use um, buttons to really yeah. stand out. Yeah, you? You could so have I've a done completely it with, uh, different colour buttons, even with sort of bright red buttons. Yes, something or wood like buttons, that. I think and then it, you know nice you can accessorise. Well. Yeah. So Shell. that's really so. Again, it's a three metre piece, which is thirty five forty nine. So that's your fabric to go with that one. That that fabric is also you could use it quite nicely with the Mildred as well, couldn't you? Yes, that would. Look I mean, good. this this is it. So the, the quantity could all be, most of these fabrics are almost they're interchangeable all enough to do any. Yeah, except of them, I wouldn't aren't use they? the coating maybe yes, for the dress. But yes. Yeah, but they they're beautiful fabrics. But before we go on to your demo, let me look at these. These are bags. So this is a kit. So you get half a meter of each of the fabrics. 
and you get the pattern which is not just a backpack can you see that through the shine of the thing so it can be a shoulder bag or we flip it over and you can have it as a backpack isn't that great That's so great. it's a bit of both um, they, you will need to buy a few extra bits to go with it you get the two pieces of fabric so you this is this is a cord it's a corduroy um, how much do you say was in here it's a half a meter but it's a it's oh I've just lost the little label I think it's a very wide one so it's a lovely and wide it's lovely it's got some stretch in there as well it has you will need to interface yes, so it, it needs, that's so you, part of being the bag yes. isn't it so you yeah. would you would need to interface anyway yes. to make a bag have you got you? my sample that I did in that very fabric I, I, I don't know what happened to it. Some bag you did. Samples. We I had them. them in. Well, you lost them already. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this. No, I haven't oh, eaten them. Oh, here they are. Here they are. I'll throw it to you, Andy. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So this is actually. So this is. Let me look. I'll just leave that there for one second because this is the one colourway. Uh, so this is sort of this sort of rusty red, um, which comes with for the lining. I'm saying for the lining, I'm assuming that's for the lining. It comes with this. So again, it's a half metre of cotton and that's for the lining. So that's a really pretty, pretty soft cotton there. Half a metre of each. And of course you get the pattern and the pattern includes all the instructions on how to make and the, te the um, full size templates in the paper again. You've got the templates with this one, yes. I didn't oh. do them on the one before, but then I, I, I thought, no, let's bring the templates yeah. in. But it's also got the metal bits as well. Oh, it has got the metal. Yes. Ooh. Well, it's the slider and the rings. I'm not okay. sure if it's got the. the Shall I have a quick peek? Yeah. So you've got the slider and the rings. It might slider just and the be rings and antique brass. So it might just be the, sources, the buckle really. you haven't got yes. there. Let's have a look. Opening it carefully. Oh, there we are. Yes. So you've got the slider and the rings, and the instructions on how to apply all of that will be in the instructions. Mm. Um, and as I said, you've got the full size paper template as mm. well to create it. So that's one colourway. And we have another colourway here. And mm. this is the oh, one. The same one. That's this lovely, is the isn't one it? that Fiona has made. This way? This is the one Fiona's made. So you do you get the magnetic clasp? You don't, you do the buckles. I don't so think I think so that, that, the, that it's one, the clasp yes. that you have to provide, whether it be a buckle yes. or whether it be a magnetic clasp. It's a clasp. choice really. Yes. I mean this one here, you can see I've put uh, like a, a buckle. You can get them on, you know, auction sites. Yes. So you know those. Yeah. Um, but if you don't want to use that, you could always just put in a magnetic clasp. And you've got a denim one here, you see. Yeah. Which so you can either have it with the shoulder strap so it goes like a messenger bag like that or you can have it backpack who i've got two bags now <laughs> <laughs> the story of that's my just life plain greedy is. that is <laughs> you look like a sort of japanese schoolgirl, don't you yeah. <laughs> i love that look <laughs> makes me feel young <laughs> So this is this is uh, one of the fabric colourways. This is the second one. So if you look at this, this is this corduroy again. It's, you just have to stroke corduroy, don't you? I know, it's so it's lovely. lovely. It really yeah, is. It's so, so beautiful, it's, that it's fabric. It's a simple bag to make. Um, mm. you, have, yeah, you have said it's sewing for beginners. Mm. So it's, really, it's a really good way of learning to make a bag. Mm. Um, and, you know, So Girl, who is Fiona, <laughs> has a blog called So Girl. And on that blog, so there blog. are... So girl, so girl blog .com. So girl blog .com. That's quite hard to say. <laughs> so if you, go, if you do go on that later on in the day, yes. um, have a look. There's lots of tips yes. and techniques and how to. So you'll get lots of help as well. The thing but about the blog as well. Sorry to interrupt, Wendy, but it's a great place to go if you want to see whether or not you can make it or whether you're happy with what, what, what's involved. Mm. It shows you what's involved, set by set photographs. And then you can have a think, yeah, that I can do that. So, you know, and that's just yes. an, you know, help a bit of a, an extra aid, really, yeah. an extra guide. But you don't need to do that because the no, pattern instructions the include instructions. it all in yes, there. Yes, and they're all illustrated. So um, I tend to illustrate for the pattern and then photographs for the blog. This is an epic. So you get a half a metre of the fabric and then you get a half a metre of a lining fabric. So this is just a lovely piece of cotton fabric for the mm. lining. 
So that's really lovely. And if you decide that I don't want to use this beautiful fabric inside this bag, but I've got something else, you can use this for something else then, can't you? But it's up to you. So you've got the pieces you need to make this bag with the instructions and the pattern and everything. So it's all there included to make this fabulous bag. I've now, got a spot fabric Fiona. though with the, the grey one. Oh, I've got oh, a grey one here. You've got, oh, okay. You haven't got the grey one here, have no, you? No, I haven't. I've got oh, this one. Okay, okay so what, what are you going to show us? Where shall I start? Shall I start with the Mildred? I think that might be a good idea. Um, I've just got a bit of foam here just to show you that with the bag, for example, just going back to that, um, bag foam is particularly good because it does give you a little bit more structure. If you're carrying around laptops and things like that, mm -hmm. I would definitely recommend the bag foam. But if you're using it, and it does say it all in the pattern, just trim a centimetre off around the edge because it's quite tricky to, you know, it gets quite thick at the edges. So if you trim it off, then you'll be fine. Yeah, but just you can, trim it a bit smaller yeah, than the bag so the piece. Yeah, so the 8640... Uh, fleece interlining, fleece uh, interfacing is very good. The, the fleece one um, uh, is one I've used for that. And you can see it's still quite nice. So, you know, whatever. Um, but sometimes I put a base in as well into the bag using just a piece of foam or even a piece of card or something just to kind of like make the base a little bit more sturdy. Now, I'm going to talk about the Mildred first of all. So um, just a quick thing as well about the Mildred is that on the back of the pattern you've got all the all the inst all the measurements that you've got on the pack in bigger size so if you if you find it a little bit small to read go into the pattern instructions and you've got them again there look just super sized <laughs> I think, I think this is the problem. I think nowadays that the eyes of needles have got smaller and certainly instructions yes. on labels and things have yes. got far smaller. Nothing to do with my eyesight whatsoever. <laughs> We try and, and make the outside pack uh, measurements as big as possible. And I'm constantly saying to the graphic designer, can you just get them a little bit bigger, a bit bigger, a <laughs> bit bigger? <laughs> anyway, but then I thought, well, if we've got them on the inside, then that, that really solves that problem, doesn't it? We've got the lay plans and we've got all the illustrated. I think these are quite, illust quite well illustrated, I'd like to say myself. They are. They're beautifully yes. illustrated, lovely, clear illustrations. I mean, yes. it is. It's a lovely, easy pattern to follow. It takes hours to do that. Right. Now... Um, so with the Mildred, uh, you have a front and a back and the back you join with a centre back seam. So you can see on mine, you've got a seam going down the back. You could top stitch that if you want, but I think I've just left mine. Um, now, before you remove the pattern uh, pieces, you, uh, it's a good idea to mark your pocket positions onto the fabric. Because, I mean, if you forget to do that, you can always bring back the pattern and just make, you know, measure it from the top and measure it from the centre front, you know, and then just sort of, you know, you can just mark well, out your I position. always say, actually, if you, I mean, absolutely, as you say, transfer the markings across. But if you've, if you've used a heat away pen and ironed it and you've got rid of them, keep it's, your pattern yes. tissue folded with the fabric. Yes. So it's tanned. That's if right. You, need, you don't have to root through your envelope again. Yes, that's it. Um, so if you've done a few little tailor's tacks at each corner, like I've done there, then that just helps you. So once you've done that and you can take your, um, this is the front and I'm just going to take my pins off. You can see that I've traced out my pattern onto, this is just some newsprint, but you could use some dressmaking, tracing paper or what else could you use? Just anything well, really, you, can, you, you could use brown paper. You know, there's paper, no, you that's a really good idea. If, if you wanted, if you I mean, you don't. Through it. The only reason to trace it out is if you were maybe doing a different view or a different size for somebody else. Otherwise, yes. you just use the, the pattern you can tissue. Use the can't pattern, you? Yes, but sometimes you, you know, if you put on weight, for example, or if you just want to do one for your daughter who's yes. like a size eight, like my daughter is, <laughs> <laughs> she needs to eat more pies. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> So, um, so you can see I've done my little tailor's tacks. Now, tailor's tacks are just little loops that you can uh, stitch over and over a couple of times and then <laughs> through the pattern and then... What are you laughing I'm at? I'm laughing because I, I, use, I use a marking pen. You use a marking Often. pen. Absolutely you, you can Whichever way you want to transfer yeah. your marks. Tailor when tacks doesn't is traditional. Like any hand <laughs> stitching, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> One thing yeah, about the hand stitching ones, though, is um, you, they, they are... If you use a, a different thread colour, they are very, very clear. You just have to make sure you don't inadvertently pull them out when you're working. But That's as I say, right. if you keep your tissue piece folded with your fabric yes, piece until you, you can use always it. transfer the markings, like you say, yeah. with a pen or whatever. 
and then that gives you the position. Now the position is actually um, the finished pocket measurement, so it'll be a bit smaller than your actual pocket piece, won't it? So now um, when you pull it apart, you can just snip in between like so, and then that transfers the markings to sort of mirror image, and that gives to you the centre. There we go. I don't know if there's a right and wrong to this fabric. I was sort of well. I would so what I would say if you're looking at a fabric, you mm. can't tell the difference between the right side and the wrong side. Um, and yeah, I, I agree with you. I think it's very different. I think probably isn't really. I think the it? right side is slightly more raised. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you use the same for every piece. So what I would do is on the back, the, the, the side you've decided is the back either chalk mark across or double pin across or something so when you're putting the pieces together you always make sure you put them together the same so what you've decided as the front is the front on all pieces because if there was a yeah. very subtle difference that you might only see in daylight you could realize you've, you've put a back to a front etc so if it looks the same just mark one side as the back on every piece that you've cut out so you know that they're all the same that's a little tip for that. But yeah, I, I couldn't, I don't think you can tell particularly. So here's so. my pocket. Actually, what I like to do is put a bit of masking tape on and then yeah, write on it with exactly. very big letters. Back, back front, <laughs> right, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, so there's your pocket piece. And I've finished the outer edges of the um, sides, bottoms. But I haven't finished the, di the um, diagonal slanted lines because those are going to be... Um, hemmed so let's give this a nice press and so these are a few tips about doing some patch pocket i'm going to just do a little and i'm going to try and get my twin needle on as well to show you a little bit about that now because i've done an overlocked edge here i'm just going to do a single fold hedge oh sorry no we're doing the slanted edge first sorry <laughs> if if you don't, if you don't have an overlocker, um, and when you're working on a thicker fabric, it is a good idea to only have to turn it up once. You can use your over edge stitch on your sewing machine. Uh, the over edge stitch, um, I'm going to do it this way, and I'm probably back to front to you. But on the left, it's a straight stitch, and on the right, there's a zigzag. So if you look for a stitch that looks like that, so straight on the left, zigzag right. Um, that's your over edge stitch and the idea of that is that the zigzag goes over the edge and it replicates an overlocker. Um, most machines will also come with an over edge foot so that makes it easier but if you don't have an over edge foot then you can use your zigzag foot to do that but you just have to place the fabric so the foot doesn't cover it completely because the stitch is supposed to go over the edge. So that's what you can use if you don't have an overlocker. Have you ironed that piece now? It's so I'll good having you, you on the show, iron. Wendy, because you're so knowledgeable about all these feet and things. That sh you know, a lot oh, of people are, demis are a bit mystified by what they do. I know, sewing so, so machines and sewing so machine feet is one of my passions. I like to get people to, to feet use all are your feet. passions. <laughs> yes, feet. Oh, <laughs> talking about that, I've got to show you. Look at these. The now, these Dorothy comes to mind I when I see these. These are the shoes that I should be wearing, <laughs> but I'm not because you can't see my feet. So <laughs> I'm not wearing them. But these are the ones I bought to wear. Aren't they lovely? I do like my shoes. I do People like can't my shoes. see today, but she, she's, she's shimmering. She's shimmering. I'm shimmering. Actually, yeah, yes. it does come across on the screen. She is Mrs. Glam today, aren't you? She's <laughs> yes, completely thought, opposite to I me. This is because it's well. Oh, you're wearing what you're you're selling, but I thought because this is my last show before Christmas. Yes, well or done. My last day before Christmas, I would come Christmassy. No, you yeah, you look fabulous. This actually is a dress I, I made for a, a Zoom uh, class that I've done, which is coming out next year. Ooh, so uh, yes. So you can see that I have turned over and pressed the slanted edge on my, my um, pocket and I've just, um, it's literally one centimetre and then one centimetre again and then pop a couple of pins in and then we're going to uh, sew it. Now, I would definitely, if you've got one, put your walking foot on if you're going to be sewing denim or anything that's a little bit um, bulkier because when you've got hems, you know, when you come to stitching on the pocket, sometimes you've got quite a few layers to mm. sew through. 
so it just glides over but if you haven't it's perfectly all right you, but it might just need a little bit of encouragement when you get you, to the balcony you can increase your stitch length as well if you need to um, when you're sewing through Pardon lots me? of layers if you want if you're sewing through lots of layers you might want to increase the stitch increase length. the stitch length is a really good idea yeah. and that helps that as well it does yes I, and walking feet, I mean, traditionally made for quilting, but they are so good for dressmaking, so, aren't oh, they? So good. So useful. Especially if you're working with bulky yes. boiled walls and things like that. They're but, absolutely but they're make they're great for with jersey fabrics that are stretchy or silky fabrics that slip. I mean, any, any fabric that's a little bit tricky to sew, a walking foot can be beneficial. Mm. Now, I was just talking about twin stitching. You might want, you could have done a twin needle stitching on that edge, but I'm just going to concentrate on the outer edge here today. Um, so I've stitched down and let's just trim off my ends. Um, you could pull the end through to the other side, but I'm just going to just trim that off just for speed today. And then what we're going to do now is we're just going to turn under and press the other edges. So here's the top edge. So get my steam iron, give it a good press. There we go. So that's the top bit. Um, we did have another program with this um, pattern a few months ago. So if anyone wants to tune into that one and see the, the other bits of the pattern that I've done. Okay, so if you want to find that, if you search on YouTube for Sewing Street, is it Sewing Street TV or just Sewing Street? So you'll find it with just Sewing Street and Fiona. So Sewing Street and Fiona mm. and your And get, Mildred's maybe if you you'll get all Mildred's, you'll, yeah. you'll get all the Fionas. No, you'll, get all, <laughs> you'll get all the links to the ones that Fiona has done. So you can have a, a revise That's have a look right. at them. Now um I just love the way I've the turned, iron's kept on the floor. It just keeps going back to the floor each time. <laughs> Don't you keep your iron up Do on I the keep, floor at home? Yeah. I keep just sort of dis 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 disappearing. <laughs> No, Kerry was doing the same. She kept putting it down there. I know. Go down to the cellar, don't we? <laughs> and here I am sort of rustling around in a bag, which is the story of my life. <laughs> rustle, rustle. <laughs> now, we've got a few little corners here, particularly at the bottom, where, can you see, it's just a little bit sort of, it sort of hangs over. Mm. Now, a little tip here is to get your scissors and just trim a little box out of that corner like so so we're just reducing the bulk on that corner edge and then and then what we do is we just this is great stuff or even those glue pens those fabric glue pens mm -hmm. that you can sew with but so this, this, is this is quarter this quarter, quarter inch quilter's tape um so it's a double-sided tape, so it has a paper yeah. backing. And we do have this. It's on the website if you are interested. It's actually very useful. Very useful indeed. If you don't have that, a little bit of bonder web maybe, or a little bit of uh, wander tape, you know, so anything. So what, what you're looking for is a double-sided glue surface. So make sure when yeah. you're looking for this, because you can get um, quarter-inch quilters tape, which is actually just like a bit like masking tape, quarter of an inch, so it's not double-sided. So look for the double-sided one. Right, so I'm just taking off the backing and then what I'm going to do is, if I can get this backing off <laughs> with all my uh, fingers and thumbs today, and then fold over a little corner, this is, you know, and then, you're mitering fiddly, it really. and then you're mitering it, so you're just literally folding it back like that. Now you could stitch that if you wanted to, but it's so small that it would be quite tricky. So I just think just just something that's going to keep it from hanging over that pocket Until edge. you stitched it. Until you stitched yeah. it. And then... That's a really good tip, I think, using that. Just neatens those corners beautifully, doesn't yes, it? Yes, otherwise it, it does look a bit messy, doesn't it? There we go. So I've folded it over and then folded it up. And it's just tucked them all underneath. Now, I'm not going to bother with the top bit because that doesn't... Not quite so bad. And then we bring our um, front piece into play. And it's got a lovely texture to it, this. Uh, so it looks slightly aged, doesn't it? It looks kind yes. of vintage. Um, you know, linen, and, and also it doesn't crease as much as ordinary linen, I find. So oh, it's, no. um, I mean, I, I, I hate to say I'm not a fan of 100% linen because of that. Yes. I know that's part of it, you know, that that crease look proves yes. it is 100% linen. 
but I, I prefer the linen-like because I quite like the fact it doesn't crease as much, but you mm. still get that look. So I'm just going to match up my top points there and I'm just going to pin it on like so. Now, you know, what you could do is, you know, if you're a real cheat like me, is you could just get some of that quilter's tape, stick it on uh, where you're going to seam it, and then that will hold it instead yes. of pins. And that actually, or, that's, or again, do you know, I don't know that that's a, um, a cheat. I think that's quite a good <laughs> idea because, again, what you don't want to happen is for the pocket to skew a bit as you're sewing it. No. And then you end up with a slightly skewed pocket. Well, I front. recommend to tack this on. Sorry, Wendy. <laughs> but I do recommend <laughs> I know, I might, to tack this on. I might even on. have to do that. I yes. hate to do it, but I might even have to do that. But if you, if you do tack, I mean, the one thing I would say um, is use a different colour thread. That's so right. So it's easier to... to see and pull out i don't know if uh, our audience can hear but there's a rumble in the jungle here <laughs> oh right oh, it's okay because we're, we're hearing a rumbling um upstairs and i didn't want you to think it was my stomach <laughs> <laughs> so you can see how nice I that looks like that cookie, <laughs> you know that's starting to look like um you know a proper sort of pinafore apron dress isn't it and i've i've pinned that on and i would suggest tacking it around oh there is such a rumble isn't there? is that thunder outside no, no it's i think it's like a bowling alley or something <laughs> oh, so, so they've just opened one up that's uh, so anyway so you're tacking it out along the top and also around this bottom edge now um what I'm going to do now is, um, and you do the same for the back pockets as well. So you, you know, just put your little tailor's tacks in and then you can, now you could use the, sa the same, like this one, for example, I just use the same color thread as the background and you're nice and safe. But you might like to do a little bit of twin needle stitching in a contrast thread and it will give you a very different you know, a more jeansy look, which we all love, don't we? I mean, it's just so nice. So here's one I did before. And you can see that I've, let me turn it round. I've, I've tacked it on. Sorry, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> that, that terrible word, I know. No, something so, like this, I would agree, agree with you. You would fine, agree with yeah. me. Now I'm going to get my twin needle out, which I've probably lost. So it'll be somewhere in here. Here it is. Now, um, and I've got my, now you can put a twin needle on um, with a uh, walking foot, that's not a problem. Now, and there are all sorts of twin needles out there, they're different widths. Now this one I've got is a 4.0 and I find that's quite a nice width of um, twin, so it's so that the is. distance between the two yes. needles. So they go from about 1.6 up to I think 6. Yes. Um, you just have to make sure, depending on the machine you're using, that both needles will go through the throat plate and the foot. Um, if some are machines, so for instance, brother machines, the needle is defaulted to the left. So if you put a twin needle on, make sure you move the needle across to the right so that the needles are both going to go through the throat plate. Mm. It's just something to check. Turn the wheel by hand, you know, the balance wheel on the side to check. Yes, yes, don't so just put your foot down and go yes, for it. You need to just make sure that it's a, But the man in the shop where I bought it said um, that the four is, a little, you've got a little bit more room for error. Yes, so I, and I, also I think that, it's, it's that was of, music to my it ears. It is good for top stitching and hemming. Yes. Um, if you're using a twin needle for decorative stitch, I would use a smaller gap because obviously the yes. stitch is going sideways as well as forward. That's right. Um, but yeah, a four gap is great. Now, it's just like an ordinary needle. It's got a flat back to it. And then they're not, ex I don't think they're that expensive. But because you know, you can often just a machine will come with a twin cupboard, needle in it. You? Just you know, often oh, you get really? in, oh, right. in your That's kit, great. you get yes. a twin needle. But if not, you can buy them um, pretty much a, a really good sort of supplier. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you just insert them just like any normal needle. So you would just undo um, the little um, screw at the side, push it as far as it would go and tighten it up. I don't tend to tighten it up with a screwdriver or anything, just as it is. Now, um, we're going to need um, a second reel of thread. And you don't have to have a reel of thread. You can use, um, you can just wind off some onto a bobbin. And what I do at home is I stick my peg on the top. We've got, usually every machine's got a peg. It's got your second spindle. A spe second spindle. for. <laughs> <laughs> Thank the you. Technical term. Um, we couldn't find the peg for this no. one. 
<laughs> so um, what I'm going to try, and Wendy suggested, so I was panicking away like crazy, and she said, well, just pop it on the same, it doesn't work. the same um, <laughs> reel as the reel. So it's just there, there's two together. So we're going to try it, yeah. see if it works. Now, I imagine that, that it, you need it to be free, free moving, do yes. you, not static. So, um, and then I'm just going to thread it down exactly this. Now, some machines have two feeders, don't they? But this one just has the one. So yeah, you're just literally th threading it exactly the I same. I would actually thread both at the same time. Same time. time. Um, just so that you make sure they're both going through the tension discs, etc. Yes, but I'm going to pull them together yeah. and then that should correct it. So all the way down and then you've got two little hooks above the needle. So I'm going to put one in one side and one on the other. If you haven't, because some machines don't have two hooks above the needle, put one thread behind one hook and leave the other thread without putting it behind the hook. Mm -hmm. And that stops them tangling up. That's good advice. And this is one time I'm afraid you cannot use your auto you needle threader. You can't use the order. So a little bit of a tip is for threading, chop your thread with really good quality scissors so they've got a good slice and at an angle so you've got a slight point to your thread do you tell people to do that yes, yes. and also um, if you can't see the eye of the needle that clearly if you put a little bit of white paper behind Ooh. you can really see the eye of the needle I clearly. like that yes well done Very I love good. twin needle sewing it's one of my favorite things and I like doing it with decorative stitches oh, and you just have to make stitches, sure yeah. as I say use a use a needle that's got a, a smaller gap between them so 1.6 or 2 meter 2 meter gap and um, and then check your decorative stitch it mustn't be more than five millimeters wide right. so if it is reduce the stitch width and I always go through the whole sequence using the balance wheel on the side by hand just to make sure it doesn't hit the foot or the throat plate right so I'm in now I've threaded up my two needles so very exciting and um, I'm just going to do a little bit of test stitching first, just to check everything's working all right. And I just wanted to show you a little bit about, you know, sewing the pocket. So I'm just going to do a few tentative stitches and everything looks all right. And of course you can um, increase your stitch length. So if you want your top stitching to be a little bit more exaggerated, you know, I go up to 2.8, but you say 3, you go yes. up to, yes, and Only because on my three. machines it's 2.5 or 3, I don't have a 2.8 option. Oh, I see, option. right, yes. So it does depend on your machine. So I don't know whether the camera can see that, but look how lovely and neat and just that is so satisfying, isn't it? Yes, two perfectly <laughs> parallel rows. I mean, for a long time I used to try and emulate that double line of stitching just manually, and I got away with it, you know, but now I have uh, do this and um, no, this is all I do now. So now the, the one thing I wanted to point out is the fact that it's you can't go around corners. No. So what do you do? So basically what I do is, I mean, you might have a different way of doing this, is I take it off at the corner, leave a bit of an end, and then just start again, drop the needle down at the right place. So pick up where I left off and just, you know, just have to maneuver the stitching in the right place. You might have to sort of edge it over and then carry on with a straight stitch. That's getting noisier. It's noisier. really noisy. Oh, I'm so hungry. So <laughs> here we are. We've got the corner there. Now, uh, one little tip that I often uh, tell people to do, and of course, I, oh yes, I have got it here, is if you've got a spent machine needle, one that's got, um, you know, that's no good anymore, use it as a little unpick because you've got that bit at the top to, ha to hold on to and it's really easy to move. Do you ever use one of these? No, I don't. Oh, it's so good. It just gives you a nice lumpy bit at the end to hold on to. And then you can just unpick. So you can either just thread those ends through, pull them through from the other side. But if you want to have two that are very much going um, round a corner, just unpick the ones in between. So you just pull, it's only literally two stitches like that. So it's better to use that. I mean, I would have used a pin, but it, this is this is better, as you say. This is got so the, much better because you've got because if you use your quick unpick, you could inadvertently cut the threads. That's at the same right. Time, couldn't you? That's you right. Don't want to do you need those thread tails? Yes, you don't want to. So you need those thread ends. So you'll just look. Can you see? I'm just undoing one, and then that's all you d you have to. Now you could have that cross hatching business going on, and that's that looks great too. 
but I thought how nice it looks if you just have those stitching going all the way around. So I've undone those stitches and then you pop them over, pull those threads, you get the two loops on the back and then you pull them through. Oh, hang on, haven't done those ones yet. Um, sometimes you can um, inadvertently sew your ends in. Now if that happens, just um, get a Where's my little pussycat? Here he is. Do you like my little pussycat? <laughs> so sweet, isn't he? A needle with a nice large eye. I've got my favourite one. And just stick it into where the threads are coming out of. Thread both um, threads through of the large eye because that makes it much easier to thread. So I've wrapped the thread around the top of the needle, pulled it, pressed it, so you get a sort of like a, a nice good fold shove that through the eye of the needle and then pull it through look at that i think that's lovely isn't, isn't that yeah that's get, really good i don't know if you can see that on the camera but anyway and then of course you've got your loose ends on the back and then you can just tie those together now remember you're only really doing this on the two bottom corners of the yeah. so it's not you know it might seem quite long-winded but you only got two of them to do yes yeah. and, and on just, the back it just makes it finish it, it just finishes finishing. off really nicely uh, we are it? we are down to about five minutes left Fiona, have i got time so for my bag uh, very very i've literally got five minutes left so oh, very very good. quickly God, where's the time? I, know, gone? I know i always used to, i used to say this too when i was demonstrating it's just like I, I've got so much There's more to tell you. There's <laughs> some gremlins going on here. <laughs> anyway, so basically what you do is you stitch your double lines on there, but you can just equally do a single line if you don't want to do twin stitching on the Mildred. You know, you don't have to, but it is quite nice to get that double stitching going on. Right, so I'm going to move on now to my bag because I just wanted to word quickly about that. Uh, you can see I've got all my purse and things in it because this is a bag I use every day. So if you think, oh, you know, that's not a very practical bag, believe me, it really is. If you're, if you're a cyclist like me, you get it on your back and your hands free. It's really great. Mm. Um, now, this one, I have got a different fabric for the lining, inside lining, but you can chop and change if you want because this one has got a band of the outer fabric at the top of the lining. But this one, it's got all the lining inside that, that goes into the flap. Now, if you would rather do the shoulder bag like this, you can. It's just up to you what you want to do. Um, but um, I just thought I'd mention that. And also the bag foam. We've talked about that, haven't we? Now, um, where's my samples that I've done? Didn't we do? Here so we whilst, go. whilst uh, Fiona's looking, let's just have a recap quickly of the patterns we've got. So we've got the pattern here, which is the Brompton shoulder bag or backpack. Uh, so you've got both shoulder bag and the backpack in here. Um, full instructions, 100% uh, size templates, and it has got a little bit of the hardware. It has the um, D rings and the sliders. And we've got two fabric ways. We've got one, which is corduroy. As you can see, this is this lovely sort of um, golden colour one, teamed with a blue cotton lining. The, this, this is a bundle which does come with the pattern, so it all comes together. And then the other colourway, so again, the bundle all comes together. So as I say, you've got the, the little bit of the hardware and you haven't got the buckle because that's your choice. Um, but you've got the pattern with the instructions, with the 100% full size templates, and again, two half meters of fabric so both of them have two half meters the lining and this one is a sort of rust colored and again it's corduroy so it's really lovely so beautiful packs there that you can make either of these bags from so the fabric is for either so if you want to make both bags then you would need to get some more fabric to do the second version I mean, the denim just creates a very different look, doesn't it? It does, much it and also, like doesn't that tweed, though? That tweed looks beautiful. Yeah, this is like a nice British wool tweed. It's, you know, it's got that heritage look, hasn't it? Because it's, you know, very sort of... And also men really like this pattern as well. Yeah, men yeah, make they it. Could. It's, it is almost like a messenger bag, mm. isn't it? So it's a nice, simple bag. You can, of course, buy the pattern on its own as well. Mm. So if you don't want to have it with the fabric, so if you've already got your fabric, mm 
or you fancy doing it between yes. your denim, it does come with This that. fabric is gorgeous, but it has got stretch to it. So I would suggest that you interface or put some um, wadding uh, on the inside of the strap just to give it a little bit of strength or even use a cotton um, webbing. You know, to yes, but you know, if you've, if you've just interfaced it, it's fine, and you you can stitch it as well, and that will secure it even more. We're um, down to four minutes, three. right? So, well, I might just talk through through it. So, when I was cutting the flap out, because I thought I'm just going to focus on the flap now, because we did the rest of the bag well, not all of it, but some of it on the other show. Uh, I really fussy cut it to my flap because this is the bit that you're really seeing. Uh, I think if you showed them the other one, you'd see. So because it's got a floral pattern, not sure I did it on that one, did I? But uh, I thought, well, just why don't you just make sure that you really get the best part of the print on the flap? I don't, I don't think I thought about that then. Anyway, and then <laughs> when I so saw do it, what I'm saying not what I do. <laughs> <laughs> so then when I saw it, I thought, if you were a machine embroiderer, maybe you might like to actually pick out those the flower on there and just by outlining it maybe with the same color as the background yeah. just so that you get a shadowing going on. Especially if you've got um, interfacing behind so it gives it a little bit of that's right almost padding doesn't it. Now um, if you are because I just thought oh, what a nice idea to quilt it you know I didn't do that with you I just sort of literally put the interfacing on the back and just went for it and it has got bag foam in the, in the main part you don't need the bag foam for the flap particularly it's just the interfacing. And then I thought, oh, well, would it be nice to, to quilt it as well? Because I know we've got a lot of quilters here today. Uh, so what I did is I've popped a little bit of wadding on the back of the flaps. This is the, the flap is just a square and I've just put a bit of wadding on the back. Now I have hand tacked all around because I've my glue, I ran out and it was locked down so I couldn't get any more. So, um, but if you've got some spray glue, spray your, you know, just thin wadding. You don't need anything too thick on the back of your flat piece. And uh, if you don't have any glue, I've just literally hand tacked a big star, you know, north, south, east, west. And then you could even just machine tack around the edge, but I'm just going to leave that for now. And then, you know, um, now I've got a uh, quilter's arm that you could use for this, which um, is somewhere. Um, but so you could use your quilter's arm to do, uh, so what I'm going to just do is just sort of like some diagonal stripes. But because this is a square, it's very easy just to um, do some lines going across. And if you've got your quilter's ruler, Maybe you could just do them two inches apart. So now you could mark them out if you wanted to with um, a pen. But to be quite honest, I think it wouldn't show up on this fabric. It's just too dark. So um, I thought we'll just put some quilt, some masking tape or if you've got some quilters tape of some sort and then that you can really see that really well. So I'm just going to do two lines okay. quickly. So again, you've got your walking foot on. So we've got, I've got two my minutes walking left foot to on. very quickly do this. Now, I think you probably would be all right without a walking foot, but as I said, it does. Oh, and I've got my twin needle on as well. So I'm just going to quickly get that off. OK, so while uh, Fiona's doing that, let's have a quick review of the patterns that we've got. Um, we're going to start with Mildred again. Let me just move these out of the way. So this one is extremely popular. We've had this one on before. This is the one that Fiona's actually wearing and she's made her sort of kangaroo pocket on the front there. Um, showed you some tips on how to do that. That's brilliant. Size is eight to 22. So a really good size range in there, suitable for beginners. And you can do it as she has done here, make, wearing it with a long sleeve t-shirt. You could wear it with a polo neck shirt. You could wear it with a little crop top if you're young and and fun and brave enough. Um, in the pattern you've got everything that you need, you've got the full instructions, illustrated instructions, so very easy to follow, as well as your fabric layout, as well as your full size pattern pieces on good quality paper, all the detail on the back. That's the same with all the patterns. So that's Mildred. Let's go for, oh Fiona's stitching, let's have a quick look Fiona, what you're doing? So I'm just using my masking tape as a guide and I'm literally banking my needle up to the edge of the tape. I've lengthened my stitch a little bit and 
I've now I've, I've got white in there, so it's going to be very obvious. But you, if you don't want it quite as obvious, your lines of stitching, you could just use the background colour, just so that you'll get that that uh, shadowing look. And you know, the more lines you do, the more you'll get that lovely quilted look, which will give you a nice sort of even more of a protective flap, just a little bit more detail. Um, going on with, um, you know, what is, uh, you know, sort of plain piece of fabric really, isn't it? It is, and I think it, it gives it, it's sort of added strength and support to the fabric as well. Yeah. But it just gives it that extra finish, I think. It really does. That's right. So I'm just going to do two lines because um, I just want to talk to you about, I don't know if I've got time. Unfortunately, I think we're going to be out because I need to show you the other patterns. Uh, so let's have a quick look at Ursula, which is the Coatigan. And this is the one that we had that beautiful boiled wool coating for. And in fact, Fiona modelled the shorter hack that she had done. The instructions for the hack are on her So Girl blog. So this is Ursula, again, 8 to 20. It comes in the two lengths, short jacket or the long coat. Um, it's intermediate. It has got buttons, buttonholes and things, but don't be put off. The instructions are fully inclusive. You know exactly what you've got to do. And the next one is our Betty. Um, <laughs> so this is a Betty dress. So this is uh, 8 to 22. And again, it's intermediate. So this is gone. It's got buttonholes. You don't have to do the buttons all the way down the front. You can actually do the buttons down to the halfway. There's a, a, a hack to do that. Um, all the information on the back as before, so it's really nice and simple. Um, and then just quickly, the handbag, which is what Fiona's been working on just now. So Fiona, we just I just want to come back to you to say thank you so much. It's been really good fun. <laughs> She's caught me on the gin and tonic here. She's got you on the gin. <laughs> it is only water. I can't I wait. It is only water. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Have a very, very happy Christmas, everybody, and keep safe, please. That's the main thing. And a big hello to my mum and dad who are at home at the moment, and also my mother-in-law. Hello, Pauline, and my, my daughter as well. Yes, you mustn't forget yes. her. Yes. So thank you for joining us for this one. Uh, don't forget, everything's on the website. You can um, go and have a look. You can pre-order. You can post-order. Um, so please have a look. But don't go away, because coming up next is our lovely Kerry. And who's going to make um, another project or look at another project and this is part of it here so come back in just a few minutes if you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com alternatively you can message us on our official Facebook page Christmas is going to be a little bit different this year, but Sewing Street will be here to keep you company from 8am to 12pm on Christmas Day. Help me, John Scott, spread some festive cheer by sending in your Christmas messages for us to play on air on Christmas Day. Whether it's a message to your fellow Sewing Street fans or to a loved one, a video message or text, we want to hear from you. Send your videos, photos and messages to studio at sewingstreet.com by Tuesday the 22nd of December to be included and be a part of Sewing Street's Christmas Day celebrations. Join me, Vicky Carroll, live from 8am on Friday the 18th of December for a very special show. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw and as a professional sewer, I really know how important it is to use a high quality thread. Well, you think about it. You spend a lot of money on your sewing machine, you'll spend a lot of money on fabric and you'll spend a lot of time sewing. So why let your thread let you down? I know a lot of our designers and customers prefer to use Aurifil thread. Now this is a family business, it was established in 1983 and they're based just outside Milan in Italy. They produce superior quality threads for domestic and professional sewers alike and they've achieved worldwide success with quilters, sewers, embroiderers and textile artists who all appreciate the versatility and the strength of these threads. 
It's all made from Egyptian cotton, which is grown just at the side of the River Nile, and Aurifil only use the long staple threads, which gives their thread that strength. Each one of these threads goes through 15 steps before it even gets onto a spool and then comes to you to use in your sewing projects. Now at Sewing Street, we've collaborated with Aurifil and we've brought you two collections of threads. So we have the Quilters collection and these are exclusive to Sewing Street. We've done a lot of research with Quilters and these are the colours that you prefer to use. So we've put a whole collection together for you. The second collection is the Essential Collection. So this is for the homemakers, for the bag makers, for the craft sewers, for the dressmakers. And again, these have been proven to be the most popular colours that you're going to use. So if you want your projects to last longer and your seams to be stronger, invest in some quality thread. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Christmas is going to be a little bit different this year, but Sewing Street will be here to keep you company from 8am to 12pm on Christmas Day. Help me, John Scott, spread some festive cheer by sending in your Christmas messages for us to play on air on Christmas Day. Whether it's a message to your fellow Sewing Street fans or to a loved one, a video message or text, we want to hear from you. Send your videos, photos and messages to studio at sewingstreet.com by Tuesday the 22nd of December to be included and be a part of Sewing Street's Christmas Day celebrations. Hi, welcome back. This is the last hour of the day. Um, and I'm Wendy Gardner and I'm joined here by Kerry from Love Living, living in Loveliness. I was going to say Loving in Liveliness, but I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> it is my sort of last hour of the day <laughs> so um, yeah so Kerry's going to join me and we've got two different we've got four, uh, four kits but two different sort of project sets um, so I'm going to start with the first one this is the fabulous this is this is this is set to try me fabulously fast fat quarter fun and this is from issue seven so if you've been watching earlier, um, I explained, having learnt today, that the issues are basically, if you, if you think of it as like a magazine, e issue one was the first and it goes on through. So issue seven, you have built up some skills already, um, but the, the, the things are still ready to sew, they're still easy to sew. And in this particular one that we've got here, I've got two colourway fabrics, but I want to show you the products that you're going to make. So what you have here is the instruction sheet and on the instruction sheet, you have the full instructions in lovely Technicolor look with clear pictures to show how to make each of the projects that are involved. So this one is, um, it's, it's really inclusive and you also have the full size tem templates so you can make everything easily. Um, but let's look at what you can make. So I, this is the, every, every single pack has three projects in it, but this is almost a four because what you get is four fat quarters, which we're going to look at in a minute. But this one here is you've got a little scrap bag which dangles from a, a nice sort of weighted bag. So you've got sand in here, so you could use sand or lentil or whatever. A um, bit of Velcro on the top there because the pin cushion, which goes on top, which has got Velcro on the bottom, that sits there and when you buy your sewing machine, scraps into the scrap bag, pins into the pincushion. But if you need to take the pincushion away because you're working at the dress form or somewhere else, you can peel off the pincushion and take it with you. And again, it's filled with sand. Is it just sand in there, Kerry? They're, they're walnut shells. Yeah. Walnut shells. Oh, okay, walnut shells. Because um, that's good to help sharpen your needles. Um, the next item you have is this little needle case and it's got a bit of a reverse applique. So this is how we're saying about the techniques sort of slightly increasing in complexity. So you're learning new techniques. Bit of reverse applique there, undo the ribbon and there you have your needle case. So that's really nifty. 
And then you have this little scissor keep pincushion. Scissors, of course, don't come with it. They're your own scissors, but it's really sweet. Little, got a little pocket there. You could put a quick, in, quick unpick in there as well. But let's look. That, that's the kit. Let's look at the fabrics that you get. All of, those, all of those items can be made out of your bundle here, which I'm just going to open up. I just, I just love, this is, this is a treat for me, opening my little pan, pan. This is, it's like an early Christmas present. So, as I said, you get the, I'm just going to move that one out of the way. Here we are, look, you get the pattern as we've just looked at, but on this one you get four fat quarters. And Kerry has carefully chosen these four fat quarters all to go together. Which one you use for which make is entirely up to you. Um, but there are four, and I can feel and also see because of the print on one of these. These are Liberty. You can feel that you can feel the quality and the patterns. They just look so Beautiful. Liberty. They really do. So all of these. Now the idea of these. These are the. I've got to read this out. Fabulously fast backwater fun. These are aimed at using all of the fabric. So you can make all of those projects I've just shown you from all four of these pieces. But it pretty much will use all of that fabric. You will sometimes need to add a few other bits to that. You might need to add interfacing. Um, obviously, you're going to need walnut shells or sand or lentils or stuffing or whatever you're going to use in there. But what you need is clearly put on the back of the pattern so you know what you're going to need. So that is colourway one. Let's quickly go on to the next colourway. I'm going to keep, ooh, keep that together. And let's look at this one. Again, these are Liberty Fabrics. So open this out. Oh, that's the same. I forgot is the it the same? One. Oh, there's a slight difference. There is a slight difference. Hold on. Yes, there is. So this time, I've got that, that piece again. And this time I've got a pale pink. And this, we've seen this I one on another project, didn't we? I think that's the same kit. I think that's it's slightly different. There's, there's one different fabric in here. I'm, I think, wor I I'm think working I've got with those fabrics. All oh, right, so, yeah. okay, so um, ignore this one. Um, <laughs> the other one is the one that Kerry's going to be working with. So, in fact, that, hey, that segues very nicely <laughs> into, <laughs> shall we come over well, to Kerry <laughs> to, see, <laughs> to see what you're going to be doing? Because you're going to be doing one of these. Which one are you doing out of this? Um, this particular pattern... Um, oh, you're not going to make anything out we're making of this the one. one from th we're making the one from the book. I've probably got the other kit here tucked at the side. Okay, so, so we'll find that all one. right, before you go on to yours, then let's have a look at this other kit. So that's that's one of the um, the different projects. So you can get it in the two different colourways. Um, this is the other one. This is the one that Kerry's going to demo. This one previously sold out. Uh, it's, it's a lovely little set here. You've got a book cover which you've got, you can put your pen in, so a little pen pocket there. So it's a really nice, oh, I won't go through it, it's probably got, got all my secrets in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> How much is it worth to keep me, you know, keep me quiet? So I think it's probably my to-do <laughs> list. If you want to do any of those to-dos, let me know. <laughs> so it's a really lovely book cover here, look. Um, I like this, it's like, excuse me, <coughs> a little coin purse or you could put like, if you've got like a gift card to give somebody, yeah. you know, if, if somebody just wants money, or a gift card, or a voucher, or something like that. Then it's the purse. Then this is the purse. You know, it's better than just putting it in an envelope, isn't it? So you make this little purse. It's ever so sweet. It's just like a little, little four corners, and then it's got a little popper on it just to hold it closed. So that's a really nice, sweet little project. And then this is the one you're going to demo. So this one is using quite a few techniques here. We've got binding around the edges. Uh, we've got a zip. It's got sewing with vinyl. So. If I put, oh no, it is up that way, isn't it? If I put my hand in here, you can see there's vinyl. So you can see what's in yeah. there. So it could be pencils, it could be makeup, it could be your sewing bits and pieces. I realise I've got for everything. Absolutely, I realise I've got so many things and so many things with pockets, yes. and I forget the, which things are in which pockets. So I thought, let's play with vinyl this yes, time. So well, I, can I think see it's good. So it's another sewing technique, sewing with yeah. vinyl. So that's another thing. But I'd like, you know, you're a bit like me, aren't you? You can't, you can't do plain. No. So rather than just have plain vinyl. Kerry's given us some sparkly vinyl. Can you see that? It's got a real sort of sparkle to it. It's really pretty, uh, which I love. So 
that's the projects we're going to make. These are the two colourways. Again, four fat quarters, because this, this is from issue six. That's it. I'm getting there. We're I'm getting, getting there. about all this. So you do get your piece of vinyl, and you also get the four fat quarters. So look at these. These are beautiful. So you've got this lovely blue, and I just love, again, the way you've coordinated these so they all go together. A beautiful print, and then... A lovely sort of rusty, rusty red colour there, print. All liberty again. All liberty. All liberty again, because you can just, you can just fill, you can, you fill you that can, fabric you can and you feel, can fill. You can certainly feel yes. the difference. And I think in that particular bundle, the lemon, like we talked about last week, is just really nice to give that project a pop, isn't it? It is so exactly, and it goes with any of the colours. Yeah. So you can add that yellow. I'd be inclined to use that particular fabric for the binding. Yes. The yellow. Yes, I've seen you. Yeah, that's a different one, but you've used yellow on that one, haven't you? So don't forget, it also comes with the pattern. And then let's quickly look at the other colourway. I'm just going to pop that to one side so as I can bring that in, make sure my head's not full. It's a good thing I coloured my hair this week, isn't it? Because <laughs> I keep putting my head down and you're not seeing the grey. Not, not that I'm grey, of course. No grey, no greys. <laughs> <laughs> not today, anyway. <laughs> so this is the other colourway. So again, you do get the piece of um, the, the... The glittery vinyl. <laughs> I've just gone out. I wanted to call it violin. I think no, it's not violin. <laughs> no, the not today. Literally vinyl. Not um, and then you've got these lovely fabrics. So these are beautiful colours. These are really spring-like. These aren't are they? Riley Blake fabrics. These, so these are Riley Blake. So again, another really well-known fabric producer. Um, so four and fat quarters. These four are fat, fat quarters. quarters. And what's lovely about this collection is earlier in the year, I was really excited to hear these were back in stock because we had lots of patterns. Um, oh, certainly lots of kits with these patterns in earlier in the year. So if you've got those patterns, if you've got those fabrics in your collections, then these will complement perhaps the projects you've made. Oh, that's, that's from a lovely idea. From the previous idea. issues yes. as well. So I really do love this particular um, design, the flower. I, I love them. Blake. I love these flowers. They're so fresh, aren't they? Yeah. Let me open one of them up to have a quick look before you get on with your demo. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And that's a new print into the kits because previously we've had the corals and the, the sort of minty greens, if you like. So the plainer, you know, with a white background, that is a new one into the kits. I think, but kits. it makes the colours really pop out, yeah. doesn't it? This yeah. actually is the most popular set that we've yeah. got today. So, yes, it's, it's amazing. I think the colours are just superb. I, I was delighted to find ordered. out it was back in stock because I do love working with this particular project. And yes. it looks lovely across all projects. I have got a few dresses yes. in these fabrics yes, as well. <laughs> And I stopped saying that because I've been saying that all morning that, you know, I look at it as dressmaking, yeah. but I'm kind of like, no, I'm not thinking But when your fabric arrives, I think I tend to wait for the, fa I choose the fabrics because I love them. And then when they arrive, I decide what the patterns are going to be. But I do always have to decide which one should we have, <laughs> <laughs> which one should we have for a dress? I think, I mean, that would make such a lovely summer yeah. dress. Yeah, it really definitely. would. Beautiful. Some, right. some tea parties would be lovely. So this is what you get in this one. You get these four beautiful <laughs> colours with the vinyl with the pattern so Kerry over to you so let's have a demo of, of sewing with vi vinyl what I really like is when you open the pattern your voice gets even more excited you're a bit like <laughs> me I get re really oh, squeaky I just love it. and excited I, really do. I, I honestly I am in seventh heaven I really am the, the trouble is when I come here I see all of the other fabrics and I don't know whether to get on with a project or uh, or to have a little <laughs> nosy at the other fabrics available so this is again um as Wendy said as you work through the projects then the the complexity of the projects increases, so you're learning new tips. I particularly love, and I have actually since working with a vinyl in this collection, introduced this into other patterns like you saw last week with the um, inside bag. The recommendation that I would make if you're working with vinyl is to use a leather needle on there, um, just so it's got a little bit more strength onto that. But this is a nice, again, nice easy project, nice fast project. And what's really nice about this particular project is you have an opportunity. You could, of course, work with just one of the fabrics and make it out of just one of the fabrics. But I really like incorporate. I can never decide, actually, which is my favourite. From your options, I would definitely say the fa fabric to feature the most is the one that you'll see on the inside of that vinyl bag. Mm. And then we've got the zip installation in there. I did think one. this would go quite nice with the, the dress that I've got. So what I've done, and I get lots of messages asking me because there's, there's lots of pieces and sometimes small pieces in the patterns. You can, as I recommend in step one of the pattern, to transfer your letters onto the patterns or just keep your paper pattern 
with it and just clip them together so you know you're not losing those uh, pieces amongst your amongst your sewing collections I, I think it's a really I mean, it's something I always do keep the pattern pieces with yeah. it clip or if you're going to pin just in the seam allowance yeah because if you leave it for any length of time, pins can rust. One but of the layers, especially on the little pieces where you could the, forget which ones which. Yeah, and yeah. I think I mean we haven't got zip tabs in this, but certainly when you've got zip tabs or little hexes like you've got with a book cover, um, what I did see, which I thought was great, and I'm sure there's lots of people that do this. I've never done this. I've probably had thoughts of doing it after it was recommended, but laminating the paper and just cutting a little extra around it. So as you say, pinning into the, mm -hmm. pinning into the corner is a great idea. So I've d chosen the fabrics to work with. This is the fabric that'll feature on the back of the project. And then what we're going to do with the wrong side of that fabric facing towards us, just to secure the fabrics together, I'm simply going to use, again, just a little bit of 505, just to hold those together. You could skip this step if you wanted to. And just line those up so all those raw edges are marrying up there and again a little bit more 505 only a little to place that top panel onto there and we can pop this to one side while we insert that zip and to make the zip nice and easy so we're going to start on the top section so this will be I mean, if you're a really visual person, then it's easy to visualise where they'll go. But what I tend to say is put your pieces where they're going to feature on the project. So what we'll do, first of all, is to just work on the bottom part. And what we're going to do is to encase the raw edges there of that vinyl. I really do like the glittery vinyl as well. You could use a plane if you wanted you to. Could. You but could. But I do like the glittery vinyl. If you're making it for a chap, for something for them like a you know a then they might bag want or something they yeah. might not want they clear, might want so. clear then so with the wrong side of the fabric facing up towards you we're simply going to fold that in half aligning that top longest raw edge and give that a press and then open this up and those two raw edges there will meet in the center fold i think this would be a nice project actually for running did you say it's a good idea actually I'm just thinking if you could make you your know, earphones and yeah, you could use it for something. I didn't say that, but that is. Really oh, did you not? Idea. No, I said if you're making it for a chap, if he, you know, like a grooming bag or something. Oh, you I know thought when you said a running and bag. And I'm just thinking the men nowadays, you know, modern man, he will have his moisturizer. Yes. And uh, or beard oil. Yeah, <laughs> beard, beard oil. oil yeah. I thought. Um, but the beard you know, trimming kits as well. They seem <laughs> yes. to come with lots of little pieces. So a bag to put that in when they're travelling um, could be quite good, but maybe not with glitzy. Maybe you, you do more manly. Unless Unless they like a little bit of glitter. <laughs> My husband has no choice, there's always glitter in our car. <laughs> always a little bit of glitter and sequins and, yeah. and beads at the bottom of the footwell. There it we is, go. This is great. So just repeating that onto the bottom. Okay, so you've done a bottom and a top. A bottom and a top, that's it. And just allow those a few moments to cool down before we attach that to the vinyl. Actually, going back to glitter, my husband, I mentioned last week, was in the army and I used to make a lot of cards and he did go in once and I'd, his, his uniform was hung up in the room and I must have, you know, when you put your things down and the glitter goes glitter everywhere. Goes everywhere and it, it was all on, all on the back of his jacket. <laughs> so when he, and he was on parade, so we'd put it in that room so nothing went on and when he was on parade, he was back really late and I said, why are you so late? He said, apparently I had glitter on my shoulder. Did he get into trouble? He got into a lot of trouble. Dear. A lot of trouble. But at least he was sparkly. <laughs> <laughs> that was what I said to him at the time. So butting the raw... I would have been happy to have sparkle on my coat. Butting the raw edge of the vinyl to that centre fold. Now that's cooled down. And just popping clips onto there to secure This is a perfect that. use for clips, isn't it? Rather Absolutely. Than to put pins yeah. through the vinyl. And, and because I've been doing lots of projects with the vinyl, you, of course we don't want to pierce that at yes, all. Yes, because once pierced, it's pierced. It's not like a fabric yeah. which will close up again. The whole will remain whole. Absolutely. So for this particular part, you can work with a stitch of your choice. I think if you have a little look on mine, I've probably as always worked with that zigzag stitch. So I'm going to stick with that. And we're simply going to rest the sewing machine foot along this edge that's closer to the vinyl and sew along the full length on both sides just to secure that into place. So th this, just to, as uh, you're doing that, just to reiterate, this is the... Um, fabulous fast 
fat quarter fun and this is on issue six and this is one of the colorways that you can buy so this is this colorway here and these are the three projects that you can make from it so you have a book cover with a little pen holder this i love this little this is a really very quick little project to make a little bag for your gift tokens your cash uh, vouchers rather than just give them to them an envelope just make a little purse like that and it could even be a little coin purse and the project that Kerry is making, which is this bag with a vinyl fronted pocket. So you're learning the zip insertion technique as well as uh, sewing with vinyl. And you said that you'd use a, you'd use a, a leather needle. Leather needle. Yeah. Even though you're sewing through fabric as well, you're still yeah. using a leather needle to help pierce through because the vinyl, of course, has not, it's not got any weave to it at all. So it's um, a good way of doing that. So that's one colorway. Um, let's quickly look at the other colourway. Here we have the second choice of colourway. So that was sort of nice pastel in pink. But here, again, you get the pattern. Um, and don't forget the template is full size, no grading up or anything. You get the piece of glitzy vinyl. Love that. And the four different fat quarters. And all three of those projects can be made from these four fat quarters, and they do pretty much use all of the fabric. Pretty That's much the plan all of them, that yeah. you, you pretty much use up all of the fabric. You might have the tiniest bit left over for things like self um, self covered buttons, that sort of thing. So that is what you've got. So you've stitched those two pieces. So I've simply just sewn across along the bottom using that zigzag stitch to secure the vinyl into place. The next thing we're going to do is to just have a little look at the zip here. And so we don't transfer any of the glue onto the work area. Nice and easy what we're going to do. Make sure the first piece of fabric that you're working with is pattern facing up towards you. And then we're going to insert this zip. So just using a little bit of sew line glue pen just to secure the fabric into place. Those, just to say, those are on the website if you want. They are so, they so are useful. They are worth their these. weight in Absolutely. gold. It's like a pen, isn't it? It is. It's like a pen. And, you, you know, you just find, once you, once you start using one, you realise they're indispensable. Yeah. Until you've had one, you can't really believe it. But they are, if you want to couch down um, pretty ribbons or anything like that, yeah. you can just anchor them in place. And, in fact, as Fiona was doing earlier, you could have used it rather than the tape to sort of anchor the corners in. Yeah. Uh, so they're very, very useful. They're Sorry, definitely digressing. No, that they are. They're one of my favourite, favourite so collections to have them. So what I've done there. Down, so you? yeah. So let me just go back to that stage. So I've simply popped the glue along the top of the zip. Always check that your zip's working and open the zip to the centre point. Then fold this over so it's now resting on the right side of the fabric. And just run your finger across the top, and then to secure the lining part of the zip. We're just going to run a little more glue on the back of the zip there. My so that's problem on the same zip that, tape. That's on the same zip tape, yeah. yeah. And then with the this is going to be on the inside of the fabric. So if you wanted to save a little bit of fabric, you could use a plain fabric for this particular um, step from your collections if you wanted to. We're simply going to pop this and align that raw edge and secure that into place. And what I really like about working with a glue is if it's not quite right, you can just raise it mm. and um, return that. A, a little tip for you, just using a pin because you can't see that zip. To remind you to stop, we're simply going to pop two fingers ahead of that zip, which you'll feel through your fabric, and just push the pin through. So when we pop this onto the sewing machine in a moment, we're going to stop at that pin point and then close our zip to just tuck that out of the way. So just resting this onto the machine so have you put a zip foot on or you're just using I a have. regular so foot? I have. So I've to change the zipper foot over to, I've changed the foot over to a zipper foot and I'm going to return it back to a straight stitch now. And I'm working to the left side of that zipper foot. So the side of the zipper foot here is going to run along the side of the zip. So a zipper foot is usually one of the basic feet that come with your machine. And on most machines, it'll be the one with the single toe. So it's just got a single toe with a little indentation either side. So that's your zip foot. There we go. And then just raising that foot when we arrive at the pin, just removing that pin, just to remind us to stop. And that'll allow plenty of space so to close that So you've left the zip. needle down, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, the needle's inserted into the fabric. And then we're closing that zip. And then we can continue to sew across that fabric just there.
There we go. And now as we open this, this will expose that beautiful zip inside and showcase that fabric as well. Now you could absolutely finger press this if you wanted to, but I really like just running the iron across here to get that nice and crisp on there so you get a nice finish. So avoiding coming into contact with your zip and just giving that a little press. You could put a press cloth on if you, yeah. if you were worried about that. I so a press cloth means that you can press with a hot temperature on virtually anything, uh, particularly if you use 100% um, silk organza press cloth. I don't know if we have those on the website. Um, they are, they're lovely and you can see through them as well. So it's yeah. a really good press cloth. So the next thing we're going to do, I'm just going to move the zipper across. And because we've just got a couple of layers here, just pop a couple of those clips to keep those raw edges close together. Now, of course, this time you can see your zip. So again, we're just going to sew till we're about two finger spaces ahead of that zip and close the zip. So I've moved the zipper foot across and again, just lining this side, the right side of the zipper foot close to that zip. I have to say with a pressing cloth, I tend to use that um, quite a lot, but actually haven't wear using it for the zip, so that's a great, a great tip. So just stopping about two fingers ahead of that zip, leaving your needle inserted again, raising the presser foot and closing that zip so it's nice and tucked out of the way and just sewing along the full length of that zip. And again, you'll see how fast this project comes together. So just pop in something in between your workstation. So again, we're not getting that glue onto the, certainly not onto the pressing mat. You don't want to show anything, you don't want to glue onto it. Do you? It picks everything <laughs> up. It's every, all stuck there. Everything is yeah. yeah. <laughs> We'll find your finger out. Your, your it's it's so far, there. it's managing. I, I'm sure it'll be gone by the end of the day, but it's managing to stay intact. With, with Pritt Stick, you're very good if you've kept that going with Pritt Stick. <laughs> you could use the glue I was thought I was, at, um, I was teaching a class yesterday and then I came straight here and I didn't have any Pritt Stick with me, but the person I was teaching with, Jenny, said to me, I can lend you Pritt Stick. She lent me Pritt Stick and a skewer to manage to keep the glue you've underneath you've it. You've got a lot of patience. And then this morning I had to do it all again. I obviously <laughs> showered it, washed it all off. And so the next thing that we're going to do just to pop this onto the top now again is just running a little glue along that zip and resting the fabric on top and giving that a little while to stick together. I've got um, a teenage daughter which means that she watches a lot of these how to do videos and I, I had my nails done before lockdown actually this was and it broke and I was really upset and she taught me how to repair your nail with a tea bag. With a tea bag? With a tea bag. So you, you just simply cut a little bit of tea bag, layer it over the top and put clear nail polish over it and it secures your nail into place. Wow. I, I, she was like, we'll do it with a tea bag, Mum. But it worked, it certainly that, worked. That's a bit, so not, not a used tea bag. No, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I, was, I was immediately thinking that gonna, you're going to have a brown. <laughs> gonna have a brown. Okay. No, it was definitely a new tea bag. <laughs> How did somebody discover that? I have no idea. You know, when were they sitting there with a broken nail thinking, do you know what? I'll try a tea bag. <laughs> people, people are very clever, aren't they? Yeah. So what we've done here is simply, you will see, of course, and that's going to be on the inside, just resting that on, gluing that into position. You could clip this if you wanted to, to secure it into place, but I'm not going to worry about doing that. And again, we're simply just going to sew along the full length and that will secure the zip into place. So actually, if you don't have that um, glue pen, and you can't wait to get it because you can order it from the website. You could use pins, you know, and, and the you fabric's hand, there. You can hand tack yeah. uh, if you have to. But you, you, can you can't that. use a tea bag. <laughs> but you can't use a tea bag. <laughs> You're going to try that now, aren't you? I will. Yeah, I have to try that. It was that. very good, very clever. I have to say, it rescued my nails anyway. I I um, cut through my nail, and again, fortunately, I had. To, and I say shellac, and it's not. It's a gel gel nail varnish. Um, and I used a rotary cutter inaccurately and I cut through my finger and my nail. Um, and it was glued together basically by super glue. Yeah, I've, I've used super glue. See, that would be my solution, super glue. Yeah, I didn't do that. I went to the hospital because I had to have it stitched, but my finger stitched. But the, the yeah, she just said, oh, super glue's fine. Gosh. 
So there you have your front panel. Yep. Now, in the pattern, this isn't on there, but you could certainly, if you enjoy a little free motion or if you wanted to do some straight line quilting on there, you could absolutely quilt the back of this panel. But now it's as easy as just popping that into place, popping your clips on and sewing around your outer edge. This is finished with the binding, but again, you can see this really useful, very pretty, great way to showcase your fabrics. Project has come together very fast. I just love the way your projects come together so fast. Uh, when you cut the binding, um, obviously, again, this comes out of the... These come out of your fat uh, quarters. Out of your fat quarters, doesn't it? Do you cut the binding on the bias? I haven't for these particular patterns, okay. no. And really, it's to get the most out of there. Of course, if, you're, if you prefer to cut your binding on the bias from... Um, maybe you've got another fat quarter. Yeah, because it takes... It's not so much it takes up more, but it takes up more space, doesn't yeah, it? So, yeah, and uh, it certainly takes up more space, especially when we're getting the most from our fat quarters. Yeah. And, I mean, you could certainly use the fourth fabric in here to bind this. I really like incorporating all of the fabrics, or you could use a plain fabric. Yes. But to make that a little easier, um, when you're popping your binding on, all we're going to do is to just sew around all four edges to secure that project together. So are you, um, are you increasing your stitch length? I'm going to increase the stitch length and just change the foot. There we go. Just change it back now to take that zipper foot off. So this is one, just while um, Kerry starts doing that, this is one of the three items that is in this particular bundle. Um, so this is the really nifty um, bag for anything. Anything you like. It can be your cosmetic, your sewing kit. Uh, your it running be your, kit. It could be <laughs> your running kit. It could be your nail, your nail kit. You could have your nail varnishes and all sorts in there. It's up to you what you put in there. So that's one of the projects. Um, the second one is this very small, uh, really handy little uh, poppered purse. And it's ever so simple. You can see quite, if I, I can't unpick it, obviously it's been stitched together. But if you opened it up, it would sort of be a square. Um, so it's really nice and simple but if you're going to give gift vouchers money or um, any voucher at all you could pop it in here rather than just in an envelope so it just makes it a little bit more special um, of course you could use it just as a little coin purse keep your parking coins in there and one of the ladies Tracy made lots of these for tooth fairy coin oh yes all, li all little tooth fairy purses because obviously if you just put a tooth under the pillow it can get lost and tooth fairy can find it very hard to find um, it's a nice way if you keep them. It's a nice way to keep them hidden from the children so they're not finding them. But I'd only keep them hidden until the children until the tooth fairy came. Wow. <laughs> well, that's very true. <laughs> and the third, <laughs> the third project we've got here um, in this is in the same kit. So this is in the same pattern which comes in the kit. The third one is this book cover, um, and so you can make this. And of course, it's it, you can take it off. Um, and then you can use it again so you know you can put it on your diary for this year for next year or you can take it off and use it again um, it is a standard a5 yeah so it's a standard a5 so it can be standard any, a5, any a5 diary. diary or notebook you can personalize it and it's something again this makes a really nice gift for somebody and it has got a little pen holder in there not, don't know why we've got this pen in here it's a quilters pen but hey um, so you can pop a pen in there as well. So you've always got a pen and a nice little <laughs> notebook ready to write your notes. So that's the third of the three items in this particular kit. The fabrics are, let's have a quick look at the fabrics. So this is the, um, this is the collection that Kerry's working with now. Is it? Yes, it is. That's it. That's the Riley yes, Blake option. This is the one option. you're working with now. So this is the Riley Blake, Blake option. Four fat quarters. Um, and also you get the piece of vinyl, which is glitzy, lovely glitzy vinyl. Um, and nearly half the stock is gone, I'm afraid. So, you know, if you're really into this one, do bear that in mind and perhaps pop it into your basket now. So four lovely fat quarters from Riley Blake. Or you might prefer this colourway. So again, you get the four fat quarters and the pattern and the vinyl, but look at these. These are completely different. So that was sort of nice pastel and spring-like. And here we've got a sort of more muted colourway, but still with a pop of yellow here. You can use that for the binding. Um, you could use this for the inside of that, on that bag there, that inside pocket that's visible, which is really nice. They all go together. That's the beauty of them. You can mix them up and they all go together. 
doesn't matter which combination you use because Kerry has very carefully chosen them so that they work well together. So that's that collection. They also complement. So last week when we were on the show, we had um, sewn with scraps with a scissor sleeve, yes. and we, which we made from um, the fabrics that are featured in this kit. So if you want all of your sewing room accessories to coordinate, you can then match them, yeah, can't you? Absolutely. Yes, because actually, actually, that was the one you used for the scissor keep, wasn't it? That yeah. one there. Yes, that's with the, really with the blue. That's really lovely. Have you got a little bit more to show us? Otherwise, I'll go on to the other kit that we've got here. Do you, you want? Do you want to show the other kit? Because the only thing I've got to show you is how to make that little, how to make the little coin wallet or the little tooth fairy wallet. Oh, go on. Let's <laughs> see the little coin wallet. That, so this is this is this one here. So little coin wallet, gift card. Would a bus pass fit in there? I don't you, know. I, actually, it wouldn't. My daughter does actually use hers for a school bus pass, so it's yeah. perfect. And I, I'm quite sentimental, so we did have this kit on earlier in the year with the Christmas fabric. So I like to keep the little cards that you know when the children buy you gifts. So it's a great size for your little gift cards as well. Yes. If you're, I'm very sentimental though. Apparently, I keep too much stuff, <laughs> but I do like looking back at them. So this is nice and easy, of course. All we're going to do is choose the two fabrics, the one that you'll see on the exterior and the one that you'll see on the interior fabric there. And then we've got um, a piece of fusible interfacing. So decide which of the fabrics from your Fat Quarter Fun is your favourite. And then we're simply going to align that fusible interfacing onto the back there. Just turning this over haven't got a pressing cloth to hand but when working with interface you either use a piece of fabric in between or your pressing cloth and just give that a little press to ensure that that fusible interfacing is attached onto there and it just gives your fabric a little more a little more body in there and keeps it strong certainly if you're going to use it for gift cards coins or yeah. your bus pass so just lining up those raw edges onto there we're simply going to sew around all four sides and just leave your turning gap. Because we're using interfacing and this isn't a particularly big project, I would leave your two inch turning gap along one of those straighter edges there, avoiding coming into contact with that corner. And two inches for this project is more than enough. Again, just clipping those fabrics together. And we're simply going to sew around, just making sure we follow the contours of those curves there so we get that nice finish and shape to the purse. So the pattern for this is in the pattern, isn't it? It is, so yes. As so are all of them. Yeah. All of the pieces are in there. And all of your templates are in there as well. So just each time you arrive, just make sure you follow those contours, otherwise it changes the shape a little. And I'm just, again, using that quarter inch seam allowance. When you arrive at the point, just pivot your fabric. So we are into single figures for this one. We've got very, very few left. Um, oh, we've got a question. Do I need to put my glasses on? Hold on. I have to put the right glasses on. Um, sorry if I missed it, but how do you get the creases out of the plastic, please? So actually, you didn't say that, so that's a good question, isn't so it? So when your kit arrives, actually, your uh, vinyl will be flat in the kit. But if you do get any curves to that, if it's folded where it's stored, then I would just place it onto your ironing mat on a low, a low setting, using and really do use those pressing cloths, and just give it a little press over the top. It, you will find that it gets quite warm, so just pop it to one side on a flat surface and allow it to cool down and it'll keep the shape then and it won't um, it won't affect your vinyl but make sure you've got the pressing cloth yeah, absolutely use a in pressing between cloth. and if you don't have a pressing cloth um, you can use a, a scrap piece of fabric or even an old tea towel yeah you just need something between the vinyl and the iron i always recommend using white as well because dependent upon the fabric sometimes the color transfers so I would always say use a white fabric if you're going to use that as a pressing cloth. There we go. So we've sewn around those. Just on each of the corners, we're just going to trim into the corners and trim away that excess thread. I was making a, um, a project the other day and I was leaving a turning gap and I had to do three, three balls the same. And my turning gap got smaller and smaller. That's what I did last week. <laughs> <laughs> we recommend it, it doesn't mean we always remember. <laughs> well, the problem is, we get, oh, oh, 
for me, I get very excited to see the project finished, especially because they're, they're fast projects. So I get distracted very yes, easily. Yes, so easily distracted. So on this curve, which is the top part, which, which actually when this is folded in, it's the bottom part. We just go into clip it's into there. Here. The stitch on picker is definitely our friend, isn't it? It's definitely the best skill that you learn. The other thing you can do actually, when you're one, when you're cutting the curve, you know you're snipping into the curve area. Little there. triangles. Uh, yeah, but you could actually use pinking shears. Yes, very good. And then that does it kind of like cuts the little triangles as yeah. you do it. So it's a quick way if you've got pinking shears. Definitely. Oh, I've certainly got pinking shears. We've done lots of things. I love my pinking shears actually. So just into these corners we can trim. We did lots of wreaths. It's very sad not to have Christmas projects on today. <laughs> it was our well, last it's Christmas show, though, isn't it? It's never Most too late. Most people are probably done. I'm sure everybody's. Been, <laughs> I'm not completely done. I'm not going to lie. I'll be sitting up. I think Christmas Eve, finishing off the the little bits. I've still got things to get. Definitely, I've still got my tree to decorate. I've you haven't got your tree up. I, I have got it up, and I sort of half decorated, but it looks very pathetic at the moment <laughs> because it's just got a few random balls on it. <laughs> You've <laughs> given. <laughs> <laughs> just do the front. <laughs> it's going to get to the point where I'm going to think, do you know what? I'll be taking it all down again soon. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. It's so close to Christmas. Look, I was looking. Oh, where did the board? Oh, the board's behind you. It's only eight days. Oh, is it? Does it say eight, eight more days? days? Oh, Wendy. Does that get changed? Yeah, I must do. Is I've it up to, to date? Off. I actually don't know. I, I don't know. Like is it up to date? Was it being changed? I know, but we had a bit of a different morning to start today, didn't we? So... <laughs> So just a give this a little uh, press. Challenging this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so just pressing to make sure the seams are on the very edge. So how many days is it actually till Christmas? It is, it's right. Oh, yeah, apparently, it is. Yes, apparently that is eight days, yes. It's very exciting. <laughs> so just giving this a press onto the front and onto the back. And you can see that shape straight away. Just give it a little top stitch. So I'll go ahead and just give that a little top stitch and I'll show you how to fold this in. And I will, as always, use that zigzag stitch to go around the edge. So just as a reminder, top stitch basically is stitching that shows on the right side, on the top. Um, and so Kerry and I both love the triple zigzag stitch, which is, is if it, on your machine, if you look, it's got a, like a broken zigzag. It looks like it's broken. And that's uh, the triple zigzag stitch. It's really good for as a stretch stitch, actually. But it's, it's a lovely, it's a very simple decorative stitch, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And pretty much, I'm sure, I'm, most machines will have it because it's one of the basic utility stitches. That's really why I always use this stitch because, mo as you say, most machines mm. have it. Do you, I do like the thought of using all the decorative stitches and different threads. But I particularly love the zigzag stitch. So just getting that to the end of that. So just trimming away all of those fa all of those extra threads now. I did actually, one of the ladies who bought this before did send me a picture of what she'd made using these and she made an advent calendar with them. So just clip them on with little miniature pegs as an advent calendar along a... Oh, how lovely. A, a, I thought that looked really, really good. Yes, and, and she put done, little tiny gifts in each one, couldn't yeah, you? Yeah, little gifts. So the curved part at the bottom folds in and naturally where we've got that shape, it will align with those little pieces that we've cut out just there. And then the two smaller triangles, if you like, again, fold in. Now, I hand sewed this to finish so we'd get a nice finish on there. And in the booklet, I show you how to use just a sewing popper on there, uh, sewing press stud on there. But you can use your little mini buttons if you want to. So you can see how fast those little envelopes come together and how pretty they look showcasing those fabrics. And just so this is folded into place, just folding that triangle across the top as well. So to finish, so there's no um, machine stitching shown, we're just folding those two triangles into the centre and we're going to hand stitch around that curve and just stopping when we come to the point here and again around that curve. And then just you can hand stitch a little popper on or you could use a little press stud. Uh, yeah, a so in the pattern I use and the one that you've got in front of you is just using a little press stud, but you can use your poppers as well on there if you prefer. Yeah. That's really lovely. So you're going to do that little bit of hand stitching. Yeah. So whilst you do that, um, shall we look at the other kit we've got here? Because this is a really lovely set too. So this is, um, remind me, this is... 
number seven. So this is fabulous fun fat quarter. No, fabulously fast fat quarter fun. <laughs> just lots of Fs. Um, so this is not from issue seven. Um, so issue seven means that there's a little bit more complexity to the projects, a little bit more techniques involved. So I, I you know, this is a three three um, project technique again. It's a three project kit again, as they all are. But this one is almost four because it has here a snag bag that hangs down. And in fact, there is a little um, loop on there which you can pop your scissors in as well. It's got a pincushion. So you've got, got um, walnut shells, you said, no, crushed walnut, walnut shells, shells. Um, in the base there. So that holds the snag bag in place. That's by your sewing machine. You can, you've got a Velcro on the top here. You can pop that on and it's got a lovely pincushion again with the walnut shells in. But you can take that off if you're going to go and to the dress form or something like that, or if you're like me, cutting out on the floor, <laughs> um, as you do. Um, so you can use move the pincushion where you want it to go. So that's a really lovely little set, and that's just one. You also have in here this other little, now this is a little pincushion with a pocket. So it's a pincushion with a pocket, and Kerry's put some, she's put some scissors, so it's a little scissor keep, but you can actually pop your quick unpick in there as well. That would fit in there next to those scissors. Scissors don't come with it, of course. You put your own scissors in. Um, so again, it's a really sort of sweet little pocket, but look at the back of it. I hadn't noticed that. Look at that. It's got a little heart. So this is just, I mean, if, if you're a beginner and you're finding that a little bit too complicated, you don't have to put that in. You could leave that without that little heart, but that just adds to the finish, doesn't it? That's really sweet. And then mirroring that, so this is like reverse applique. Um, you have the same thing here. You've got an applique heart, but it's reverse applique because the front fabric's cut away rather than the applique fabric being put on the top. A little um, needle holder. So it's very, very simple, easy to do, but with that little extra technique in there. Uh, really lovely little set of gifts. If you've got a sewing friend, this would be, you could either give them the whole thing as a gift so they make it themselves. Or of course, you can make it for them as a gift. And I'm just going to look at one of the colorways. We have two colorways on this, um, but here's one of them. This is the one that I was looking at earlier. So with the, um, these fabulously fun fat quarter kits, <laughs> you get four fat quarters. So these are the four that you get in this particular pack. So we've got this sort of almost duck egg blue here. And I can feel the quality of this fabric. It's Liberty. Um, this is a beautiful, this is such a sort of traditional looking yeah. print as well. So that is really beautiful. Um, and now we have this other little one here. And then finally with a pop of colour here, pink. So these are the four you get with this bundle. Really beautiful. And don't forget, you get the pattern to make all of those items. So that's the pattern which full step by step instructions and the um, template, 100% template, no increasing or anything like that. So your full template, and that's everything that you need to make these. And don't forget, once you've made them, you've still got the pattern, so you can use other fat quarters and make them again and again. We've also, we've also got another colourway which you will be able to find on the website. Um, but I'm just going to go quickly back to Kerry to see the end of that before we go into menus and all sorts. Those, um, the Fat Quarter Fund that you've just shown, they complement the projects and the fabrics that we had earlier on as well. So if you like your matching collections, then you can team those up with the sewn with scraps. But there is your little, there's your little envelope pouch. You can do whatever you want with it. You can make little advents or of course buzz passes. But I've simply just sewn around that curve there just to secure it. So we've just got a nice little slip stitch into the center and I will go ahead and just add a little Prestod on there to complete that little mini project. That's really lovely. <laughs> and actually, once you, again, once you've learned that technique, you could actually increase you that size. You can absolutely, yeah, and make absolutely. It one, make a little clutch bag. I mean, I'm not very technical, technique. but if you've got a printer which will allow you to increase your templates, then of course you can increase that as well. Perhaps you make your own handmade cards and you'd like to send it in some of your beautiful fabrics as well. That'd be a nice idea, wouldn't it? It would be, wouldn't it be a really pretty? Yeah. So that is one, so that's the kit. You've used this one here. Um, which is this lovely set. Which is the Riley this Blake. Is, this is the Riley Blake set and this is the one that is the most popular. Popular. And you can see these lovely colours, look. And I, I, love, I love that one, but I also love this one. 
this is the other option just quickly put that one in place um, you've got to be able to see those as well so they're gorgeous so at uh, that point I have to say thank you ever so much Kerry it's been fun again it has been fun and your second show and our second I know. time it's together really good. very it's exciting and, uh, next time I see you'll be next year happy new year know, happy christmas we'll say happy christmas i was a bit premature with that happy christmas <laughs> yes and it's got to be a happy new year please absolutely <laughs> so now we need to look at what's coming up tomorrow so tomorrow we have got pre-cuts and bundles sounds interesting is that the early bird offer is that there will be an early bird offer on that um and then oh yes a lot of oh i love pre-cut fabrics um, because they're so easy to use and, yes. and you, don't, you don't have to waste time cutting them out, they're already done for you. Uh, we've then got a giraffe cushion from Delphine, Delphine Brooks. So they, I think those cushions at the front are Delphine Brooks, I think. Yeah, Delphine, she yeah. does some amazing she designs, really does. doesn't she? So that's really good. Uh, stash builders. Hmm, don't think I need to build my stash, but I like the <laughs> sound of that. We always need to build our stash. <laughs> <laughs> I like the sound of that one. And um, Fairy Dusk Jelly Roll makes, love de jelly, jelly rolls as well, really brilliant. And again, Delphine Brooks. And then finally, we've got Yarn Lane again tomorrow, which is Woolly Chic Baby Knits with Helen Ingram. That sounds interesting, doesn't it? Sounds very interesting. Ah, I'm also being told in my ear that tomorrow we have a very big announcement. Be there in a I think it's with Vic, isn't it? It's with Vic tomorrow, so Ooh. Oh, I'm I'm being told. Um very big announcement. So be there from early morning. So remember we start at eight and there'll be lots of treats throughout the day. It's very we're all, yeah, this sounds really exciting. So I won't be here but I will be watching so <laughs> I can I can join in that. So yeah. So thank you very much everybody for joining us today um, as I said my next time back will be next year that sounds such a long way away <laughs> doesn't it but it really isn't unfortunate it's coming soon so please everybody have a lovely Christmas but do stay safe and enjoy um, us on Sewing Street and don't miss tomorrow <laughs> Join me, Vicky Carroll, live from 8am on Friday the 18th of December for a very special show. Christmas is going to be a little bit different this year, but Sewing Street will be here to keep you company from 8am to 12pm on Christmas Day. Help me, John Scott, spread some festive cheer by sending in your Christmas messages for us to play on air on Christmas Day. Whether it's a message to your fellow Sewing Street fans or to a loved one, a video message or text, we want to hear from you. Send your videos, photos and messages to studio at sewingstreet.com by Tuesday the 22nd of December to be included and be a part of Sewing Street's Christmas Day celebrations. Thank you.